Hello and welcome everyone to Quad Ball World Cup 2023 here in Richmond, Virginia. We are about to get underway on pitch two in this quarterfinal matchup between Australia and Belgium. For the run-up, we have Brandon Frizen and Victor Marks from Australia and Belgium, respectively. And for the feeders running up, we have Nathan Morton and Aaron Mees. Chris Lecomte will be the head referee. Everyone is ready here. And we are off. Prison with a good bat back to his own side. Immediately getting it to Max Brenner. Max Brenner now slowly over half. Morton does have control along with um, Astolash. The ball goes behind Frizen. Frizen drives left. Hit, tries to hit Brenner, but knocked down by DeWitt and cleaned up by Marks as Marks goes for a quick sub here to Nathan Wilput. Louis Lermitt now into this game as well for Belgium along with Jonah Piens. Trade of beats here. No. And now Australia going the other way. Brenner floats it up to Frizen. No. Frizen did. Puts it through. That's going to be 1 0 to Australia. Really nice alley oop there from Australia. DeWitt coming up the pitch. Control now also with Belgium. Lamit and PNs holding dodgeballs. Eggman's right side option for DeWitt here. Will put behind. Goes to Eggman's. Eggman's. Right side, takes her space, rips a shot. That's good. One all. I was not expecting that shot from that defense. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's slightly unfortunate that Australia is coming out on a marked defense, especially against a European team that has shooters on their team. So if they're going to get that lane and that much space, a shot from the keeper zone is bound to go in every single time. Max Brenner now slowly across half. Nathan Morton in front. Lamit, Lamit, and Morton just dancing. Both throw, both feet. Brenner sprints left, puts one over the top. Back to Frizen. Frizen on the bounce. Looks for a screen from Chittenden. A hand gets in the way, though. That was Mort got. Nope, Will put. Will put with the good hands there. Stops that drive from Australia. Seppa DeWitt. The only dodgeball for Belgium goes to Lamit. Eggman's near side option this time. Frizen marking DeWitt way up high. Forces the pass. Eggman's throws way deep. Will put had been there, but he had cut in. And that's a waste of possession for Team Belgium. As the dodgeball game continues to go crazy, Nathan Morton definitely wins control here. And as Frizen just comes through, DeWitt with the grab. But knocked down by Eggman's. Eggman's now slows it up and hands off to Wilput. Lamit and PN's talking this over in the dodgeball game as Derek quickly beats out a player from Belgium, Fisher. Eggman's near side. Control here now for Belgium after that unforced error from head coach Luke Derek. Wilput. Right side, Frizen beat out space. Will put, oh, absolutely stuffed by Brenner. Brenner gets beat in the back by Lamit. A great beat there. And then DeWitt and Derek run into each other, both, both chasing after different balls. Uh, just positional play going on. Definitely. A, looks like it's going to be no harm, no foul. The players were just sprinting on crossing paths here. And DeWitt is going to be awarded the quad ball, so possession not yet over for Belgium. No foul on the play. Harm no foul, I think you're right. Let him play on. So DeWitt does have Fisher here as a passing option. Find the referee calls. 
That is going to be control here with Belgium. DeWitt. Getting wrapped by Frizen gets it to Hagman. Hagman. Oh, the trailer will put, but Coleman gets a hand on it, knocks it down. And that's a stop for Olivia Coleman. Gets it to Frizen. Frizen puts the moves on to get rid of Will Put. Now Astro is going to slow this one. Creffield now into this game, beating for Australia as Frizen takes it right. Putting the moves on to Wit, but nothing happening. Frizen forced to throw one up to Chittenden, but it's knocked down by Eggman. They fight for it. Chit Eggman keeps it in bounds. Chittenden from behind, back to hoops. Limit clears the lane, beats out Brenner. DeWitt now. Oh, great knockdown by Chittenden. Now Brenner has it and slows up. Limit in front. Naresh Adala alongside me, head coach for Team India. Naresh, what can these teams two, two teams do to get on the board? Yeah, I mean, I think right now the pace of what they're trying to do is extremely exciting because both teams are coming out in a marked look and the aggressiveness and the overall taking space has been solid. For right now, they need to make sure their um, overall trailers and passing lanes are open before they take those passes yes. because they're kind of looking sloppy. Mailing up high. Huge line subs. Crawford open at the hoops. The pass goes to Crawford. Intercepted, though, by Willput. Good stop there. Now DeWitt looking to run. Has Crawford in front. Deeks around Crawford. Goes right. Met by Simon Spann now. Goes right around Spann as well. Willput with the screen. And then no good. That's called beat before on Fisher. And sprinting up the field to Spann. One dodgeball back. Looks like it missed. And that went off the bar and in. Yeah, it looks like there potentially might be a beat before call here, which is why the Australian uh, chase quad, quad ball player is extremely frustrated and is si signaling for his sideline to question the refs. The goal is good. Two to one, Australia. The one game I saw Australia play yesterday was against Brazil. Brazil had a lot of cards all day yesterday. And in the one game against Australia, Australia had a lot of cards too. a very loud bench. Chris LeCompte, uh, a referee from the U.S., usually known to let the benches talk. We'll see how far he lets both sides go here. Well, he lets the benches talk, but he will not stand for a head coach telling them what to do. So we got to make sure that the coaches, the coaching staff is being disciplined in how they speak to the refs. Sepa DeWitt up the pitch. PN's beating out folks in front. Mailing playing point defense. DeWitt tries to get around Mailing camp. Ball out Eggman. Eggman stuffed by Span, but recovers her own thing. Over Justin back to hoops. Harry Jones now gets beat as he throws back to Witt and Eggman slowing it down. To Witt sees some space, takes it. Mailing right side gets through the screen. Simon Spann comes up with it. Missed beat there. Simon Spann slowly up the pitch. No dodgeballs here. Nikki Redmond for Australia trying to get one. Just launches it. No one home. Just trying to buy some time, which he is able to do. As Nikki Redman hurls her dodgeball back to Harry Jones. DeWitt, slowly up. Louis Lamette in front. Elizabeth Rainier's now in as well with the dodgeball. Eggman hits the ground. Over the top to Will Put. Will Put cannot hit a shot. That is going to go across two lines. Doesn't matter. Simon Spann, first one to it. Beat out. No good there. Great timely beating from Elizabeth Rainiers, who has just subbed into this game. Yeah, right now it looks like Belgium is slightly forcing too many, uh, slightly forcing their passes. I would, I would like to see them just slow it down a bit more because they have the lanes. DeWitt now, again, as beaters clearing a lane. Goes in, can't get through mailing, so he doesn't want to try. Goes left. Eggmans. Eggmans takes her space, stuffed again by Simon Spann. He has blocked all sorts of shots and passes so far. And that was a great box out from Van Steenkist to hold that one for Team Belgium. Van Steenkist. Goes right. Runs across with DeWitt. Continuing to be marked by Sutherland. Oh, but gets around Sutherland and right through the backside. 2-2. Callum Mailing now. Slowly behind the Aussie hoops. Okay. 
Crawford, Wall Ravens, options here for mailing. Looks like Wall Ravens want to set, wants to set a pick on DeWitt, eventually stops that. Harry Jones in front of mailing here. Lots of talk between these two teams at this moment. Mailing just throws it right into the hands of Joy Eggmans. And Eggmans is off and running. She does not need a second invitation. All the way up the pitch, but Mailing gets on a hand on the pass to DeWitt. Mailing immediately backs up with Rainiers in his face. DeWitt all, all over Mailing forces that Aussie reset. And we do have a stoppage. This is a pretty delayed call here as the Belgian squad immediately gets water to their folks on the on the pitch. Yeah, this is just truly unfortunate because the Belgian player was being um absolutely moved off of the off of the hoops and it, it, they were getting wrapped up and being moved off the hoops which is not legal and they were getting frustrated and they uh, blurted out some ex explicitives which is why this they're they are going to get carded. Truly a unfortunate error in their ways and uh, we would like to see a bit more discipline um, when you're at this quarterfinals. Those are the type of fouls we can't have. Yeah, so in a in a, a zone defense with some player being on the hoops, a lot of teams like to kind of send an unarm or a, a non-ball carrying chaser to go set kind of a screen and push them slowly out of the way. Uh, that is legal. It is legal to go stand and be in their way. It is legal to put a hand on that person, but you cannot push with force against a player who does not have a ball. Um, so that is kind of the scenario Naresh was just describing where uh, things got a little bit chippy. And as I um, mentioned at the time, some players on both sides starting to yell a little bit. Two fouls on the play. Number 88, illegal contact. That is Kerry Crawford for Australia. And then unsporting conduct to Van Steenkist for. So matching yellows here uh, on that play we just described. And uh, because the second one was given to Belgium, Australia, we'll start with quad ball. Um, Crawford had subbed out for Kaysan Hockey. Um, so Hockey's going to have to leave the pitch and Crawford will have to serve her time in the box. Okay. Uh, actually, Kerry Crawford has sustained an injury, so it will be Hockey serving the time in the penalty box. So here, while Mailing does have quad ball for Australia, Belgium not only has dodgeball control, but the third dodgeball is on the ground over by uh, the sideline in front of Belgium's bench. Nikki Redmond is there and is going to be looking to sprint for that and grab it. Belgium can run a press here if they want. Instead, Lamit goes to bother Redmond. Redmond just kicks it back. While Ravens is beat out immediately by Lamit. Mailing gets beat out, goes for the shot. It's knocked down anyway by Devi Poix, and she gets it to DeWitt. DeWitt over half here. Control still with Belgium. Rainier's in Lamit. DeWitt slowly walking up until met by Mailing. Goes the right side option. Eggman's. Eggman's back to DeWitt. DeWitt still being marked by Mailing. Goes left behind Egg. Devipois. Devipois. Back up to Eggman's. Eggman's. Takes her space, rips a shot, it's good. And Belgium has their first lead of this one as they lead three to two. <laughs> Lots of dodgeball stuff going on here as Mailing sees a spot. Lindley wants to set a pick on DeWitt, is able to. Mailing goes around, but then gets hit by DeWitt as he tries to take the corner. Van Steenkist is able to inbound that for Belgium. And Belgium dominating in the dodgeball game for the last few possessions, looks to extend their lead, and Australia notices the same thing, and they put in Nathan Morton, their starting beater, right back into this one. DeWitt, near side. Marked by Lindley. Lindley beat out by Rainiers. DeWitt now met by Mailing. No look pass over to Eggmans. Eggmans, all the way back to the corner, Van Steenkist. Van Steenkist working against hockey. Nathan Morton back to hoops there. DeWitt, top of the key, marked by Mailing still. Cannot be beat in his own zone. DeWitt is beat out. 
Eggman's goes right through. And then Van hits us pass to Van Sienkes. Van Sienkes hits the ground, but is able to get it out through the hit from hockey and score. What's the tenacity on that play to finish to pull that contact? Yep, huge finish from Van Steenkist. And give the assist to Fisher, I believe. Lindley now with speed, far side, gets beat out by Lamit from some distance. And Eggman's now gets it to Van Steenkist. He really has no dodgeballs right now to protect the hoops. Yeah, Van Steenkist, right side, gets around Hockey, passes around Lindley. That's Fisher. Fisher to DeWitt. DeWitt pops it back up to Fisher. <laughs> Jessica Lindley here with a card contact after being dismounted. So it is going to go back to Seppa DeWitt. Mailing is there to try to stop. That's Walker, I believe. Just past 11 minutes. My mistake, that is Cam Walker now in for Australia. DeWitt. Surely Belgium's able to finish here. Yep, DeWitt with a little fake right move left. And Belgium suddenly has a three goal lead up 5 2. No, if I, the last couple of minutes has not looked good for Australia, I would really consider taking a timeout here, get, just getting the team to calm down. The only argument I could see against a timeout is that Belgium has not subbed hardly any of their players. You might not want to give them a rest, although they'll get one here in about four minutes for that heat delay. It's Morton beats out Rainiers. Dodgeball control finally with Australia. Morton is being very aggressive into Belgium's keeper zone. This is good patience from Australia, not trying to force anything. Yep, far side here. Now cut to the middle, blocked down. Chittenden is able to collect her own rebound, however. She has hockey to the right, but it elects to go left, and that's going to be a card right the other way for Fisher. Continuing contact after dismount, the exact same call that went against Australia the last possession. Last time when it went the other way, Belgium was able to get a goal. So hopefully yeah. I'll see it. Ch Chitton did not in a, quite a nice a location um, as DeWitt was after that last penalty. But she does have hockey behind. She has Walker over the top and Lindley to the left, although DeWitt could probably knock down a pass in that direction. Chittenden goes immediately right, fakes left, and then gets brought down hard by Willput. So and that's a stop for Belgium as they now look to move slowly, kill time until Fisher can get out of the box. And their beaters just subbed out two, uh, two pairs of front yeah. legs out. Lamit out of the game. This is when Nathan Morton wants to shine. Mort got with a dodgeball for Belgium here. Throws at Morton. Oh, and a great little play there. Peens knew that Morton was going to throw back and was there to collect. Beats out Morton's control to um, Belgium immediately as DeWitt still moves slowly, trying to kill this penalty. Eggman's back into this play. Will put receives the pass, marked heavily by Chittenden. She's going to be given a foul. Advantage to Belgium. Eggman's beat out, fallen on by Chittenden. Contact from behind on Chittenden. That's a yellow. Team Belgium keeps trying to give water to their players on the stop on the stoppages, but Chris Lecomte is so clean that they just really don't have time when it's not literally on top of their bench. Good sportsmanship uh, of two players in the penalty box right now. Yeah. Our, um, shared misfortune of yeah. not being in the play. All right, as we let this one breathe for just a moment, Will Put is going to be awarded the quad ball right at the top of the key. This would be huge for the drop bears to get a stop in the situation. Yeah, the drop bears really need a stop because if they don't, they will be out of flag runner range. And Australia has called that time out that you predicted, Naresh. What do you think the message in the huddle is going to be for Australia? Right now, I mean, I think there was a stretch in that game where um, Belgium was trying to take their shots, but Australia's size and length made it absolutely impossible for these good, often good looks that Belgium's willing to take. Their size came into play and where they were making their blocks. So I think they need to just slow it down and get their get the looks that they want, which would mean because they want to run in the breaks, and running in the breaks often means getting good, solid defensive um, stops. That occurs from making sure you are staying disciplined. And oftentimes, I'm looking, I'm watching them play, and it looks like the Belgium passing has been able to get them their lanes, which I might even consider switching back into a zone, which is what the Australian defense has tried to do, I think, in the last two possessions. But due to cards, it hasn't really worked out. 
in the dodgeball game, do you try to win control at all costs or do you just try to limit what limit and the rest of those beaters can do? And if you can't get control, you can't get control. Yeah, I mean, personally, I'm under the compression that I personally would give up a goal if needed to try to get control back because when Australia has had control, they were up for a large uh, majority of this game. It's when that second stint of Lamette and um, Lamette and Rainers came in that they absolutely dominated. So we they need one, even if they can't do much with control, they need to ensure that Belgium does not have control or else the Belgium has looked like they will. They are the better team with control. All right, so Nathan Morton without a dodgeball in hand does have immunity. Will put has it at the top of the key. Will put moves slowly right. Morton knocks it back to his own end. And Morcott just throws his own dodgeball back. So there's only one dodgeball in the play now for Belgium. The pass comes to DeWitt. DeWitt near side, marked by Hockey. Goes right. Hockey with the wrap. DeWitt gets out of it over the top. Will put. Will put came off broom. Will put comes off broom and Walker immediately looking to run. DeWitt gets a hand on it, knocks it out. Eggman's picks it up. Eggman's immediately hit hard by Walker. Morton beats out Eggman's. Morcott beats out Morton. Span gets beat out by Morcott. And after all of that, so Eggman's continues play after being beat. He was also wrapped up. Yeah, I, I don't know if you could get up to if I, you wanted to. That's a pretty ticky tack call there from Chris Lecompte for sure. But after all that, where Australia got the stop, got control, suddenly there was chaos as they ran the fast break and they've lost control again. Yeah. Belgium's been really good at uh, passing the ball around a lot, cutting through defenses. But I think in, a mo in an opportunity like that, when you're so close to the hoops, I think taking that initial contact just to get closer and take a shot from mid range or even closer to mid range is probably better advised than getting a pass picked off. Yeah. Or even, I mean, Cam Walker, talk to your beaters. They should let you know that you have control now and don't run. <laughs> Like, let's let's see what we can do in the half court with control. Yeah, and this is what I was talking about. It, it just looks like they're, Australia is trying to force things when they're not there, and they're trying to play fast, and it's just not working for them. They need to slow it down. They need to let use their size and athletic ability to see what they have in the half court because oftentimes when they're at their best, they're able to do those alley-oops from the back. And that occurs from when they're playing in a half court, not when they're trying to run through everyone on a break, and now last-minute beats – last minute hits that Belgium has been able to make causes them to lose control and or lose the uh, scoring opportunity. So Cam Walker is beat. So the quad ball is going to be awarded to the next closest Australian chaser, which is Josh Lindley. Again, after all this with Piens and Mortgott with control, it's going to be Australia with immunity as the third dodgeball is on the ground. Ruth Crefield going to collect that as Nathan okay. Morton is beat out and still needs to tag in. Yeah, so what the uh, conversation is right now, um, separately, uh, one of the uh, our assistant refs is actually talking to the scoreboard about number four, who was actually in the penalty box, um, Fisher, sh instead of t running back, uh, we're I'm sorry, instead of running back to tag up, they immediately jump back into play, which they might actually be getting called for right now, which is a delayed penalty. So we'll have to see how this plays out. We got it sorted. Nothing called. So again, it's going to be Lindley. Lindley immediately uses the reset as Mark got sprints back. That's a reset used. Fisher does redo the um, tag in procedure after the penalty expired on her. Luke Derrick receives the pass from Crefield. Lindley. Fisher marking Derek in front of Lindley. Derek with a good beat. Morcott gets away with a throw back there. Lindley moves left, throws it way over the top to Hockey. Hockey immediately beat my Vortgott. Luke Derek throws one back, gets beat himself. There's no dodgeballs back. Will put sprints down, floats one to DeWitt. DeWitt gets hit by Lindley, but the bounce pass through to Will put. He slips on this slick turf. Lindley gets a hand on it. Not enough. DeWitt gets beat out. Morcott throws a beat as well. Oh, easy. illegal reset. So the second time that came over, uh, two lines there. So it's going to be a turnover to Australia and the press. The pressure works from them as they stop a fast break Australia, opportunity. Australia got really lucky on that play. That deep pass behind the hoops. Belgium had two dodgeballs back there and they almost were able to counterattack while Australia had zero. So 
that illegal reset it was good defense by Australia, but they definitely caught a break. I know I said earlier that Australia is at its best when they're able to do those alley oop passes, but not when they haven't actually dragged the beaters out from playing underneath the hoops. Australia is not going to be able to get a good half court set if they're not if not if their quad ball players and their beaters are not able to work together to create those lanes first before they attempt those alley oop passes. Yeah, Morgat was able to beat out hockey well before she was able to catch the quad ball, and that's never the sign of a good pass. So Lindley here moves near side, no reset used. Now being pressed by Morgat, throws it across to hockey. Hockey knocks it down. Once again, a long shot. Shittenden beat out. DeWitt beat out. Crefield beat out. Will put now slowly. No dodgeballs on Australia's side. Will put near side. Huge beat on Walker. Will put with space. Tries to get through Lindley. Cannot gets wrapped up. Cannot be brought down. Morkot there beats out Lindley. Lindley does let go. Looks like there's a hand in the air. DeWitt gets stuffed by Walker. Lindley pulls it down. Fisher on top. That's from behind. And I think there's going to be cards in both directions. What an unfortunate series of events for both teams there. Yeah, Australia this coming up with a stop, but it might be taken back. Belgium not being able to finish despite all of that. This crew has made very clear that when you get hit, you are expected to let go before you hear the beat call. Um, and once you hear it, you better let go or you'll be called. Looked like Lindley took about a second to register. Um, and the AR hand immediately went up. Immediate again, it is a really ticky tack call, but it, it'd be consistent to call it again, I think. It look, actually, it looks like they're gonna say no call on either play. I, I think Fisher kind of came in at Walker from behind as well. Um, and so it looks like we're just gonna go instead of cards in each direction, cards in neither. I guess it all sort of cancels out, but it definitely goes in Australia's favor there because they were able to get away with stopping the goal from Belgium. Yes. It looks like the rest might still be deliberating something with the uh, Belgium captain or beater. So after a quick uh, four goal run here from Australia to go from down 2-1 to up 5-2, um, there's really been a scoring lull in both directions for the past few minutes. We must be nearing the 15 minute mark as well. So there should be a heat stoppage. Yes, very soon. About 30, uh, in about 30 seconds. Yeah, probably. Yeah, That's sorry. Like, Our yeah. on screen clock is a little fast. Um, so about 30 seconds here. We're expecting that heat stoppage. So Walker here, keeper ball, Australia running subs. Ed Vinet into this one for the first time. Looks like Nikki Redmond also back in. Max Brenner in, as well as Maddie Bell checking in for the first time in this game. Luke Derrick walking up Sam Chittenden. Beat out on Fisher. Derrick then immediately with speed. Goes for a beat on Morkot. Chittenden floats one over the top, well over the head of Maddie Bell. And that one is out of bounds. I think I would like Australia to do more sharp passes to around the side, more of like a triangle, standard triangle. DeWitt side. gets the pass for the inbound, and that is going to be the 15-minute stoppage here. Again, the score is Belgium 5, Australia 2. We have not had a goal here for either side in a few minutes. Um, but again, I know I just said this, but a reminder, Australia was leading 2-1. Belgium is on a pretty extended 4-0 run here. Um Naresh, we've talked a lot about Team Australia. Team Belgium, what are they talking about during this four-minute heat break? Oh, I mean, with them, with, when they have control, they are able to get the looks that they want. Obviously, Australia's size and strength has been a deterrent for a lot of their attempts that they've been getting, but they're getting the looks that they want. And so if they continue making these passes into space and taking their space when they have it, they can get the shots at on hoops that are open. Um, overall, I've actually been very impressed with their physicality, and we've actually seen some very Australian-esque drives from them, uh, might I say. It's just now they're being met with that physicality on the opposite side, so we have to see how they're able to adjust from, with, if they're able to drive into two or three people, let, being able to then make that pass to a trailing chaser could find open looks for them at the uh, hoops, and they could even widen the score even more, because it's felt like Belgium has controlled the pace of this game. Definitely. And a, a reminder, this is a quarterfinal game. 
Belgium, obviously the defending silver medalists and hope to get back to that championship game. Uh, do you foresee so far, Sepa DeWitt has not subbed out. Joy Eggmans, I don't believe has subbed out. Um, certainly she's played a lot of time. Nathan Wilput has played a lot of time. Do we think that Team Belgium is just riding their top players through the black bracket until exhaustion? Or do you think there's any sort of lead they could get over Australia and try to give some of these players some rest? Yeah, I mean, I think it's very interesting because Australia throughout the weekend has been extremely good during the flag runner on pitch uh, scenario. And so if they... Belgium players, I, I don't know that there's a true lead that Belgium can really uh, develop in the next five minutes that would put them in a safe enough um, scenario where they feel comfortable taking these players off pitch. Because when they have been on pitch, they've matched, if not outplayed, majority of the Australian players. Meanwhile, on the Australian end, they have run through most of their rostered 21. Um Mike, any any combo you want to see out there that was looking good? Um, certainly, they feel like they're relying on Nathan Morton to try to control the beater game. Yeah, I would like to see Australia send out Callum Mailing and probably try to do a bit more driving and dishing closer to the hoops. I think uh, Callum is a serious uh, threat while driving, and I think doing that will force the Belgian beaters to step up more instead of kind of hiding back behind the hoops like they were doing earlier, and that should free up more space for chasers to cut, and also those alley-oop passes might actually be able to connect and result in a goal. I think Australia hasn't had as many clean looks as Belgium has had at scoring. But when they did have those opportunities, they were just off by a few you know, milliseconds, a few inches away from actually being able to score. So this game could potentially be tied if not for those unfortunate errors. But, you know, that's why you play the game. Even a 90% uh, high percentage shot still has a chance to miss, right? So Australia, I think, in this time out, they're talking about what, did, what went wrong, but also what they were doing right and just executing a little bit better. Yeah, I mean, I think the next five minutes before the flag runner on pitch scenario, because Australia has been so good at it, I really would think they'd like to keep this as close to a game as possible if they could. Right now, it's a 5-2 game. And in the next five minutes, if they can get control back, I can really see the tides of this game turning towards the Australian um, advantage strictly because their, quad belt, their flag runner on pitch uh so they've been really good in that scenario. And if they could do that, they might be able to sneak away um, in these last couple minutes to come back and present a more um, disciplined look. All right, we are getting back out here now. That's the whistle to back to Bruins. Again, to recap for anyone who flipped over to another tab during our heat break. We're coming back from that 15 minute heat break. Belgium is leading Australia five to two. We're just past the 15 minute mark and the flag runner will be released at 20 minutes. For any of our American viewers tuning into the World's Cup for the first time today, there is no 20 minute stoppage in the IQA rule set. So we will just have seekers be released at that 20 minute point. Which is important, too, because if Australia is able to keep this game close, a quick goal followed by a catch will allow them to win. So Belgium, even though they have a lead, they're not quite comfortable completely. So DeWitt slowly up the field. Van Steenkist in for Wilput. Those two have been swapping back and forth throughout this game. Armand's now into this game for the first time, perhaps. Belgium heard me talk about spreading some of these minutes. Lamit now back into this game before the 20-minute period. DeWitt. Rainier's in front. Rainier's and Derek posturing here. Rainier's throws at Derek. Derek throws back to Witt. Takes the lane, though, with no dodgeballs. Brenner gets an arm. That's enough. Van Steenkist gets it to a teammate and back. Van Steenkist looks right, throws left, and DeWitt finishes with authority over Chittenden. I mean, honestly, I think that last play is probably a microcosm of this entire game so far. Belgium is baby, is, has been able to get their looks because they've been incorporating every single quad ball player on the pitch. Every single person is touching the ball. They've been able to zip passes left and right. And that's just something we're not seeing from Australia. Yeah, that physicality you mentioned before coming into play. Australia being able to make really hard hits, but that's only one person making a tackle. All right, so uh, Max Brenner, number zero of Australia. The keeper has been awarded a yellow card for contact to the head. No time is served because the goal was good. The lead is officially uh, 6-2 in Belgium's favor. Brenner, slowly up the pitch. Derek and Brenner discussing the attack. Redmond going around behind without a dodgeball. Chittenden being marked heavily by Devi Poix. 
Oh, there's Brenner being oh, pressed right. by Lamit, throws one up to Vinet. Vinet can't come down with it, gets his own miss, but then Rainiers is there to clean it up. And DeWitt now walking slowly up with a chance to extend this lead to five. That was one of those opportunities by Australia. So close in terms of the passing and, and the cut made, but just wasn't able to control it on the alley-oop there. But I did like that look, even though it didn't result in a goal for them. DeWitt over half with control. Rainiers makes a beat on Vinet. Derek goes for control, ignores quad ball. DeWitt takes the lane that that left open and scores with authority over Matty Bell. That's the type of aggression I would like to see more from Australia, just taking it, taking some contact and fighting through it. Control for Australia now. So head coach Luke Derek was willing to trade control for reset used, was willing to trade control for a goal. Devi Pois is being given a yellow card for contact from behind. I do believe that means the reset will not have been used for this possession. So Chittenden now over half. Brenner near side trying to run a screen on DeWitt. Lamette just goes straight for Chittenden. Van Steenkiss knocks the pass to Vinet out of the air. Van Steenkiss going to run. Slows oh. it up. Oh. Van now Steenkiss, yep, far side. Yeah, Max Brenner. Max Brenner in front here. Trying to get around the corner. Chittenden watching the hoops. High pass over to DeWitt. One-handed grab. Catches it on the bounce. Matty Bell up to play point. Dodges the beat. DeWitt goes right around Bell. Hits it in through the top hoop. And that's 8-2. Even with a player in the box, Belgium is able to score here. And again, it almost looks for them, they're just playing clean and fluid. For Australia, all of the attempts they're getting just seem so hard because they're not actively changing the uh they're not moving the ball they're going from top to from top of the field to the back, back Jones of the field. beat misses on DeWitt that leads Rainier to beat out the ball handler mailing gets beat out as well behind accidentally through runs through Van Steen kiss there secrets for both teams uh getting ready to start warming up pretty soon oh. So a stoppage here. Unsure what it's for at this point. It is control to Belgium, but Harry Jones has a dodgeball in the Australian defense. I don't know what Belgium talked about during that he stoppage, but it seems like they're starting to run away with this game now. Yep, using aggressiveness and really just dominating that dodgeball game. Australia has had no answer no matter what pair they've thrown out there. So we are about to get underway here again. Lamit discussing something with head referee Lecomte. Still a long discussion here with the ref crew. Okay, I think. Yeah, not, nothing going on here. We're just getting restarted. So again, Belgium just with the stop. DeWitt now slowly carrying up with Rainiers in front. 8-2 is the Belgian lead. We're at about 18 minutes or so. Far side. Van Steenkist. Marked by Chittenden. Gets it way back up to DeWitt. DeWitt, marked by Vianet, gets beat out. DeWitt floats one, and that goes in over the hands of Maddie Bell. She mistimed her jump, and it went right over her hand. Mailing now, ball carrying for Australia. Brandon Frizen, who we have not seen since the run-up, now checks into this game in a white headband for Australia. Shittenden, slowly marked by Fisher. Fakes left, thinks better. Now, Again, the same fake go fake right, go left, gets it to Bell as she's beat up by Lamit, but Frizen took her place, gets the pass at the top of the key. Frizen going right, marked by DeWitt. DeWitt slowly backs off. Frizen again goes right, gets beat out as he passes to Mailing. Mailing the pump fake on Van Steenkist and then puts it through. That is Australia's first goal since they were the lead. Yeah, the, since they scored to go up 2-1. So now they trail 9-3. Van Steenkist 
Looks like he might have a, a wrist injury. I think his his hand may have gotten in the way of a shot there from Meiling. Australia should not be afraid to attack right now. It's the quarterfinals. Yeah, so win or go home, they have to go all out in every every offensive possession. Thought of a doubt. So Van Steenkist has helped off the pitch. And Belgium is going to take their time out here right at the 19-minute mark. You shouting at me the goal was good. It's no good. I... So the Belgian sideline just letting the score table know that the um, the display that's available to the players is broken. It's not that it's wrong. It's that it, <laughs> the scoreboard broke. Um, with that, um, Team Belgium uses their timeout, definitely giving all their players a breather before this flag runner on pitch period, which, uh, Naresh, as you've mentioned, Australia is quite good at. When there's no dodgeballs in the play, Australia likes to run some screens and just power through some folks, although this Belgian side is quite good at tackling. Yeah, I mean, I think in that last play, if they hadn't scored, it would just be a, a continued storyline of how difficult this Australian offense is uh, is facing just because they're getting so many hard looks. I don't, in that play, Callum Mailing, before they got beat out, was screening off on the right side. And instead of the ball carrier for Australia taking it on the right side, they went left. And now Mailing setting the screen got beat out, and now they completely have to reset. And that timing for Australia is just not there amongst all of their players. So Vic Victor Marks and Simon Spann is going to be our starting seeker matchup for Belgium and Australia, respectively. Again, they will be released at 20 minutes with no stoppage here. Both teams have used their time out. Matt Astolash, dodgeball in hand for Australia here. And again, as Australia just scored to cut the lead 9-3, to Sepa DeWitt is going to start with dodgeball in hand. Or quad ball in hand, pardon me. I think there's a real question. So Sepa DeWitt is actually passing it off to Wilpa and subbing out for the first time all game. We're going to see Emil Ertz now in a green headband for this flag runner on pitch period for Belgium. Slowly up the pitch, moves well put. Eggman's the near side option as Lamit trades. And the Seekers are released. The Seekers release. Far side, Fisher gets wrapped up by Bell. Hits Ertz. Ertz. Oh, goes right. Good knockdown for Mailing. Ertz never saw him. Mailing now gets beat out. Huge play there from Piens. Ertz Great. moves right. Good, good screen there from Eggman's. The pass goes to Will put. And Belgium put themselves on the board once more. I really like that effort from Belgium, not being afraid to make that extra pass and score. Definitely. And a huge play from Jonah Piens. Uh, I think she was collecting a dodgeball that had bounced off in the, the flag runner game. And instead of just beelining back to that flag runner, she sees an opportunity, takes it, and that gives her team a goal. I know in the IQA rule set, these flag runners are often told there's no, they're not allowed to do defensive seeking. But I think Australia needs to do their best to make sure that Belgium does not catch here because a catch for Australia wouldn't really mean much because they've had a very, very hard time scoring in the half, half court. They should try to use this chaotic period in, in this game to try to see if they can get their fast breaks to get quick, easy goals before they go for a catch to try to close in the gap first. <laughs> So a legal immunity claim on Harry Jones of Australia is going to give them a beater in the box. Huge during the flag runner on pitch period as Nat Astolash is now going to be left on her own uh, to try to give Span a chance to look. Yeah, and Australia's sea game is usually really good, so this is going to be an opportunity for them to potentially get some goals while taking off the pressure from the chasers. But being down a beater, I'm not sure if that's going to be able to happen now. Yep, a few different looks Australia can throw at Seeker, but they elect to start with Simon Span, kind of their lankiest, longest reach uh, Seeker against a, a shorter flag runner, at least comparatively. <laughs> All right. Penalty time is negated by the goal. The penalty had occurred before the goal, so Australia will not be down a beater um, but Harry Jones does have a yellow card to his name, and a second one would lead to an ejection. So Jones is going to be off for him as Nat Astolash has to chase the final dodgeball well behind the Belgian hoops. And Louis Lemet looks like he wants to bother her there. The fake throw 
from Lamit doesn't actually lead to anything. I'm not sure what Lamit was looking to do there. Mailing, meanwhile, as Span gets a lot of time with the flag runner, He's afraid of goes left. Oh, good hand there from Willput. And that's going to be a stop for Belgium. Yes, his first in is beat out finally by PNs. Looks like um, Belgium is content to prevent Australia from scoring, which kind of would prevent the strategy you suggested, Naresh, as goals will not be coming easy uh, if Belgium elects to just keep their dodgeballs on that defense. Yeah, Louis with a dodgeball in his hands just has to look yeah. at Mailing and stops him. From Louis tackles by Crefields, but eventually gets the beat as uh, Marx is beat out here. Will put ball on the ground. Prison trying to play aggressive defense here. Fisher now with it up top. Fisher's going to be marked by Chittenden. The pass goes left to Eggmans. Eggmans one on one drives one on one goes right <laughs> right around Coleman to put Belgium up even more. Now extending their lead 11-3. I like that. Saw the lane. Decided to go for it and just went all the way through. Nasty shot. Great finish. Huge play from Coleman there. Is Sutherland now in to seek for Australia? And Belegu in for Belgium. Mailing taking his time to bring up the quad ball of pitch. Yep. Seeing that while they're on offense, Australia might have their best chance to ca catch. Lamit goes for a kick beat, misses. Chittenden, right side. Throws it way up top. Frisson gets oh. beat in the back. Beat from distance by Lamit. Will put slow. Belgium starting to manipulate that third dodgeball uh, legally and effectively. Although Morton ends up with one and PNs does not. Louis is basically everywhere on the pitch for Belgium right now, taking out everyone in Australia. Will put slow side. The pick from Ertz worked, but Will put just lost his balance. Frisson now will not get up, so Frisson, or Frisson wouldn't move, so Wilput couldn't get up. As now the ball is on the ground, Chittenden is fighting for it with Eggmans. It's probably going to be an Australia's ball. Should be Australian time. ball as Martin goes to collect a dodge ball. Looks to clean it up. It was already cleaned up. He gets a beat off on... Oh, no, Belgium. No secret. good, no good. Immediately called no good. We're not going to have a stoppage here. This one keeps rolling. Unsure if it was not clean or if Morton's beat got there first. Chittenden now is mailing or Walker subs back into the game. Chittenden far side marked by Fisher. Span looking to catch. Oh, and good look. does Simon Span gets the catch. The only player there who may have impeded um, when the flag runner was backpedaling would have been a Belgian and Fisher. So if that was the case, the catch would still be allowed. It would mean Australia trails by five. And the set score would become 14. The catch is immediately called good. So that makes the score 11 6. And the set score 14. So Belgium needs three. Australia needs eight. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, after 20 minutes, Australia only three goals in their, uh, in their favor and now needing to score eight. Yeah, that's uh, going to be quite the task. All right, so maybe that possible, may, maybe that was the energy boost that Australia needed that Simon Span catch. Yeah. They do also have the quad ball with a quick goal here. They could cut that deficit that little bit more. Nathan Morton there, driving in, throws one back. Joe goes for a hit and then just gets beat. No control here. But Chittenden puts on the moves, knocked down. Uh, by Wilput. Wilput now running the other way with speed. Mort got in front. Backs up. Throws it back. That might be a double reset. hagman has got to hustle for it. Saves it. No dodgeballs here as Frisson goes out to play aggressive defense. Fisher to Wilput. Wilput takes the space. Tries to get around Chittenden and can. But Walker is another layer and Chittenden will not miss the tackle a second time. Frisson bothers. Eggman's gets sent back to Hoops. Fisher to Ertz. Ertz. Slowing up the good screen from Fisher on Coleman. Dodges the, a beat. Dodges a beat. Will put hits the ground. There was an errant hand in from Chittenden that I do think hit Will put in the face. That should be no harm, no foul. I think Will put just lost his footing as he went hard right trying to get around Brandon Prison. Every chaser and uh, on Belgian side and the keeper touched the quad ball in that possession. They were really just passing it around, cutting through Australia's defense, forcing them to cause a foul in order to stop them. 
So Chittenden is going to get carded here um, for contact around the neck. That is her second yellow. She will be ejected from this game. Um, Australia looks like they're going to send Jessica Lindley to serve the time in the box. Um, and just for clarification, anybody watching in the U.S., uh, there is an ejection for second yellow, but the person serving the penalty is just serving a yellow card. Uh, so, so... Um, so again, it will just be one minute in the box or until, uh, Belgium scores. Getting word here. It sounds like Australia might be asking for a video review on this call. Not positive on that. Uh, although... A head referee, Chris LeCompte, has gone back to talk to some players. Looks like there's a discussion about whether or not they're going to appeal it. All right. Looks like they won't. Uh, certainly, the head referee has not been informed, so they won't. So, again, uh, Sam Chittenden is unavailable for the rest of the game. Jessica Lindley will be in the box uh, for one minute or until Belgium scores. And, nope, now the head referee is talking to the Australian head coach. So, for this... The tournament, the gameplay team did decide that because all pitches were being filmed, that they were going to allow each team to have one video review call per game. Um, neither team has used theirs so far. Uh, if you are correct in your call, as in if the call is overturned in your favor, uh, you do not lose your challenge. You're allowed another. Um, but it looks like we have representatives from now, uh, the entire ref crew, Team Australia and Team Belgium, discussing this. So, um, in the hypothetical that either Australia does not challenge or they lose their challenge, we'll put here is right on the hoops. Uh, they do have, I believe, Coleman and Walker right in front, both very tall, long-reaching players that could knock down a shot. Although from this distance, we'll put might just try to uh, put a poster <laughs> on one of them, if you will, a la the NBA. And he does have all three of his teammates as potential passing options as well, which has served Belgium great so far this tournament. Even when they're driving right at the hoops, they dish it off at the last second, creating that space for a much easier goal. Definitely. There's no dodgeballs back for Australia, so they, they could just elect to kind of pass backwards here. Yeah, Belgium's definitely okay. not in a rush, but it looks like... So there officially has been a review call by Australia for that yellow card. Um, we are going to go ahead and take that break, but we will be back when the officials have a result.
All right, everyone, welcome back. Sorry about that delay. Um, so the final ruling on that challenge for the high contact yellow card was denied by gameplay. So again, Sam Chittenden is unavailable for the rest of this game. Jessica Lindley will be serving that penalty. Uh, it is just a normal yellow uh, card penalty to be served. So if Belgium were to score on this possession, she would be released. Otherwise, she'll be released after one minute. Yeah. So Nathan will put... Uh, we'll start with the quad ball right here. Brandon Frizen on top of him, Cam Walker on top of him, and I believe Olivia Coleman on top of him. So we'll see here if he elects to score through three people or go for the pass. Immediately passes over to Eggman. Eggman's. Eggman's. Breaks the tackle, though. Yeah, breaks the tackle. And then we'll put beat out. Great timely beating there uh, from Astolosh. Yeah, Budgeon was a little bit too slow on the passing there, but they have all the momentum in this game right now. Cam Walker slowly up the field, trying to kill the penalty. The fake throw from Mortgott. Oh, nice Ertz, stutter step. Yep, Walker. good stutter set. Ertz picks him up. Walker goes all the way around back. Going to be picked up by Piens. The pass goes up top to... Frizen. Frizen is being marked by Fisher. This Belgian mark is brutal. There's almost no one to pass to, really. Yep. Fisher going right. Easier to run as there's someone in the box. Frizen launches it way back up top. Walker. Goes over the head of Walker. Walker keeps it in from going out of bounds. It is going to be a reset used. Walker was the only passing option in that play. So. Definitely. We're also about two seconds away from this penalty ending. Australia back to full strength as soon as Lindley can sprint back onto the Belgian half of the pitch. Walker being guarded by Astolosh in front. Morton, unable to do anything, picks up that errant dodgeball. Yep, Walker, right hoop. side, great feed oh. down to Coleman. But Coleman gets stuffed at the hoops. And we're going to have an injury stoppage here. We're going to take that stoppage, and we'll be right back. All right, Olivia Coleman jogs off the field. Uh, hopefully, no worse the wear. Maddie Bell will take her place. Belgium yeah. switching to a mark defense now. Australia is still not able to to penetrate. Looks like yeah. Will put in front. We got some new folks in. Ermans in now for Belgium. The pass goes behind to and then back out to the top. I believe that's Ermans now in. Well put. Marked by Frizen. PNs comes in to beat out Frizen. Will put. Really content to be slow here. Will put goes right over the top to Ertz. Ertz on the bounce. Marked by Frizen. Goes over to Will put. Will put knocks it down. One handed catch. Marked by Hockey. Goes to his right. Collides with Frizen. Incidental contact there. Ertz now over to Fisher. Fisher back to the top in Ermans. And Belgium is content here to just reset their offense. It's so unfortunate that that right hoop was down. Press coming from Australia now. Finally recognizing there's no dodgeballs for Belgium. Will put gets beat out by Astolosh. But Ermans now has a dodgeball with her. Pass comes near side Ertz. Nathan Morton calling for a press but does not do anything with his dodgeball. Will put now oh. passes it back. That is oh. out of bounds. And a good stop there for... The drop bears. Amazing pressure from Morton to force the throwback and an inevitable quad ball turnover. Yep, good call there from Nathan Morton. Frizen now right side, marked by Fisher. Morton now running a 1.5. Frizen, great move to the left, the swim move, and then oh. misses at the hoops. He didn't put his hand through it, went off the bar and out. And a golden opportunity for Australia goes by the wayside as Will Put falls on it. Australia's not going to get many opportunities like that to score, so they need to be decisive and finish 100% with authority. Sepa to Witt back into this game, played the first 20 minutes without a sub. Louis Lamette back into the game as well. Belgium really looking to close this one out. They don't want to still be on this pitch. Yeah, Martin throws right back now. as he's beat. DeWitt goes left, then goes right. Oh, and the great, great beat to Ermans. 
Louis subs in and immediately beats out both of Australia's beaters to create a scoring opportunity for Belgium. Yeah. Great, great play there from all three of the involved Belgian players. Lamit, DeWitt, and Hermans. Hermans, the one who actually scored. That makes it 12 6, although there is a call being discussed in the dodgeball game. Um, and if it does go against Belgium, it will probably take the goal back. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, in this game, Belgium's been in control for the most part. You know, being down by two in the beginning, they rallied and came back. And even with the flag catch, Australia hasn't really done much since then. And Belgium, I think it kind of feels like the game's been a lot slower because there's been so much stoppages in that long view time. So both teams kind of had, you know, the chance to get some water, relax, cool down. So it seems like everyone's firing at 100% uh, full cylinder. So it's just unfortunate that Australia is still not able to produce anything with that. Indeed. Um, this was Be Belgium's first goal since the Australian flag catch. There's no call on the play. The goal is good. It's 12 to 6 in favor of Belgium. Yeah, right uh, now, that flag catch feels like it was like hours ago. Yeah. And again, the set score is 14 here. So Morton now moving up well ahead of Cam Walker in the quad ball. Lindley near side. Options starting to move lower as Wall Ravens comes in to set a pick. Lindley. Right side being marked high by Delu. Delu out onto Lindley. Delu fights through a screen and then rips a shot. Does not fall. Dewitt is able to recover. I think if Australia is going to go for shots like that, they should try to be a bit more aggressive and go earlier when there's only one keeper at the hoops instead of a keeper and a chaser. Belgium seems to be going uh, defaulting to the mark defense in the beginning, so that means there's no, it's not the classic tree zone which stops people from shooting as often as we've seen this tournament. Yep, Dewitt now. Cam Walker doesn't want to leave the keeper zone. DeWitt backs up. Astolosh backs him up even further. The good pass to Martin as Lamit is forced to throw his dodgeball, and that bounces out. DeWitt, marked by Walker, throws it behind to Delu. Delu now working on hockey. A great screen set there from Divi Pois, but strong. Walker's able to clean it up. A strong beat from Australia, and of course, that tournament right also. Morin looking to press up and be more aggressive, even more aggressive than he was before, if that's even possible. Yeah. Still not over half as Martin is beat. Walker now forced to run, marked by DeWitt. There's no one right. right now. Absolutely airmails one up into the oh. air. No one grabs it, but Hockey off the bounce is able to corral it. Hockey is being wrapped up there by Ermans. Bottles on the ground. And is finally are loose. beat out. Good. Good defense there from Wall Ravens to slow down Delu and Team Belgium. There was chaos on that play, and at the end of it, three Australians were beat out, and Belgium comes up with the quad ball. Ermans passed it off to DeWitt. DeWitt now walking over half. Lamit cannot come up with the catch. Could mean dodgeball control going Australia's way. Creffield beat in the back, though. Quad ball turnover. Walker's yep. looking to run. Quad ball turnover to Cam Walker while all that nonsense of the beater game is going on. Louis still has one dodgeball, so that's a big deterrent. Nathan Martin trying to win control by himself is unable to do so as he's beat out. Uh, the pass goes to Lindley. No. It's knocked down by Ehrmans. That should be out on Belgium and Australia ball, but it's not going to go that way. Yeah. We're going to talk about it. Yeah, that, was a... that is a heat time out. Uh, we will catch you again in four minutes. We're going to take the heat break as well.
All right, folks, we are back out of this four minute heat break. Uh, again, just to remind everyone of the situation, Belgium is up 12 to six. We are playing to 14. Belgium did just get a stop. So Sepa De Witt is going to start with the quad ball uh, just in front of his own keeper zone. Belgium also holding control. Louis Lamette and um, Jonah Pienz, although I believe they're running a sub for Pienz uh, right now. And the heat stoppage was actually uh, blown just inches while they were inches away from subbing. Yeah, we're getting quite the crowd forming here as we yeah. enter the final stages of this game. And with that, Rainier's back into this game. Dodgeball in hand for Belgium. So DeWitt going to his right. Delu, the right side option. Hermans, the left side option. Hermans wants to set a screen. Luke Derrick. Looking her off though at the moment. Herman's really looking to screen Walker. Derek, Luke Derek beats out, and that leads to the lane. Oh. Delu unable to finish. Oh, oh. Eggman's is unable to finish as she gets wrapped up. But I do think Cam Walker's gonna get a yellow card here for contact from behind. We're just waiting for the beats to come. And this could be really interesting because advantage was called and all those players were beat out in order to give Australia um, possession and cause the whistle. They oh, might all be off broom. Yeah. And that might mean Egg, Egg, or I'm my apologies, not Eggman's Debbie Poix, uh should be given the quad ball right here with all the Australian players beat because their keeper who could not be beat Cam Walker is headed to the box. Wow. So uh, it could be a very, very good look for Debbie Pois here. Uh, if things turn out the way I think they might. Yeah, Louis also is standing right there with a bludger in hand. So if any of those Australians tag in quickly, I'm pretty sure they're going to be swiftly eliminated. So Cam Walker is headed to the box. No. Cam Walker is headed to the sideline for an inbound. Interesting. So two hoops go I, down and Australia gets the quad ball back. I the, there's I, I think they were just calling way before that it went out of bounds. Anyway, Cam Walker moves with speed to wit. Pass it the pass goes back to Lindley. Lindley pump fake left, finishes right through contact, right over Delu. It's 12-7. Yeah, first Australian going a long time. But DeWitt goes the other way as Lamit clear the lane. DeWitt scores a goal. 13-7. And unless this one's taken back for a foul. Belgium will be one goal away from winning. The goal is good. Just confirmed by head referee Chris Lecomte. You may score uh, 70, 130 Belgium. Yes. And again, we're playing a 140 here. I think there might be a beater discussion uh, around Ruth Crefield of Australia. She was definitely involved in some physical t contact, I believe, with Lamette. This is such a dangerous situation for Australia. Even if they get a goal, they can't afford to give up yep. a fast break. Playing after a beat to Ruth Creffield. It's a blue card. The goal is good, so no time will be served. Again, the score is 13-7 here. Set score 14. So further discussion here between an AR and the HR. Uh, as it stands, Cam Walker... We'll be starting with the quad ball behind his own hoops for Team Australia. Um, uh, the discussion now is just whether or not the penalty occurred before or after the goal. If it occurred before the goal, no penalty time will be served. If it was scored after the goal, then time would be served. Again, we have confirmed the penalty. Wait, Australia's goal is no good. Negated by the foul. Interesting. So Australia's back down to 60 um i really don't know what this call was i'm gonna check the score table yeah i'm gonna um, go confirm what this yeah we're gonna is. we're gonna send someone to score table figure out what is happening um a goal a, a foul to australia would not negate a belgian goal um yeah we don't have um, so we are just talking about it now. The head, head coach, or the the speaking captain for Australia is speaking with the head referee. It is, 
it's it's thirteen sixty. I'm an unlucky break for Australia. I, I, I yeah, I, I believe that that the ref just announced the score is thirteen sixty. I have no idea how that could possibly have negated a goal that happened many possessions ago. Um, really, at the end of the day, with a lead this big, I'm not sure it's going to matter. Walker here, ball handling. DeWitt in front to play defense. Gets it to Lindley, left side. Oh. Big missed beat there from Derek. Lindley rips a shot. Will put gets a hand on it. And it goes out of bounds. That's going to be Australia ball. It was a chaser who knocked it. Maddie Bell to inbound for Australia. She's about to be counted out. Finally, she throws it. Cam Walker is able to pick it up on the bounce. Tries to rip it through. No one home. We'll put there. Derek back with the dodgeball. Because De- every time Australia gets close, it's just not close enough. DeWitt, ball handling. Lamit behind the play. Rainier's in front. We'll put right side option. Hermans again wants to set a screen, this time on Lindley. Pass goes behind to Will put. Will put gets beat out. Timely beat there from head coach Luke Derek. And Australia lives to see another possession. Again, Belgium is just one goal away from winning this game. As some subs now and Mailing is back into this one. Mailing slowly up the pitch. Derek called clean. That's a block. Lamit gets beat. Should be controlled to Australia. But Wilpa intercepts the pass. He has to slow up with two dodge balls back in the hands of Prefield and Derek. So DeWitt now over half, Lamit in front. Lindley coming up to play point defense. DeWitt runs right, uses the head ref as a screen. Ermans, not an effective screen there against Lindley. DeWitt gets wrapped up, stays on his feet. Lindley hits the ground. DeWitt, again slow, going to be pressed here by Crefield. Or Redman. Redman now going the other way to Ermans. Now the pass back to Wilput. Wilput near side, goes middle. Look, the no-look pass to Ermans. Ermans over the top. That's in the back to uh, Van Ellis. Van S- Elsacker. Oh, wrapped up and tapped out of the play, though. And wrapped up. And that is going to be another stop for Team Australia. There's a lot to be there. All right, Mailing slowly up the pitch. Redman in front with a dodgeball. Jones back into this one. No dodgeball in his hands. Ben Elsacker is marking Crawford. That's a reset used for Mailing. Nope. Ed Ref lets him get away with it. Mailing right side. Gonna drive pass. Oh, the pass oh. over to Coleman cannot be corralled. It was too wide, and Mailing gets beat out as well. So another stop for Belgium and one more shot here uh, to win this game with one more goal. Pressure is growing every field possession. Lamit subbing out near here for Mortgott as DeWitt goes over half right side. Span beat out, gets away with a swat. Will put behind. Oh, great screen on Lindley. That's the and game. That is the game. Will put puts it home. Final score, Belgium 140, Australia 70. 60. Uh, 60. <laughs> that one goal taken away at the last second. Um, Belgium do move on to the semifinals where they will face the United States. Not only a rematch of last uh, last World Cup, 2018 World Cup's final, but a rematch of a pool play game that occurred yesterday. Absolutely. That should be an exciting game to watch, see what adjustments Belgium will make in order to come at the U.S. and take it back. All right, folks, we are live here at Pitch 2. We are now going to go to the Will Be Right back screen and be back as soon as we have another game lined up for all of you.
Hang on. All right. Hello and welcome everyone to the 2023 IQA World Cup. We are here on pitch two uh, for a rematch of pool play yesterday in pool B. It'll be India defending the left hand hoops, Mexico defending the right. This is uh, still in that nine to 12 uh, place bracket here. <laughs> India defeated Austria this morning and uh Mexico lost to African nations uh, kind of for a play-in game to be the eighth seed in the championship bracket. So to start, looks like J-Rom and Atilash uh, Tenagai will be the two starters for India that go for the balls. Uh, J-Rom for the quad ball, Tenagai for the dodgeball. See if I can get numbers on these Team Mexico players uh they only have numbers on their backs all right we are about to get underway it's gonna be a fun game i'm feeling it Eva! Team Spirit from Mexico is one of the best yeah, I've seen awesome. this tournament. I believe that's Sanchez de Leon that's going to do the run up for Team Mexico on the quad ball. But I will confirm as soon as I can grab a number here for sure. And we are off. J-Rom, first to it. J-Rom immediately looking to score Ooh. and is able to. Now that's what I call speed. That was Emmanuel Busto, so he beat in the foot race. Is that the fastest goal of the tournament in three seconds? That's got to be up there. Nah. Valdemir Nunez uh, has a dodgeball in hand, but controls with Team India as Ojas Turakar has uh, subbed in. Tanagai has really just beat to do the run-up for Team India. Shrina Shah, the partner with the dodgeball there. So Ray is now up top. Nunez in front. Reyes, Bustos looks like he wants to set a pick on J-Rom. Reyes so far not taking it. Bustos pulls back. Pass goes way far behind. Deep corner pressed by Shaw. Pass goes up to Bustos. Knocked down by Oliver. Ooh. Bustos still able to recover. Bustos gets around the corner on Oliver. Pulls up. Shaw with the beat. And then Turakar with the beat. Now Kota Suarez is running. Kota Suarez. No, no. Ooh. Dodges. But he can't put it through. He was not looking at the hoop. He was looking at the dodgeball. A great swim move over Estrada. Passes to J-Rom. J-Rom with his second goal. And India's second goal. 2-0 India. Man, I, like, now, I like the running from Team India there. Really pushing the pace of this game. When these two teams played yesterday, India came out hot. They went on a 3-0 run before being outscored um, badly and trailing 11-4 later in that game. We'll see if Mexico can stop them one more time or if India can keep the magic alive here. Sanchez de Leon ball handling hits it to Reyes. Reyes up top rips it behind to Bustos. Bustos knocks it down but keeps pressure. it in bounds but Shaw's there. He's beat out. Reyes now has it up top. J-Rom doesn't want to leave the keeper zone even with no beaters around. Rips a shot. It bounces out. Nunez here is able to win control against Turakar. India looking to run again. Yep. Only one dodgeball back on Mexico. Mahanji puts it through the top hoop. He, Raj Makanji opens up his account. And for the second day in a row, India jumps out to a 3 0 lead early yeah, three against goals Mexico. In two it's very fast. This is almost a carbon copy of what happened yesterday as Julie Picasso checks in with the black headband now. Rafael Mandujano subs in as well in a white headband near side. The Reyes option, Estrada the far side corner option. Sanchez de Leon on the near side corner goes to Estrada. Estrada not being marked by anybody, takes her space. Shrina Shaw closes out. The shot is no good. The missed beat, J Rom rips a shot as he gets beat by Picasso. That would have been impressive if he made it from there. It would have been impressive. I'm wondering if J Rom should have just tried to bat that back to his own side. Yeah, it probably would have been more strategic <laughs> play. Ankita Girish and Anjit Alak now in the beating pair for India without control. That is being held by Picasso and Nunez of Mexico. Reyes talking with Estrada as they move up the pitch. 
Mexico's really taking their time here to set up this uh, offense. Yep, Sanchez de Leon going down to the corner as Mandujano is going to remain up top. Reyes, right side. The hoop has, middle hoop has fallen down. And Outlock is just posted up right on top of it here for Team India. Oh, easy interception by Makanji. Makanji takes off and runs. Nunez prioritizes control instead of quad ball. Makanji gets around that corner on Mon Mondujano, puts it home, and India's up 4 0. Yeah, that was just a foot race. But Reyes, though, the takes the opportunity the other way, opens Mexico's account 4 1. Reyes says, if you can do it, so can I. Oh, great catch there from Nunez. I think he got away with one. He came off his broom with that catch, possibly. Um, now, Team India, though, is running. J Rom tries to get around the corner on Madujano. So far, so good. Picasso there as well with a dodgeball. Goes to Makanji. Makanji uses his time, gets it back to J Rom. J Rom beat out clearly before. That's going to be a turnover to Team Mexico. They call a uh, beat. Yeah, so it's a turnover to Mexico. Yep, clear beat before there. India, again, can't score. And they're trying to avoid a repeat of yesterday and not let Mexico get on a run here. Reyes now slowly. Picasso to his right. Mandujano behind. Reyes very slow up top here. Mexico is being very methodical with how they approach this uh, tree zone from India. Yep. Reyes slowly. Rosas Verduzco in front. Reyes... Oh, Gets it over, and a great stuff there from Team Mexico, Mandujano, as Makanji, though, receives the pass from J-Rom, and Makanji easily, easily puts that one home, and that is a good trading of goals for Team India. Goal ref has not noticed that the Mexico hoop is down. She should be replacing that and is not. Ray is now slowly... Goal ref has been told by Team India that that hoop is down. Ray is now far side. Rosas Verduzco in front, providing support. Mandujano, no dodgeballs now. Mandujano brought to the ground. Ball out to Reyes. Reyes with a great block on Alok. Alok cannot get the dodge. The pass goes behind to, to uh, Sanchez de Leon. Sanchez de Leon puts it home 5-3. That was a good pump fake to go for that small hoop and finish on the middle one. Mexico slowly coming back in this game. Anjit Alok looking for a, um, a basically a third bludger interference call here where there was just a bludger or dodgeball thrown out of bounds off play. The, the head ref is going to have a discussion with the ARs about it. Um, meanwhile, after a slow start for Mexico, they've been able to trade goals here, trailing 4-1. Now they only trail 5-3. Uh, Mike, what have they done differently to really allow uh, get themselves back into this game? Yeah, I think Mexico started off being very slow and methodical, uh, trying to take time to measure out India's defense. But as we've seen a lot this tournament, a lot of teams are running tree zones. So I think once you realize what the opposing team is doing, Mexico probably has tricks in their bag and decided, you know what, let's just go to our set pieces. We're going to drive in, wait for our beaters to make a play. And I think they're executing by passing it off at the last second and trusting their players to finish one-on-one -on -one at the hoops, which is really what you need to do against a hoop zone. Without doubt, that kind of phys offensive physicality has been huge for Mexico here. Looks like there is going to be a dodgeball turnover. So this is a, just a single dodgeball turnover? Uh, Where does the quad ball go? Dodgeball turnover. The quad ball was already in the hands of Team India. There is no card on the play. It's simply a dodgeball turnover. So Anjit Alok is awarded a dodgeball, and Ankita Girish already has one kind of way uh, the far side of the camera behind towards the Indian hoops. Looks like the quad balls are sitting on the grass on okay. Team Mexico's side. Huh. So uh, I, I believe the head ref is going to reward it to Team India. I heard them say something about no turnover. Okay. Because it wasn't required. It, it is going... Um, okay, that's good for Team India. They're going to get the quad ball back. So ultimately, nothing really has changed that much. But Yeah, that's a cost stream of Asin now. Uh, going to be 541 is the time akash srinivasan is going to be ball handling here raj makanji to the right avery oliver further right and up the field shakti kodas warren looping around behind india doing a good job calling out the defense or yeah the but, offense they want to run against taste of their own taste their own medicine here in the 3-1 defense all of our 
goes back to Makanji, the head coach Nareshe Adela, yelling, how do we beat a 1-3? Presumably his players should know the answer. Goes around to Kodis Warren. Kodis Warren gets mm. stuffed at the hoops. Great team defense by Mandu Hano as Kodis Warren got Maybe over Estrada. Might, might be able to come up with the possession here. Dodgeball's flying everywhere. Reyes comes up with the ball. Reyes comes up with it, and Team India is going to let him have it. The first offensive possession for India that didn't end up in a clean possession. They were on pace for a goal a minute until that stop is by Mexico. Yeah, Makanji beat out. Oh, Girish beat out. Havoc at mid-pitch. So, Alok is able to force a turnover, but in turn... He abandoned his partner, Girish, and she lost control to Rosas Verduzco. Yeah, he basically beat us. So every- Srinivasan has been awarded the, the, the quad ball, but Rosas Verduzco is now right on top of him with a dodgeball. Rosas Verduzco just was not ready for that brooms up. It gives Srinivasan the time that he needs. Trying to work against Mandujano. Oh. Gets out of a tackle. Gets it to Avery Oliver. Oliver fumbles the pass. Then gets it to Kodis Warren. Kodis Warren pump fakes once, twice. The third time he shoots, India regains that three-goal lead up 6-3. Makanji all over it with Reyes. Reyes picks it up. Makanji now able to lay the hit. Knocks it out. Oh, it might that might be a reset. Nope. Saved right at the last second. Very well saved there by Team Mexico's Brandy Gomez comes in to, to beat out Makanji. Good defense, though, from Raj Makanji. Really not letting Mexico settle in. Yeah, I like that aggression, even though they're sent back to hoops. That's a way. Jurkar in. Oh, a beat and a catch with Gomez. Mandujano uses the reset. Still gets pressed. Gets beat out. Oh. Estrada can't handle Turnover. it. Trina Vasan goes. Raj Makanji one. gets the goal. 7-3 India. So after a little scare that they were going to have a repeat of yesterday, India is able to regain pace and pull it up as Chris De La Fuente is able to win control by himself. Takes out a hoop in the meantime. Mexico looking at break now. Yep, no dodgeballs, but also down a hoop. Reyes goes with the spin, Ooh. shoots top, misses. Eric Reyes, I am surprised, did not just try to dunk it yeah. as... Uh, Team India did not have a lot of size down low to pull him down. Showing off the fancy footwork, but wasn't able to come up with the goal there. David Avila subs in and immediately calls for a 2-2 defensive set. Albert Coronado is also into this game now, up high with Avila. Srinivasan still moving slowly, during the left side option. Turakar is beat out. De La Fuente has the chance to press if he wants to use it. Just the pump fake there, letting Turkar, Turkar subbing out. Looks like he has uh, a limp there. Daura, oh, great pass to Mana. Mana puts it through. The extra pass does it for India as they extend their lead to five. We love to see it. Everyone getting involved. Good teamwork. Shows some great coaching on the side of Team India. Daura didn't even have to look. He knew Mana was going to be there and knew that she could finish. So despite having control, Team Mexico gives up another one as Avila takes it across half. De La Fuente in front. The pass comes near side to John Alvarez. John Alvarez taking it around the corner. Going to be marked by Srinivasan. Al- uh, Alvarez goes right to Avila. Avila scores that far side hoop. It's no good. The beat was there. Timely beating from Team India. We're going to talk about it. The ARs um, disagree about the timing of this beat. Yeah, I don't know. To me, I thought it might have been right, right at the last second. What do you think? Uh, I didn't have a great angle on it. But from what I saw, I thought it was a good goal. Um, we will we will see here shortly. Avila and Alvarez in the game against India yesterday. No goal, so it's going to remain 8-3. Avila and Alvarez yesterday, if my memory serves correct, against India, usually subbed out for each other and did not see a lot of time together on the pitch. Uh, so interesting to see Mexico move to that look, um, unless that's been a look they've used against other teams at this tournament. So India's lone dodgeball here is way uh, behind their hoops on the the sideline. They will have to go chase after that. So their quad ball should be moving really, really slowly. Also from that back sideline in the hands of Akash Srinivasan. So Amish Patel now with the dodgeball for India, working with Yashupuli Jala, well ahead of Srinivasan here. Deering kind of posting up on Coronado. Avila marking Srinivasan. Srinivasan with a great jump dodge on De La Fuente. Oh, I don't know if it was a shot or a pass. Manham had been there briefly before, but then had moved. 
and it goes out of bounds. Stop for Mexico. The score remains eight to three. Mexico continuing to play kind of slowly here. Alvarez asking for someone to be a left side option. Avila takes that role. De La Fuente down deep could be guarding Avila. The pump fake. Oh, great hands from Trina Vas. And De La Fuente tries to keep it inbounds, is able to. Alvarez. All right, they called it out of bounds. So it is going to be a turnover to team. It might not be a turnover. Uh, it was knocked out of bounds finally by Team Mexico, but with a dodgeball. Uh, the last hand it had touched did belong to Team India, so it should still be Team Mexico ball. Um, whether or not they do an inbounding procedure, I'm not sure. They're just going to do play resumes here. So Alvarez is going to be ball handling. Avila beat out Estrada, uh, looking like she wants to guard against a potential dodgeball throw towards Alvarez. Yeah, it looks like Alvarez is probably going to try to drive up the right hoop now. I think they're just discussing. Um, I, I think they also just asked for Amish Patel to take something off his headband or out of his hair. I'm not sure what was there. Um, Yeshu Puli Jala as well. I think just making sure that players can see the color of the headband. Okay. The yeah, just making sure the hair isn't covering it. All right. Viviana Estrada is talking over this with John Alvarez to make sure they know what the plan of attack is here. Team India does have three players between Alvarez and the hoops. We'll see if he looks to drive. He does. He drives right. Estrada has set the screen against the dodgeball. Passes it over the top to Manduhano. Manduhano. Oh, that's definitely Manduhano true. finished the goal. Puts his with whole body through the hoop. With authority. 8-4 now, India. Oh, good wrap at mid-pitch. Great wrap at mid-pitch. As soon as Srinivasan came over, Deering is fighting for it. Manum is fighting for it. Manum is beat up by Gomez. Going to be picked up by John Alvarez. Alvarez, oh, stepped out of bounds. Yeah, it's going to be jo George Deering here to inbound for India. Speaking captain for India is now talking to the head ref. I like the pace of play that Alvarez is working with, not being afraid to attack a defender one-on-one. Yeah. On one. Always looking to run. Mexico, if they can use speed to their advantage, can be deadly with it. Deering is allowed to just pass back towards Manum or to Daura. He's also allowed to try to go through Alvarez if he wants to take the opportunity, but I don't think he's going to. I don't to think change. he's going to want that one, especially with uh, Gomez back with a dodgeball for Mexico. So at 10.43 is the time. India with control, Pulijala and Patel. Deering goes in, immediately uses the reset. Uh, I don't believe it will be a reset because it was his first movement. Gets it into the hands of Srinivasan, and Srinivasan is going to take this one over half court slowly uh, with Pulijala in front. Coronado trying to play defense up high along with Avila. Deering now with it and Patel in front. They're telling Deering to take the space. Stutter step pulls up over the top. Daura, no good on the volleyball attempt, but Srinivasan is there to clean it up and finishes through the hit of Coronado. Nine. 9-4 India? 9-4 India. This, assuming this stands? Every time Mexico seems to be gaining a little bit of momentum, it just feels like India scores a goal or two and stunts it. Yeah, I really like the way this Team India team plays in terms of teamwork and cohesion. A very young team. So, so Albert Coronado has been given a yellow card for finishing or continuing contact through um, the ball being out. Uh, it shouldn't be any time served because there was a good goal. It looks like they're saying but, it occurred after the ball went through. Must be. Right? That's why he's serving time in the box. I'm, they're definitely talking it over now. Yes. If it was before the goal, the goal should AR be. Is coming, AR is coming over. I, I, I would expect to say after. <laughs> All right, nope. So they are just talking about something else. So it is going to be time served here. That also means that it's a quad ball turnover. So not only does India score, they get the chance to score again, and this time on a power play.
Um, because the call was continuing uh, after the ball was out, it's being ruled that the ball was scored and therefore the, the penalty happened after. Um, so Swathi Manam, as the closest quad ball player, is going to be awarded the quad ball for Team India. All of her teammates are behind her except Amish Patel. Amish Patel does not have a dodgeball. So it looks like Manam should just immediately use her reset here. Nope, it's going to be actually be awarded to the keeper. So Srinivasan starting with it for India all the way back at the hoops. So unfortunate turn of events for Mexico, but at least not going to be an immediate fast break. Yeah, Dara has um, tapped in and received the pass. Jayram now back in for Team India. Daring receives the pass. Jayram. Surprised India is going option. so slow while they have this power play right now. <laughs> Just ensuring they get a good look here. Pass off to Jayram. Patel in front, looking to get control here against De La Fuente and Gomez. Oh, Whoa, great block. block there from Avila. Going to go out of bounds. Oh. That is a... All right. It's going to be blue ball, so that's Team India. Oh, because Mexico blocked it. Yeah, Mexico knocked it out of bounds. J-Rom goes to Manum over her wow. head. This time it's going to be Mexico ball on the out of bounds. All right, Mexico and it looks beat. like they should be able to kill the rest of this power play with 10 seconds left. Yeah, Kernel is looking to enter the pitch pretty soon now. Stepping up. Viviana Estrada has subbed out for her first time to be being replaced by Rebecca Rocha. Yeah, Mexico survived India's power play. Yeah. Now looking to answer back yeah. with Coronado. Avila to Alvarez, far side, working his way down into the corner. Coronado over the top option marked with Gomez. Rocha, the other backside option. Mm, strong beater. Strong. Alvarez here. Dodgeball's on the ground. Tries to fight through a tackle, but Cota Suarez takes him all the way to the ground. Or Daura takes him all the way to the ground. Mm. Avila goes high <laughs> and shoots low to get Mexico on the board. Once again, 9-5. Hey, jump. Impressive. Way to get over the defenders, but then not overshoot it. Bianca Scalone subbing into this game for Team India, along with Arjun Patel in the beating game. Looks like Patel is going to be playing with Ankita Garish, who's playing with Alok earlier. Raj Makanji back in as well to play with J-Ram as they play pass up top. Kota Swarin now in again. Whoa. Starting line, except Scalone now in instead of Oliver. Scalone throws it up. No good. Alvarez intercepts. Alvarez to run. passes it to Avila, and he wants to run. Uh, Alvarez. Ooh. Oh, easy score. Dicing. No dodgeballs in front of him. Alvarez smells blood in the water. Takes it home himself. And this is a little run. After being down 8-3, they now trail only 9-6. And Team Mexico is picking up the pace again. This is the type of energy Mexico needs if they want to come back into this game. Only being down three, as we're going to approach yeah. the 15-minute mark and get that you know, yeah. standard heat with, index timeout. So. With, with the 15-minute mark about a minute away, Team India really doesn't want to use a timeout here as they can talk things over during that stoppage. But uh, Vila and Coronado being very aggressive here against J-Rom. He passes it off to Makanji. Makanji, being marked by Avila, goes left, gets through the hit, Floats it over. It bounces off a hoop. Scalone tries to knock it. Is able to. Makanji, the first one to the ball. Can he gets rid in? of it. Oh. But it goes right to Team Mexico and David Avila. Solid defensive stop by Mexico. Yep. Scalone beat out. Makanji beat out. Well, it looks like there might be a Now delayed. there's a stop. It looks like uh, Chris De La Fuente is going to be called. I believe the signal that AR was making was knocking the quad ball down with the dodgeball without letting go of the dodgeball. Right. Um, it was a little bit out of my vision from how the Team Mexico bench is uh, standing compared to where I'm sitting. Uh, but I believe that was the call that the, the AR made with their hands. And if that is the case, that may would make sense. It would be a delayed advantage call in India's favor. So uh, I think they're just going to decide whether or not... That the head ref agrees. Team India's head coach, Naresh, obviously vouching for his team. Uh, actually, I, I think uh, Naresh Adal was just letting the ARs know that, that they've subbed out Ar Arjun Patel for Anjit Alak due to an injury. So just an injury sub during the stoppage. Oh, so, um, so, yeah, it is going to be a yellow card to Chris De La Fuente. Good eye, good eye. So um, gonna get he doesn't like it. He thinks he let go. Um, so it should be Bianca Scalone. Well, technically she was beat in that in the course. Yeah, of Yeah, Scalone play. was beat out. Makanji was beat out. I believe J-Ram is going to be the nearest uh, eligible 
uh, quad ball player. So we're talking, <laughs> talking through this here and just making sure we restart correctly. Um, a dodgeball or a beater power play is going to be huge for Team India to try to get another goal on the board and stop this kind of mini run from Mexico. Yeah, quad ball is a lot about momentum, right? Once you start chaining a bunch of goals together, it's easy to sort of run away with it. But it goes the same way once you are, when you grow cold, right? If you have a couple of possessions where you aren't able to score. So it's good to get that first one to sort of fill the ice, especially as we go into our heat break in a, probably a minute or so. Yep, Adala now being given an explanation as well. All right, so head referee is going to award the ball to Bianca Scalone. There's no dodgeball in the play and no one to beat unless David Avila can really come from behind. It should be an easy goal. Perform some heroics. It Bianca. should be, but we've seen some rim out today. I believe she's probably going to take it all the way and dunk it, but... Uh, my my mistake about the injuries sub, um, Anjit Alok had been out there as the speaking captain, and as Scalone she scores. As she should. Well done. Yep. Way to finish. The lefty with the finish to extend India's goal lead to four once again as they lead 10-6. I believe the next stoppage is going to put us into our heat timeout. Avila across half. De La Fuente in front of him without a dodgeball. Gomez with the dodgeball. Alvarez Jr. now has it far side, rips it back to Rocha. Rocha right back to Alvarez. Alvarez to Avila. Avila rips the top shot through the hands of Cota Suarez. And Mexico has the answer, cutting the lead back to 3 10 7. Yeah, we are just at the 15 minute mark, so we'll see if the head ref decides to call it, which I believe they will. Yep, so we are at that 15 minute heat stoppage. We are going to take the break along with the players, but we'll be back in about three minutes.
All right, welcome back everybody to this matchup between India and Mexico. We have about a minute left on this heat stoppage as players start to make their way back out onto the pitch. Mexico trailing by three, 10 to seven, just over the 15 minute mark. This one is definitely still anyone's game uh, before the flag runner comes out. Absolutely. Uh, it's been a big game of runs. India went up 4-0. Um, then Mexico kind of got their groove and they've, they've closed the gap down to 10-7. Um, and it's really been a game of streaks. India was able to go up 5-3, 6-3, 7-3, 8-3. Uh, and then before it was 8-4, 9-4, and then 9-5, 9-6, before India was able to respond again. Neither of these teams has really been able to consistently uh, really break away. They've been able to score two, maybe three in a row, um, but really having difficulty putting a game away. Yeah, this game has been one of the swingiest I've seen this this tournament, sort of going back and forth, both teams battling it out. Um, but, you know, neither team has given up. And you love to see that. It doesn't matter if you're down by two, three, four, or five goals. There, it's always important to leave it all, everything you can on the pitch. So, J. Rom, as we start up, ball in hand, working his way up the pitch. Girish and Turakar with control for India in front. Makanji, the right side option. Scalone, the or the left side option. Scalone, the right side option. Kodis Warren, back corner, goes to Makanji. Kanji knocks it down. Turakar. Ankita Garish wins control back after I believe she had lost it. Oh, and then a great catch from Gomez wins it right back for Mexico. Turakar doesn't see it, gets beat in the back. Oh, people. Kodis Warren, meanwhile, I thought the shot went through. The goal ref said it went through. None of the ARs or HR made any signal. Um, Looks like the goal ref might be saying beat before, potentially. We'll see here. I think the ball definitely went through the hoop, for sure. Big, big call here. Um, if it's no good, Mexico has a chance to drop the lead to two for the first time since they trailed four to two, um, which obviously would mean a catch wins it for them instead of just tying it. Um, and obviously a goal for Team India, again, puts them at plus four. Regardless of the call here, um, Team India is not going to have any dodgeballs back as Turakar was beaten in the back. He didn't know it was coming, although... It looks like Antikita Garish was able to come over. The The goal is no good. Un, unclear if it was beat before. It did not go through. Unlucky break for Team India. Garish tried to go the, the quick tap on Avila. Avila dodges. Gomez beats Garish in the back. Ooh, oh, but Jerom. Oh, no look pass. The no look oh. pass doesn't work. Avila is able to recover. So India is unable to score. Like the idea, though. I Girish, Fiji, but Girish and Turkar are also able to win control back against Gomez. Focus on keeping control is the call from the Indian bench. De La Fuente left side with the dodgeball. Avila kind of moving down the middle with the quad ball. J. Rom doesn't want to leave the keeper zone. Avila goes right, pulls back. Passes left. That's, I believe, Coronado. Coronado gets beat as he passes to Avila, marked by J. Rom, goes all the way across to Rocha. Rocha, two hands, and finally gets beat. She didn't know what to do after all those pump fakes. Makanji, Makanji gets right through Avila. De La Fuente's back, though. De La Fuente got the beat off, but J. Rom received the pass. They're going to talk about it. They say no good. I think that was pretty close. Definitely. Natural it motion. would not have been a goal, but natural motion, I would have thought the pass was okay. We're going to say it's not, and Team Mexico gets the huge stop from Chris, Chris De La Fuente. That keeps the score 10 7 in favor of India, correct? Yes, remains 10 7 here. That was a beautiful pass, though. Love the generosity there from Team India. Yeah, great, great pass and, and great um, way for Nivs J to, to run the break and be there as a passing option for Makanji. <laughs> so making sure all the, the balls are where they're supposed to be. Uh, Chris De La Fuente, just making sure the dodgeball gets put at the out of bounds marker instead of being remaining far out of bounds. The heat is starting to pick up here. Yep, and that's Vega now in to the game for Mexico. Vega starts to move with speed as Team Mexico says to run. They have to slow it down now. Turakar is back with the dodgeball, and the rest of the Indian defense is set. 
Gomez playing with Garish here. Not going to throw. Finally does. Makes the beat. Vega far side. De La Fuente in front. j -Rom cannot be beat in the zone. Vega over the top to Avila. Avila way over the top. No good. j -Rom catches it. And India gets the stop. Now j -Rom wants to run. Throws it up to Makanji. Makanji Ooh. dodges the beat but loses the quad ball. Cotis Warren gets beat, and that's going to be a good sound for Team Mexico. No. Carlos Prado now <laughs> slows it up. You hate to see that. Oh, that was such a great dodge. Stops. Jumping over the dodgeball. Stops in both directions. Makanji cannot catch a break with these beaters. Avila, right side. De La Fuente in front. Slows it down. Mexico has control. And you Avila moving left. Gets it to Prado. Prado not being marked by anyone on Team India right now. Okay. J-Rom didn't want the pass to get to Avila, but he ran too far. Avila went right. The shot misses low, and David Avila wants that one back. I like I like that look, though. He definitely had a shot at that. Outlock goes for the trade, trying to win control here, make something happen, but one of the dodgeballs ricochets all the way back to De La Fuente at the Mexico hoops. Oh, man. I... J-Rom subs for Srinivasan as Coda Warren slowly up the pitch. Mexico has dodgeball control right now, so... Playing yeah. front back. Makanji far side calling for the swap with Kota Swarin. Fake handoff. Al lock in front. Makanji drives left through Avila, switches arms, goes for the spin move. Avila all over him, though. Gets the pass to Avery Oliver. Oliver. Marked by Prado. Prado gets beat out by Al lock. Oliver. Oh, great pass up to Kota Swarin, who got up there but could not corral the pass. And Vega cleans it up, gives it to Avila. Team Mexico with another stop. We remain at 10-7. Vega yeah. looking for the sub. Going to come from Mandujano. And the Seekers are getting ready for both teams as we're approaching the 20-minute Yep, mark. we're at Very 19 closely. minutes here. Flag runner on the pitch. A win, uh, a pull wins it for India. Ties it for Mexico. A goal here would be huge for Mexico. Avila going left with De La Fuente in front. Srinivasan covering. Cannot be beat in the zone. Srinivasan backs up. Avila goes right, right to Gomez. Prado also there. Avila to the right, being marked high by Srinivasan. Srinivasan gets back into the go zone. The pass goes over to Mandujano. Mandujano right back to Avila. Avila gets beat before. No good. Huge timing on that beat there from Garish and Team India. Alok immediately again looking to run, trying to win control. And this time he's going to do it. Great. It there from Anjit Olak to get the control back right before flag runner. Carlos Prado absolutely launches it to Makanji. No good, though. Gets beat out Makanji. Now, driving through the no-look pass to Avery Oliver. She finishes through Mondujano and India extend their lead to four. 11-7 here is Manum and uh, Gomez Torres are the two starting seekers. Oh. Roger loses his broom. Seeker has to run back. Slow for Mexico here. Avila far side as Estrada is back into this one. The pass goes to Mandujano. Mandujano, he drops it down. He gets wrapped up by Srinivasan. Stands up to it, though. Avila then gets right through and around Palat and scores. The lead is back to 3, 11-8. Roger having a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with the flag runner. We're getting dragged around as they have to run back to the hoops again. Srinivasan running quickly. The no-look pass to Makanji. Makanji over the top. Dropped. Picked up. Palak cannot put it home, but Makanji's there to recover. Makanji gets through the Avila hit, and this time takes it himself. Nice. Again, extending Motor. the lead to floor 12-8. A little bit of a hesitation before that mid-range drop. That shot was true. He had the accuracy. Gets the goal. Is there a stoppage? Looks like there might there be. There is a stoppage. Um, the goal ref is talking about something with the, the head ref. And I believe there's also a call somewhere in the dodgeball seeker game as the ARs from that side of the pitch kind of had hand raised and are going over. The goal is good. That will stand. It is 12 to 8 in favor of India, uh, unless potentially there was a beater foul on India behind the play. Anjit Alok. Looking either confused or upset with the referees here, so I would maybe expect a, a call to go against India here. There's going to be a discussion. Again, as these teams trade goals, 
it's vital for India that they keep trading between four and three. And Mexico is really trying to break that tradition because they'd be much more comfortable two and three or even one and two trading these goals. Yeah. Uh oh. All right. So there, the goal is called off for a beater foul on Anjit Alok. Um, obviously, way behind the the play, but that's how hate, the rules work. So hate to see it. Yep. Yeah, the 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 foul happened before the goal. So the score is going to go back to eleven eight. This is again Mexico's chance now down three with the ball to only go down two. It's also going to make sure that team Mexico not only has control but they're facing the lone beater of Yashu Puli Jala for Team India to give Roger lots of looks at this flag runner. Yeah, Mexico's in a position now with two quick goals they could catch and end the game. <laughs> so it looks like the qual ball is going to be awarded to David Avila here. The keeper for Team Mexico. Nope, it's actually awarded to Rafael Mandujano. And he immediately passes to Avila. Avila with speed now up the pitch, shrieks up the right side, Estrada in front. He moves through Estrada and then just gets brought down at the hoops. He wanted to take it solo. Puli Jala is back in and makes the beat. Puli, Puli Jala there, great effort to get back. And Avila goes down for an injury. We're going to take the injury stoppage as well. We'll be back as soon as we can. So hearing it's just a cramp there for David Avila, uh, John Alvarez is going to take his place in the green headband. Um, Team India did get the stop there, the ball in the hands of Arjun Palat. He'll be able to hand it off here to Akash Srinivasan and get that keeper ball. Again, as a reminder, uh, Anjit Alak is in the box, uh, the beater for Team India. Wow. 
So again, no call on the play. It was just a stoppage for injury. Roger from uh, the Seeker for Team Mexico off the screen right now has a pretty clean look at the flag runner and no one, no one else really around them. So yep. Uh, so so long as Alok is in the box, it seems unlikely Manum from India is going to get a great chance at this flag runner. So yeah, it looks like Roger's going directly for the flag runner, not waiting for India to score any more goals or for Mexico to potentially get the quad ball back. Yep, Shinovas or Palat, far side. No, Shinovas and Shinovas into Oliver. Oliver. Oh, the pass to Palat. Palat cannot corral it. It goes out of bounds. That's going to be inbounds to Alvarez. And Palat gets beat out in the vicinity by Baldi Nunez. Alvarez slowly up. Nunez and De La Fuente both with control, but they're not interested in helping score a goal. Back to full strength for Team India. Alvarez moves right. De La Fuente now bringing the dodgeball into the play. Alvarez. Far side goes over the top to Rocha, off Rocha's hand and out of bounds. It's going to be another stop for India. Roger for Seeker for Team Mexico still having a lot of one on time. Oh, ooh, almost. Palat almost. passes off to Makanji and subs out for uh, J Ram. And then Makanji with speed now moving forward. The pass to Oliver. Oliver gets stuffed by Manduhano, catches the, the block though. Then Srinivasan, Srinivasan putting the moves on, gets it to J Ram. J Ram gets rid of it. No good, no good. Makaji picks it up, gets right around Rocha, and then puts it to Srinivasan, who does put it through. Good goal, 12-8. Yeah. Yeah. Swathi Manum actually looking to um, prevent Roger from catching. Um, the game cannot end until um, the flag runner is caught. Um, so eventually, Team India would either need to try to catch or allow Mexico to catch. Um, Alvarez, far side. Streaking in now as De La Fuente loses control to Alloc. Alvarez moving right, moving right, gets hit, loses the ball. It's going to be recovered by J Rom. But there is a call. There's going to be knocking the ball loose. So it's going to be contact from behind on Srinivasan. Uh, it does mean that J Rom is going to get the green headband, but Manu Hano is also going to be awarded the quad ball here directly on top of these Team India hoops. Makanji can try to block it, but it's going to be tough. I'm going to put my money on Alvarez putting this ball. Manu Hano, Rafael Manu Hano. Or no, it is Alvarez who has it. Alvarez was not the player who had been brought down, but he is the player awarded the quad ball. Let's see how high Alvarez can play. It's like a little, a little, a little, a little, a little. Okay, I haven't seen this person. Stuffed, though. Tries to go through. That knocks the hoop over. Rocha picks it up. Gets rid of it to Estrada. Estrada. Oh, a great spin move. Nope, it's called turned over. Rocha had passed it after she was beat. Bit of a comment. Picasso now in to seek for uh, Mexico is beat out. Looks like control has also found its way back into Mexico's hands. Far side, Makanji, pressured by De La Fuente, rips one behind to Oliver, bobbles, and then gets hit hard by Manduhano. She takes a minute to get up, and it looks like it's just going to be, I, I would expect an injury stoppage here. Um, Avery Oliver already on her feet. She's saying she's fine, uh, but because there was a whistle, she is going to sub out, and Shrina Shaw will sub in with the white headband um, with Swathi Manum wearing yellow. Um, a trade-off uh, where Shaw had worn black earlier in this game. Cheers around as uh, comes off the field on her own own power. Love to see it. Yep. So Shana Shaw is off for him here. Alvarez uh, to run. in front. Nunez beat out here. Alvarez. Girish now dodgeball into the the play with Alvarez. Goes far side, Manduhano, Manduhano beat out. That's going to be Makanji. He, he looks go. up. He sees space. He goes right. He slows up as De La Fuente has a dodgeball back. Moves right. The beat misses. Makanji, oh, the no-look pass to J-Rom. And J-Rom just absolutely sails it over the hoop. There is an injury in the beating game, so we're going to take that stoppage.
All right, everyone, we're back. Anjit Alok, uh, I missed what happened. Took something to the head, either a dodgeball, an errant hand, something. Uh, there's no fouls on the play. He was able to walk off under his own power, and uh, Ojas Turkar does come in to replace him. So after the missed shot there from J-Rom, Team Mexico bringing it up from behind, John Alvarez Jr. Eric Reyes subs back into this game. New seeker again. Brandy Gomez this time for Mexico. Alvarez streaks forward through the right. Nivs hits him with the tackle. The pass goes behind. It's knocked away. That was Isabella Torres. But Alvarez is able to pick it up. Torres with the, the screen, not good enough. J-Rom gets it. And Srinivasan picks it up before it rolls out of bounds. India coming up. Some really impressive stops to stop yeah. Alvarez driving in. India up 12-8. And now we have hit the 25-minute mark. So we are going to take another weather break. Uh, and the broadcast is going to take that break as well. All right, everyone, we are back. We have about 20 seconds left here of the heat stoppage. Again, the score is 12 to 8. Both teams struggling to score since the flag runner has come out. Uh, the flag runner is still alive. Neither team is caught after five minutes. I drip a little water. Brandy Gomez is the seeker for India at the moment. Swathi Manam for India. Uh, Manam has been the seeker the whole time and has not subbed. Uh, Gomez is following, uh, I believe, both Picasso and Roger Gomez Torres. <laughs> so, J Rom moving up the pitch. J Rom sees an opening and takes it. Hits Srinivasan, Srinivasan over the top to Kota Swaran. Kota Swaran gets beat out. Alvarez picks it up. Alvarez now wants to run the other way. Alvarez going right, Kodas Warren trying to race him back. Oh, but the great fake out, it doesn't hit. j Ram got enough on it to push it aside and it rimmed out. And teams trading failed fast breaks here. j Ram far side. It's Gomez is beat out. j Ram to Kodas Warren, he drops it and gets absolutely shouldered by Alvarez. That should be no harm, no foul. Alvarez was in the direction and clearly tried to stand up. Kodas Warren just ran into him. Alvarez, solely up the pitch. Uh, stoppage here uh, for the hoop being down. It actually looks like they might need to replace this hoop fully. All right, we are going to need a full hoop replacement here. That We expect that to take a minute, so we're really sorry, but we are going to throw it to break just one more time.
All right, everyone, we are back with a new middle hoop here on the Team India end. Should be about ready to get going. John Alvarez, Jr., ball handling for Mexico on the right-hand side. Eric Ray is there in. Again, Brandy Gomez and Swathi Manum are both the seekers at the moment. <laughs> yes, please. Making sure all the players go back to their brooms and not just any broom. And we're ready to go. Alvarez over mid pitch near side. Passes over to Garcia. Garcia now with it right side. De La Fuente in front of her. Garcia with the fake and then keeps going right. Srinivasan tries to pick her up. The pass goes to Reyes. Reyes back to Alvarez. He can't handle it. That's one reset line. Chris De La Fuente saves it from going over two, but that is going to be a reset used for Team Mexico. Bit of an unforced error there, but a good job by the beater to prevent it from going out of bounds even more. Gomez, lots of time on the flag runner now. As Alvarez comes over half, far side. Going to be picked up by Jay Rama at the keeper zone. Goes for the shot. Knocked down by Srinivasan. Srinivasan fighting for it. Gets rid of it to Jay Ram. Jay Ram has to slow up with Alvarez in his face. Gets beat out. Tried to get the ball out. Couldn't. That's Garcia. Garcia now moving with speed. Going to the left. The pump fake from Turakar. The forces the pass back. And it goes Keeping through. Good. Great play there. Great stuff indeed. Between Garcia and Alvarez. Had Turakar spinning in circles. And that puts this one back in range 12-9 India. Good stuff. This game is far from over, it feels like, but it's certainly getting exciting. Yep, Srinivasan to Jayram to Srinivasan to Kota Swaran. Kota Swaran took awkward contact there from Reyes as the whistle happened. Um, so we'll likely end up in... Looks like it's going to be called a turnover. I, I think... Um, J. Rom must have been called beat as he was throwing it. Uh, so it's going to be awarded to Garcia here. And for the first time in a long time, if Mexico scores here, um, they would only be down two and a, and a catch would mean the win for them. This is a big moment for Team Mexico right now. This goal could be a huge factor for how this game So Garcia, out. Garcia ball handling. Alvarez left side sending Torres even further. Reyes far right side. Garcia pulls up, moves right. Only one dodgeball. For yep, him marked by J-Rom. Gets rid of it to Alvarez. Alvarez has De La Fuente with him. Alvarez goes left, throws right. That's go Garcia. Garcia over the top to Reyes. Reyes way over the top to Alvarez as Roger is back in the seek for Mexico. Alvarez tries to go straight through and can't J-Rom. Oh, but the great hesitation from Garcia wasn't good enough. Called no good. Alvarez and J-Rom fight for it. J-Rom gets it. Gets it to Srinivasan. Gets it all the way up. Kodas Warren's beat out. Reyes now picks it up with a head of steam and slows it up. <laughs> One dodge ball to be It's still very difficult. Turakar can't quite make the catch happen. Team Mexico maintaining dodge ball control. Giving the seeker a lot of time with the flag yeah. runner off screen. Alvarez. Left side. Puli Jala cheating out that way. Gets, oh, De La Fuente does make the beat. J-Rom, though, knocks down the pass to Reyes. Now he looks to run up the pitch. Cotis Warren streaking down. Ill-timed pass. Alvarez is there. Cotis Warren just gets beat out. I don't think J-Rom saw Alvarez. I think the ref was screening. Alvarez now streaking up the pitch. Gets straight through J-Rom. But again, cannot finish through Cotis Warren or through Srinivasan. And India gets another stop. John Alvarez keeps driving into the Indian defenders. They take him to the ground as they knock down the hoop, and he's not getting anything out of it. Yeah, Team India really stepping up and showing that their defense is not to be trifled with. And Alvarez not seeming able to learn this lesson uh, 28 minutes into this game. Control here to Team India as Puli Jala gets the block, and Kodas Warren takes it the whole way to extend that lead back to 4-13-9. Oh, looks like we're... Potentially an injury stoppage here. Nope, Roger does get back up saying that. Roger's had a okay. lot of time with the flag runner, but it looks like this would be a perfect opportunity to get a new seeker in. Prado now in the green headband for Mexico. Brandy Gomez back in to seek. 
Garcia ball handling far side. Looks like the flag runner actually might need um, either a substitution or just a water break. We are calling it a heat break here. We'll get this started with the flag runner. Yeah. And we'll be back with you again in just about four minutes. Hello, everyone. Welcome back from our abbreviated heat stoppage. The flag runner just needed to get some fluids here as we approach the one arm handicap. Uh, and it was close enough to a heat break that we just took an abbreviated one this deep into the game. So, again, status check India 13, Mexico 9. Neither team has caught. Heat check 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Pre feels like. So, Garcia, far side, gets it to Reyes at the top, marked by J-Rom. Reyes now working right, fake handoff to Garcia. Let's one go behind to Alvarez. Alvarez, oh, great hands from Cota Suarez, knocks it. And J-Rom is the first one there. He gets back, no one to beat, 14-9. Yeah, that was a quick, easy, and efficient goal by Team India to increase the lead, but the Game won't end until the flag runner is caught, so we'll see how longer this one keeps going. Big, and the this, the flag runner is now down to one arm. Um, it feels inevitable at this point. Both seekers. Yep. Mana after. beat out. Reyes across half. De La Fuente in front. Gomez with some time here. Reyes directing traffic. Oh, a little bit of a stutter step there from Reyes, trying to shake off the point defender. Ooh, no look pass. Oh, great feed there. And that's going to be a good goal for Alvarez. 14-10 here. Bianca Scalone now into seek for Team India. Makanji takes the screen from Cota Suarez. Or from, yeah, Cota Suarez. But the shot goes out of bounds. Avery Oliver can't get to it. And that's going to be a stop Ooh. for Team Mexico. And again, Mexico with a goal here could pull themselves back to within three. Scalone with some one-on-one -on -one time. Team India Seeker oh, almost had a clean look on the grab. A spin move, dives for it, not able to come up with a grab. Ooh. Oh, Viviana Estrada comes out of nowhere at the last second flag runner sees. Scalone beat out. Reyes being told to take off, but is doing no such thing. Prado gets the pass. Makanji out there. Makanji is beat out. Prado, though, doesn't take the lane. The no look to Reyes. That's a good goal. 14-11. Good goal by Team Mexico. Another almost catch by Team Mexico seeker also. Mexico still in this game. Alone now with time again. Very close. And is 
Stoppage. We're going to take this injury stoppage as well. We're muted. All right, everyone, we are back live. Bianca Scalone is able to get up and walk off, waves the trainer off now. So hopefully she's all right in the shade. Uh, Swathi Manum, uh, after not a whole lot of rest, is going to go back into seek for Team India. Everyone heads back to their brooms now. So as India leads by three, J Ram does have the quad ball on the Mexican half right side. Carlos Prado is there to play defense. The rest of the defense also set up with Torres and Reyes at the hoops. And Garcia, the other person high in this 2 2. Cotis Warren back right corner. J Ram trying to put the moves on Prado, not working so far. Goes around the corner. The pass to Cotis Warren. Cotis Warren, oh, looks off Prado and goes left to extend that lead back to four. Great look off there. Good head movement. Keeping that. Swathi Manum very close on that last grab. Oh, the spin move also very close as Prado makes the quad ball live again. Manum with two very close looks. And now it's up to Estrada. Prado hands it off to Reyes. Reyes. Moving right. De La Fuente in front now of Garcia. Garcia throws one back to Prado, knocks it down, catches it on the bounce. Alok goes out as Jayaram catches it. Olivar picks it up as he's beat. Makanji now wrapped hard by Prado and taken to the ground. He's able to stand up. Oliver tries to run a pick. Prado hits Makanji hard again. And now we have a stoppage. Two huge hits from Prado. Makanji took both of them without giving up con control of the quad ball. Yeah, you know, as the as this game gets longer and the temperature gets hotter, uh, I think we're going to see a lot harder hits from players leaving everything they have before yeah. taking a quick sub. And you know, I didn't check my watch at the start, but real time, I would not be surprised if we were up over an hour here, and it is hot. Hour twenty. Yes. An hour and twenty minutes into this one. Uh, an extremely hot game. Both teams here consistently trying to get looks. Both teams still trying to run. Um, 
head referee looks like they're ready to make their call. Although now speaking to the Team India head coach and the Team Mexico coach heading over. So that might be a little bit more of a delay. What do you think uh, Team India needs to do to close out this game and actually uh, put it away? I I think that both of these teams are keep going to keep trading around four or three uh, until somebody catches. Uh, and if India catches, the game will be done. Mexico catches. I think both teams can adjust a little bit. Uh, I would not, not be surprised if Mexico caught and then won. Um, just the spark of catching after such a long game yeah. might really deflate India and give Mexico the edge. Yeah. Um, but so far as the flag runner continues to be out there, I would not be surprised if um, both teams played with high energy, but sloppy play kept the scoring low. Uh, and just whoever could keep it less sloppy continues to um, score here as we trade back and forth. Yeah, this game is going to be a test of endurance. Who's able to stay up for longer? Battle of wits, battle of tenacity. Team India trying to get their players water on the field as the refs talk this through. Viviana Estrada and Swati Menem have both gotten very close to pulling since the flag runner has been forced to go down to one arm. Would not be surprised if a catch came soon from either seeker. Who's the current seeker for uh, Team Mexico? Viviana Estrada. Estrada. Have they had uh, any looks earlier? Or is this yep, the first she's, time she's had uh, a few looks in this game so far and coming pretty close. Yeah, Mexico's really been dominating the seeker game in terms of keeping blood control and giving their seeker more time. But as a result, giving up more goals to Team India's chasers. So, uh, so double so dodgeball turnover. Yeah, double dodgeball turnover for throwing back after being beat. No other call. So it is still just going to be Makanji here trying to get away from Prado. Aulok is able to make that beat. Makaji puts on the brakes, gets around Reyes, floats one way over the head of Cota Suarez, and that's going to be a stop for Mexico. A little bit rushed there from Makanji. Another clean look at the flag runner. Not able to come up with a grab before getting beat out by Team Mexico's beater. Yep, and Estrada now again with time. Dodgeballs, dodgeball control, both Ooh. in uh, quad ball defense here for Team India. Estrada. As Garcia ball handles across half. Getting pressed. Reyes, far side now has it. Alok now does beat out Reyes. Makanji guarding Garcia. Alok beats out Estrada as well. Alok really could now beat out Garcia, I think, but is slow to it. Goes to Prado behind. Prado beat by Pulijala, maybe dodged it. Torres picks it up. Torres marked by Makanji. J Rom gets it knocked away. Makanji now is able to recover and give it to J Rom. This is turning out to be a real gauntlet of a game. And more sloppy passes, just like you were saying. So, J Rom now right side, Girish in front. Whoa. And Swathi Manum has a catch. I did not see it, but if it is clean, it will win this game for Team India. An absolute marathon. And the flag runner, I think, just made a no good call, but I, I could be wrong. Yeah, judging by the reaction from the crowd and everyone on the sidelines, I think... Uh, I think relief more than anything. Maybe. <laughs> Finally a grab. The cheer here. Swathi Manum, with almost no time subbed in this period, has been out there for ages to Eight finally minutes. come down with a catch would be a great reward for her. Yeah, this game has been a, a gauntlet, a huge test of endurance for both teams. Catch the catch is good. India holds on Swathi Manam with the heroics. Final score, India 180, Mexico 110. The next game on this pitch is going to be the Team USA versus Team Belgium semi-final. That game is going to be started as soon as we possibly can. We are going to go to the We'll Be Right Back screen as both teams need to warm up, but don't go anywhere. We're going to be back with that semi-final shortly.
phone. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the IQA World Cup 2023. We are on pitch two for a semifinal matchup between Belgium and the United States. This is a rematch of a pool play matchup that happened yesterday and of the 2018 World Cup finals, both of which the United States won. I am Keegan Remy Miller. I am joined by Matt Dwyer. Matt, what are you looking forward to in this game? I'm looking forward to the adjustments that Belgium's going to make. USA looking fairly dominant in the pool play matchup yesterday. It was a lot of uh, fast passing. It was dominance in the beater game. It really, just all around, the USA was a step above what Belgium was bringing. I'm really wondering, did they hold back at all in the pool play game? Were they saving anything in reserve? Were there any secret tactics that they're going to whip out today, now here in the semifinal? I really want to see how they adjust. Definitely expect a team of Belgium's character to or caliber to make a lot of adjustments uh, as the United States continues their huddle talk. We'll see if Chris Lecomte gets this one going soon. Victor Marks will be doing the run up for the quad ball for Team Belgium. Aaron Mees will be doing the run up for the dodgeball for Team Belgium. Chris Lecomte has now given the United States, uh, I guess, not a warning, but said, get your lineup out here. After uh, a very long previous game on this pitch between Team India and Team Mexico, these teams have had ample time to warm up, cool down, and warm up again. Yep, so as Team USA walks out to the starting line, looks like Augustine Monroe is going to be doing the run-up for the quad ball. Jackson Johnson will be doing the run-up for the dodgeball. Marks and Monroe greeting each other. About to be what I can only call a clash of the Titans here. These are two of the best teams at the tournament, obviously, making it all the way to the semifinals. But after such a close game in 2018, which I had the privilege to uh, witness and even commentate, uh, and then the kind of sound defeat from yesterday, I'm really interested to see what they bring. We'll see. The United States has the advantage for right-handed players of having their right hand closer to that mid-pitch line. Although they will be looking into the sun throughout this game. Again, it's Monroe against Marks and Mies against Johnson for the run-up. We are off, and the United States wins it with Monroe. Monroe immediately looking to score, has to pull up. Johnson makes a beat. Monroe switches hands, gets brought down hard by DeWitt, gets it out, healed, trying to pick it up, knocks it over, going to be uh, picked up by Joy Eggman. And that is a good stop for Team Belgium, although their starting beater, Aaron Mees, goes off with what looks like a shoulder injury, and Louis Lamet, Lamet subs into the game. That was a great hard tackle by DeWitt. Uh, Monroe knew exactly where Heald was to try and get that pass out, but the tackle was hard enough that De he couldn't. DeWitt to Eggman. Eggman, right back to DeWitt. DeWitt, marked by Sanchez, doesn't want to leave the zone. Lamit backing up. We have an injury stoppage. We are going to go ahead and take that injury stoppage, everyone. But or, Nope, we won't. We'll keep it right here as Bailey Fields is walking off um, under her own power. I think there's... And an eye, a contact to the eye, just incidental contact there. So Bailey Fields walks off and is uh, replaced by Casey Irwin here to beat with Jackson Johnson. Unfortunate early substitution needed for the United States. We hope Fields is okay after that contact. Yeah. DeWitt still in control, but Johnson right on top of him. DeWitt backs up, backs up, throws with Lamit. Lamit come, comes out of it ahead. And are they calling a rollback on Johnson They're calling there? something. I, I had ARs in my way. I couldn't really see what that exchange was about. But it looks like Lamit is just called off room. So it's going to go the USA's way. DeWitt gets it to the corner and Belgo. Belgo over to Will Put. Will Put back to Belgo and then back to the top and DeWitt. Reset used. Marked by Sanchez. Sanchez trying to get him over the, the line. Can't do it. Sanchez gets sent back to hoops. Yeah, it was a good aggressive play by Sanchez there, trying to force that double reset in the rare instance where it might occur. 
So now Belgium will try again. DeWitt goes right around Monroe and then gets it through the hands of Josh Johnson. And Belgium opens up their account first, one nothing. The U.S. is looking to run. Sanchez to Johnson. Johnson being marked by DeWitt. Tries to go around. Cannot. Fights through. The hoop is still there. Team defense here. Hagman on top of it. Will put on top of it. Lamit is called for not tagging in. To Belgium trying to get a dodgeball back into this play. Casey Irwin trying to prevent it. Lamit is beat out again. Still no dodgeballs. But after 10 seconds, Belgium gets the stop. And that was another good hard tackle by DeWitt. And I think that's going to be key to their defense here. Uh, so long as they can uh, keep USA in front of them in order to stop that drive. So DeWitt slowly up the pitch. No dodgeballs here for Belgium as Lamit has to chase the one behind the Belgian hoops. Jonah Pien. Moving up to try to protect Belego against Irwin. Far side will put. Johnson beat. Top. Hagman. Marked by Sanchez. Gets it deep behind to Belego. Makes a move on Johnson. Has to go all the way up top. Gets it to DeWitt. Control, however, is now in the hands of Belgium. Sanchez marking DeWitt. DeWitt pulls back. Let's limit get in front. Sanchez now forced into his keeper zone. Monroe, the left side up top option. DeWitt goes for the pass. Belego gets pushed by Johnson, but not far enough. Hagman now with it. Rips a shot. Sanchez blocks it through the hoops. That's allowed in the green headband. Hagman, though, comes up with her own rebound. Sanchez fighting for it as she has to backpedal. Two hands on it. Hagman comes out with it. Belego gets it to DeWitt. DeWitt now working. Tries to get through Johnson. Throws it right into Monroe's hands. Monroe is off and moving. Tries to get around Will Put. Slows up. A great series of exchanges there. Belgium looking so good in the passing game right there, finding their outlets four times in a row before eventually being stopped by the United States. Jackson Johnson making a beat, not going to win control. Sanchez left side working against DeWitt, goes over the top to Monroe. Monroe working now against Willput. Big play from Lamit here as Irwin gets a kick to maybe win control. Johnson, the trailer, coming in around DeWitt, goes through. Hagman drops it down. Joy Hagman so far, the early runner for MVP of this game. It was a great run by Johnson in the feed in from Heald towards the center. Johnson has to look to the, the far hoop from him and then completely blocked by Hagman. DeWitt across half. Control to Belgium. Lamit trailing badly. PN. Leading DeWitt down. Sanchez gets back into the keeper zone. Far side, Hagman. Hagman. Belgium maintaining. Deep Dodge corner, Belego. Gets it up to DeWitt. No threat there. Very patient for Belgium. Sanchez goes out, gets beat. Jackson Johnson steps up. The pass goes high. Will put, will put. Gets beat out. And then Belego picks it up and puts it home. Glenn Belego. 2-0, Belgium. It was a great secondary try, and I think this is what we're seeing early from Belgium is that they are really finding those outlets. As soon as the USA is making contact, as soon as they are driving their chasers out, they know where that ball needs to go to have a second attempt. Belgium has forced a full line change for Team USA. John Jackson carrying it up far side, gets it to Crawford. Crawford now working on Will Put, working on Will Put. The, the press, the <laughs> screen for Gavin Stenovich works. Crawford puts it home, 2-1 Belgium. And that was a great move by Crawford, looking for the opening, got the opening, took it. Kay and Irwin now the beating fair for Team USA. They do have control. Lamit, even at the start of this game, already looks absolutely out of breath as he tries to jog to get up. Ertz beat out early. <laughs> DeWitt working against Crawford gets it right or left to Hagman. Hagman, great spin move on John Jackson. He stucks it home past Gavin Zdenovich. Gavin Zdenovich thought he was going to step up on that tackle, and Hagman just pulled it back, did a little stutter step to the outside. And Lamit with the heroics wins control for Belgium alongside PN. Crawford, far side. USA down two. John Jackson slow with Tate K in front. DeWitt backs into the zone to gain uh, immunity from dodgeballs. Tate K, great dodge, wins control. Crawford now working backside on Will Put. Way too high. John Jackson recovers, though. Still marked by DeWitt. De Crawford with the, the pick. 
Jackson, right side Crawford. And then right back up to the top in Jackson. Now the USA's turn to be patient. Lindsey Morella. Casey Irwin wants to run a 1.5. Morella, left to Gavin Zdenovich. Gavin Zdenovich, working around Ertz. Gets it over the top. Cannot be corralled by Crawford, but Team USA is going to pick up the rebound. That's Gavin Zdenovich once again. Marked by Wilput. Pick from Crawford. DeWitt picks it up. Back to Crawford. Crawford, oh, great dog block from Hagman's yet again. John Jackson tries to get around. DeWitt can't. The pass bounces to Gavin Zdenovich, and he finishes over Ertz. 3-2. The USA claws back within one. And Joy Hagman takes a well-deserved sub. Just an absolute brick wall for Belgium and USA not giving up on the point in any sense of the word, manages to finally find the back of the hoop. Fisher and Van Steenkiss now both in 14 Belgium alongside DeWitt and Ertz. Lamit and PN still in this game. So Erwin gets beat out. Take K, misses the beat, gets to Ertz. Ertz now has to use a reset, pressed by Casey Irwin, but Lamit is now back with Ertz. It was a smart pressure by the United States taking that moment to make the reset happen. DeWitt now has it without a headband. It's in the United States keeper zone. Good pick on Crawford. Great beat, though, from Irwin. Van Steenkiss, though, ends up with this. Out of nowhere, there's no defense back for the U.S. besides Jackson Morella. Gets it over to Fisher. Fisher puts it home. And this Belgian offense is cooking. The pressure is doing nothing against them. Van Steenkiss totally on the back foot there as we get a little stoppage in play for referee discussion. Morella bearing down on him, throws it up, finds Fisher for the immediate score. Great ball movement by Belgium. Team USA has been able to hold dodgeball control for large portions of this game, but it has not done them any favors on either end of the pitch. These Belgian quad ball players came out to play. And they are playing at an entirely different level than they were yesterday. It's it's like night and day. They are really firing on all cylinders, pulling out all the stops. Because, of course, you win this game, you are in the finals again. Two fouls on the play. <laughs> Playing after beat U.S. Tate K. Blue card to a beater. Unsportsman conduct to uh, Louis Lamette is going to be a yellow card. So both teams are now going to be down a beater. The goal is no good. So it's going to continue to be 3-2 for Belgium. And Taylor Crawford of the United States is going to start with this one in his own keeper zone, which does mean that the U.S. now has a chance to tie it. So again, both, both beaters in the box for a minute or until the opponent scores. We'll see if Crawford decides to go on a run here or slow it up. The whole Belgian defense is back. Ertz on hoops. DeWitt up near mid-pitch. Fisher to DeWitt's left. Van Steenkist somewhere in the middle. And, and Pien the lone beater back. Yeah, Pien is back with the dodgeball. Casey Irwin should be able to grab one dodgeball, throw it to her own hoops. Here she goes and grab the other one. So effectively, the United States should have control. Irwin just wants to go for the hit as Gavin Zdenovich receives the pass, goes for the shot, gets around it on the corner, and Yanko Gavin Zdenovich is cooking early, all tied up at three. That was a great run there by the entire offense. Irwin didn't even need to get into the play to run Irwin the Irwin beats two. out PN, and now while Team Belgium is all up to full strength, they are able to get control with Lamit coming behind. Ertz now marked high by Morella. Crawford playing marked defense on DeWitt. Ertz moves right. The pass. Fisher can't go. Gavin Zdenovich comes down with it. He's running down. Crawford trying to run a pick on DeWitt. Eventually becomes the pass option. DeWitt gets a hand. John Jackson, the trailer, picks it up, and the U.S. has taken a lead. And that's exactly how you crash the goal. Jackson was absolutely moving in the direction he needed to. Got the rebound. It was a fantastic play by the United States. Great transition. And Casey Irwin is now able to hold control by herself as Tate K. Penalty is killed. Control with Irwin and Kay. Huge, huge play there from Casey Irwin. Irwin, a Herculean effort for this high-level beating core. Take K misses a beat. Could lead control to Belgium. Should should be Belgium ball. It is. As Van Steenkiss tries to work on Gavin Zdenovich. Gavin Zdenovich can't make the hit. Van Steenkiss puts it home, and we're tied up at four. 
Vancine is able to get around the corner there, and that was the big move. As soon as you get Gavin Zenovich to cross his legs, that's it. He had the corner. He got that shot. Take K too aggressive on that play. And he's subbing out now for Daniel Williams. Bailey Fields back into this game. Good to see her after an early injury sub. John Jackson, I believe, was not called for a reset there. So the United States should still have a reset. Sepa DeWitt walks back into his zone. Assistant coach Ethan Sturm, realizing he can't cross half, steps back over quickly. Eggman up top gets beat out. The pass goes back to Morella. Morella now, as Crawford is beat out, running back to his hoops. Morella keeping it slow with Williams and Jackson on the right. Lamette comes up. Morella steps back. Gets it over to John Jackson. John Jackson now, no dodgeballs, runs in, hits Gavin Zenovich. Gavin Zenovich can't handle it, but Jackson picks up his own rebound, then can't handle it. Van Steenkiss with a dive. That's going to be a card. And this one's going to go in the direction of USA. John Jackson completely tabletopped by that tackle after the missed shot. And I am I was amazed that he came up with, with that rebound after so many bodies in the area. And unfortunately, that's going to go against Belgium. Yeah, Gavin Zdenovic, after early success, bobbled that pass very unlike him, uh, both in general and in this game. But it looks like the foul should be on Belgium. And the U.S. is still going to have a great opportunity to score and regain that lead. Each team having their time to try and argue their case who had referee Chris LeCompte. No contact! No side. Yeah, so Van Steen kissed for the dangerous dive right into the feet of John Jackson. They high five. They're all good. Yeah, they're good. And Van Steen kissed is in the box for a minute or until the United States scores. So Cr Crawford is not going to start with it. It is going to be John Jackson. Jackson's got a couple defenders in the way between him and the hoop. Look and for that pass to Morella. It Although, looks like he's going to go to the back line. Yeah. Yeah. So now Jackson's got a lot more space to work with. Morella and Crawford options. Gavin Zdenovich beat. John Jackson with speed. Moves right. Gets beat. Crawford gets beat out by Lamit. Now DeWitt. John Jackson immediately lets go on that contact from behind. Couldn't get away with something. DeWitt here puts it home. Belgium with the lead. 5-3. And Williams tried to kind of volleyball spike that, that uh, dodgeball coming in to try and get DeWitt. And DeWitt was just a little too quick for it, and able to score. Again, a line change for the United States. Skura, Trudeau, Bear, and Freed now in along with Williams and Fields. Skura to Trudeau. Trudeau left side. Got to work on Hagman's. Gets it to Bear. Bear, deep corner, going to be met by Ertz. The pass goes to Freed. Freed is beat out, and the shot did not go. DeWitt with it in the keeper zone, and Belgium with a chance to go up too. It was good chaser positioning by the United States. Freed had an opening, but unfortunately, Belgium's uh, beater positioning was better. Penalty killed Van Steenkist in. Lamit makes a beat, can't win control. DeWitt. Backs it up against Freed. Williams beats out Hagman. Williams then goes at DeWitt. DeWitt passes it to Van Steenkist. Hit hard by Leo Freed. And I think Freed's going to the box for that one. It's either a card or a double reset. It is a double reset. Oh. That is a clean, clean hit from Leo Freed, who came in with a full head of steam. And Leo Freed is going to be given this dodgeball or this quad ball right on top of the Belgian hoops. Uh, and Julia Bear there, uh, a bit able to receive a pass. Uh, should Freed want it. Ben Seedkiss obviously not happy with that call. Freed. Oh, the pick from Bear knocked over the hoop from Hagman's, and DeWitt picks it up. We saw this in the Mexico-India game. You cannot run through people into these hoops because they will fall over. Very unfortunate there. I'm wondering why Free didn't cut it back to center to try and Lamit dunk it. out. Williams gets the beat off on Morcott, who went for the hit. Will put now. One-handed catch. Marked by Bear. Williams tries to go for it. Freed intercepts it. Knocks it down. Freed now working on DeWitt. The pass to Bear. No good. Neither is the shot. Skurr there to pick it up. Skurr is beat. Trudeau, the one-handed grab. Working on DeWitt. DeWitt gets the wrap. Gets Trudeau to the ground. Trudeau gets it out. Fisher falls on it. Then... Belgium still has it. Finally, Trudeau is beat out. That was Glenn Velago with the second effort for Belgium.
And that was a great defensive stand there by Belgium. Huge hits, especially taking down Trudeau. Very hard man to take down, and that was big to stop the score. Still no control here for Belgium, but they have switched pairs to Victor Morgat and Elizabeth Rainiers. And we'll see if they can be as effective without control as they were with their first pair. Will put far side, marked by Freed, gets it back up to DeWitt. Hagman, near side option. Belgo behind Freed with the hit. Hagman, good dodge there on the Williams attempt. Gets it to DeWitt as she's marked by Bear. DeWitt, left side. Freed steps up. Field steps up. DeWitt gets rid of it. Called a turnover, even though it's a fantastic catch from Glenn Belgo. Skura, slowly. No control for the United States. They want to work to get it back. It was that missed beat from Williams that allowed Belgium to get it back on the last play. Mort got still with control. Rainier's looking to press. Beats out Williams. Not called beat. Trudeau uses the reset to Skura. And Trudeau is beat yep. out. Fields, not sure what she was doing there with that dodgeball, but Belgium could press if they want. DeWitt working on Skura. Rainier's closing out to it. The pass behind to Freed is intercepted by Wilput. That's a stop. Freed is beat out, and Belgium does elect to slow it up. And Rainier's is looking for a sub, as is Sepa DeWitt. And I think that's the first substitution for DeWitt this entire it, game. Well it earned. Is. This is a big test. Nick Delo now in. Can Belgium hold on with Sepa DeWitt out? We are almost at this 15-minute mark. Bear is beat out by Mortgott. Hagman's over left. Will put, will put. Nick Delo gets rid of it. Cannot finish through contact. And then out of, not out of bounds, saved at the line. Delau, Delu, Delu now against Trudeau. Using his time, being patient as the U.S. wins control here. Hagman now has it up top into Wilput. Wilput now going to be pressed by Fields. No, as Mark got, has gotten back in front and this game slows down. It was a good, and now Belgium has received a warning for stalls and some cheers from the American fans across from us. An absolute masterclass is patience is this offensive possession. Hagman tries to get around Freed, can't. Freed lost his broom and kept playing. That's going to be a card. I think Freed let go pretty soon, but apparently not soon enough, according to our reference. Chris, Chris LeCompte made these exact same calls in the quarterfinal. I will say one thing. You may not like the call, but it is consistent refereeing throughout the day. And I guess that's all we can hope for, as that is a huge loss for the United States, as Freed is having a little conversation with LeCompte and Michael Yada Parada going out and arguing the case as well. But Freed will take the long walk to the bin. Yeah, head coach Parada of the United States. So Trudeau will don the green for the United States. Still has fields uh, at the center of the field with the dodgeball. And I'm trying to locate the other one. A lot of bodies in the way here. Um, yeah, so one dodgeball on the ground. PN may be able to pick it up. Fields uh, with one in her hand. I agree. I, and uh, The other one on the ground, far sideline. Ah, uh, there it is. Thank De you. Delu has it. Far side being pressed by Fields. The pass goes to Belago. He dodges Trudeau, tries to get around Skura. A beat's coming from behind. He gains enough distance from Fields. Skura, great defense, though. Wilput has it. And again, Belgium being patient, but they really, if they want to take advantage of this penalty, they need to go. Fields can't quite come down with the catch, but maintains control. But they lost Hagman's. Daniel Williams was so concerned with the dodgeball play, he lost Hagman's, and she just took it herself. Belgium's up two. And that is going to be the heat advisory. And that's our 15 minutes. That is the 15 minute stoppage. And it could not come at a sooner time for Team USA, who essentially get a four minute timeout. Matt, what are they going to talk about during the stoppage? Oh my gosh, I think they have to talk about how they're controlling their offense. I think that's the biggest thing right now. Uh, it, I mean, both teams have had good looks, certainly. Both teams have had a lot of patience on offense when it suits them, but Belgium is really converting more. The United States is just simply, they, they are, Belgium is one of the few teams at this tournament that can actually physically stop them, and that is huge when it comes to how they've been playing their past games with some passing and major drives. Yep, I think on the offensive end, a few of these transitions have looked a little bit rushed for the United States, but more importantly, on their half courts, they are not really making this Belgian defense rotate too much. The uh, defense is there both in terms of dodgeballs in timely places, but also hands in timely places. Lots of blocked shots, lots of blocked passes. 
I've been impressed with the beater play on both sides. I mean, Williams and Fields have been holding it down more or less in their stint together here on the field, but it has not been made easy. Belgium is putting a lot of pressure on these beaters, and you saw in that last play that Williams got out of place, and that allowed for the goal from Hegeman. Yep. Fields almost had a catch, then didn't. Williams caught that out of the corner of his eye, was so concerned with that, he missed that Hegeman had made a juke and just went in for the dunk herself. Um, certainly, we still have three more minutes. Team USA Dutch just did their chant. They're going back to the field. We still have fully three more minutes. Um, I, I think the Belgian side early, they've proven they can play and win without making bludger control a priority. Uh, I think they've also proven that Nick DeLue, while not going to serve as many minutes in green as Sepa DeWitt, is perfectly a competent replacement against this Team USA side. And I think he's been tested more on the offense than the defense at this point, with DeWitt making so many key tackles on the other side of the field. But on offense, he's fluid. He knows where his receivers are. They are moving beautifully, and it's really giving USA some trouble. Additionally, as I noted early, and as has become even more the case, if Belgium win this game, do not be surprised if Joy Hagman is considered the MVP. Stops and goals. She has looked like the most poised person on the pitch between both teams throughout this game. It, it is, and I think it's because she's making it look the best. <laughs> I'm looking at some of these beaters and the insane plays that they're they're doing, you know, watching Fields, watching PN going at it, you know, mano y mano, so to speak. And it, like, it's, you know, it's the dirty work, right? It doesn't look pretty, but it is so difficult. So Belgium now making their way back to their brooms as well. Fans here. Mostly on the side of Team USA, I think a lot of the European fans here are watching the Belgium-England game. And we are now whistling to go back live. So again, the United States trails by two, down 6-4. Tyler Trudeau, quad ball in hand for the United States. Playing alongside Skura, Freed, and Bear. Daniel Williams and Bailey Fields holding control for the U.S. We'll see what adjustments are made after that four-minute stoppage. Give everyone a chance to rest, get some water, and maintain their composure. It is toasty hot out here. On the whistle! Trudeau, slowly hand off to Skura. Skura, left side now with speed as the dodgeballs blow things up. Glenn Belego playing defense. It's picked by Trudeau, not picked up by Skura. Skura still being marked. The the trade-off though still works for Team Belgium. Freed to Bear. Bear marked by Will Put gets rid of it to Trudeau. Trudeau rips a shot. That one's good. Six five. And a shout of jubilation from Trudeau as he just whips it as hard as he can through that top hoop. Trudeau immediately being asked to sub back to the top line here. The US, or at least the starters, Sanchez, Josh Johnson back in. Freed for Monroe. And Bear is indeed going to sub for Heald here. So back to the starters for Team USA in the chasing game. Belgium similarly uh, making some substitutions. Sepa DeWitt in as, as well as Lemaire and Rainier. Yep, Lemaire and Rainier back in. DeWitt working on Sanchez, gets around. Monroe trying to be help defense. He picks him up. DeWitt backing up. Hagman's the option. Hagman's gets it. No dodgeballs for Belgium. Daniel Williams forces a pass, but Wilput is there to receive it. Gets pressed by Fields. He uses the reset. Monroe knocks it down, but DeWitt is first to it. DeWitt kicks it. It gets over to uh, Ertz. Ertz then back to DeWitt. DeWitt saves it from going over. And that was an extremely impressive kick from DeWitt. It's, it's the rare but beautiful uh, soccer moves or football you know, for our European fans. DeWitt now working left on Sanchez. Hagman goes for the pick, thinks off of it. Hagman's now with the pass. Monroe going to stick with DeWitt here and his beat out. Williams beats out Lamit, but DeWitt drives through. Johnson gets a hand on it, knocks it out of bounds. That's going to be Team Belgium ball. And the the Belgian attack is so utterly persistent. DeWitt the can hardly has to throw breath. as Fields is right there. Throws it up, jump ball. Hagman's comes down with it yet again. And Sanchez is going to be given a card. I think the, the 
I think the call may be defenseless receiver. Sturm running onto the field. Team USA manager going to see what uh, if they can have a conversation about it. Did it, not look like it looked like Sanchez went up for the jump. It looked like a jump ball situation to me. Both players were off their feet in the air. I don't think Sanchez purposely meant to take out Higman. <laughs> Certainly, I don't think Sanchez was going for a tackle, but intent has nothing to do with these calls. LeCompte making sure he gets it right with his ARs. And if this is a defenseless receiver, this could potentially be hugely consequential. For another the play here, and, and although the, the Team USA beaters forced another crazy pass, Team Belgium has been the first to all these loose balls, and it felt there. Williams went for the beat on Lamit. And then kept going at towards Lamit, towards that extra dodgeball, trying to create chaos on the 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 Belgian side, but then never actually beat DeWitt. So it never actually created a turnover. I think these USA beaters need to be more focused on creating turnovers and less focused on creating no bludger situations for things that might happen if their chasers clean it up. I, they need to recalculate what their point of no return is. How far are you going to push that press before you need to commit and actually make the beat versus pull off and get back on defense? So it's just called reckless play to Sanchez. One minute in the box or until Belgium scores. Hagman came down with it. She is still going to have the quad ball here. But Daniel Williams is going to be right on top with a dodgeball. Monroe donning the green now for the United States as Belgium gets a power play. All right, we are about to get underway here again. Hagman rips one way high, cannot quite reach. Ertz, uh, Kield intercepts. Kield now to Sanchez. No dodgeballs back. Sa or not Sanchez, Monroe. Monroe with the green headband up the pitch. Goes right, passes left, knocked down by Hagman again. <laughs> Will put picks it up, gets it to DeWitt, and the U.S. is stopped and now have to kill the penalty for a little bit longer with Belgium on offense. It might have just been our angle, but she didn't even look like she was in a position to block that. It was like a preternatural instinct. Van Steekist now back into the game for Belgium. Lamette leading in DeWitt, DeWitt to Hagman. Hagman back to DeWitt. DeWitt driving, rips a shot too high, no good. Rushed play there from Team Belgium while on the power play. And Rene putting a lot of pressure on fields there, but it didn't end up happening. And now USA has a chance yep, to run. With speed, no dodgeballs. Johnson moving forward. Monroe to set a pick. Just floats one in. No one covered the hoops. And we're tied up again this time at six. And a rare defensive misstep by Belgium, I think. They were so focused on stopping the drive, they really stepped up. To, I think they were expecting Johnson to just try and go through them. He just pulls up for that. Jackson no Johnson, after manipulating that third dodgeball in a very legal manner, is able to create another no dodgeball look. This time immunity is allowed. Now it's not. Now it is again. That dodgeball was thrown way off. The attempt was on Van Steenkiss. He's not able to come down with that. That's Josh Johnson. He slips on this turf. Again, looking up to run. Fields now creating all sorts of problems for Rainier. JJ all the way through hits heels, and the U.S. is back in the lead on a little 3-0 run. And that was a great pick on Sanchez, allowing for the lane for JJ to pass into Heald. Great post up at the hoops for a score. And Belgium taking the timeout. Uh, Belgium here with their timeout.
All right, folks, we are back out of this time out. A little bit of a delay here as we work through some technical difficulties. We want to make sure we can get a flag runner cam picture in picture on this game. Uh, it's not going to happen, it looks like. We can't get those technicals sorted. We'll try before the finals. Uh, Victor Marks will be starting seeker for Team Belgium. Ryan Davis, starting seeker for Team USA. A catch wins it in either direction. And with control here in the hands of USA and the only dodgeball for Belgium, way on the other side of the pitch, it could be trouble for them. Reset is now used, but Ants has it way behind the Belgian end as the U.S. backs off of their high press. Lamette. Just throws back, can't make the catch. And, and Jackson Johnson, again, looking to just create huge chaos. The pass to Witt knocks it down, but can't catch it. Monroe looks right, gets it to Sanchez. Sanchez wrapped up, but scores. No, does not score through the contact. Johnson, though, on the second effort, is able to. A two-goal lead for Team USA. And, and not much doing out of that Team Belgium timeout. And the beaters have been going absolutely insane on the other side of the field, trying to posture to get control, to get a place in this game to beat the Seekers. Both teams here want a quick catch. Marks beat out. Davis not beat out. The dodgeball to Ertz. Ertz marked by Morella. Looking to get back over half. Davis beat out. Marks beat out. DeWitt now slowly. No dodgeballs here for Belgium. Davis gets a good look, can't pull. DeWitt intersected by John Jackson. John Jackson with the goal, puts the U.S. up three. John Jackson with speed, goes around the corner, tries to get through DeWitt. Absolutely smokes through Hagman's. That was enough to not score, though. But then the pass to Irwin, now in as a chaser, puts the U.S. up three. And all USA all the time right now as the momentum is really shifting in their direction. Jackson Johnson putting on a clinic of fast beating. This, as he is this, giving so much protection to Davis. The aggressive beating style has finally started to click for Team USA as Ryan Davis with a diving attempt can't catch and then is beat out by Lamit. DeWitt now blocks a dodgeball or blocks a dodgeball from Jocks, Jackson Johnson. And all three are on the ground right now. As Glenn Belegu now in with the black headband for Team Belgium as well, beating earlier. Devi Poix, ball handling for Belgium, her first minutes this game. The flag runner may be injured, still stopped. Moha Gog now in for Team USA to seek. DeWitt working on Irwin. DeWitt and Morella now picking him up. The screen from Devi Pois. Oh, and then the wrap, but the pass comes through to Van Elsacker, and that puts Belgium back in a range where if they catch, they win. Down two. John Jackson, far side. Mark's getting looks. Hagog trying to block here. John Jackson, far side. Mark speed out. Jackson coming in. Huge screen from Irwin. The team defense is going to do it for Belgium, though, as DeWitt comes away with it. Big hit there from Devi Bois. And their physical defense is certainly helping them as Jackson's backhand couldn't go Hagog, through. Hagog, good look. Close, no cigar. DeWitt. Really slow now from DeWitt. He doesn't know what's going on in this dodgeball game. Mark's now moving forward. The pass goes far side, Fisher. And Mo Hagog has caught for Team USA. That catch looked legal, and that is going to give them the win here. 120 to 70, if it's called good. Hagog has quite a lot of length, even longer than Davis. Really laid out for that one as our uh, flag runner, Porter Marsh, was on the back foot. Team Belgium gave the United States a huge scare. But after being tied at six, they've been outscored three to one. They gave Hagag and Davis much more time than the Belgians were able to give Marks at this flag runner. And it looks like it may have paid off. A win here does send Team USA back to the finals. The and catch. the catch is good! Team USA makes it back to the finals. Their final streak stays at perfect. And the final score in this one is Team USA, 120, Team Belgium, 70. Simply an incredible match from both teams. The beating was absolutely insane. It was so hard to keep track. And of course, the passing from both sides was incredible. Belgium really giving the toughest challenge yet to this Team USA offense and defense, both sides of the ball really putting in the work. Team Belgium proving that the pool play game was the fluke, not keeping Team USA range as they've now done back-to-back -back in the brackets at World Cup.
and giving the United States a real scare, leading for large portions of this game and never looking like they were far out of it. The USA really needed a pull to get the win, and Mohagog was able to provide that. Simply an incredible match. I'm really excited to see what the finals will hold. Uh, you'll have to, well, I guess we'll have to stay tuned and see who the United States will face as we get our next semifinal here soon. So we are now going to go to the, we will be back shortly screen on pitch two. This will be the finals pitch. I believe there will also be a bronze medal match on this pitch. So follow along IQA on Facebook, on this YouTube page, and we'll get back live with you as soon as we can. Hello and welcome back to the IQA World Cup here in beautiful Richmond, Virginia. This is Clay Dockery once again bringing you the third place match here between England and Belgium. And I am joined by Matt Dwyer and Claire Hutchinson. And we are super excited to be with you here for this a, a fantastic match between Team England and Team Belgium. Um, Matt, can you kind of set the stage for how these two teams got here? Absolutely. So if you were tuning in earlier, you saw an incredibly intense game between Belgium and the United States. It's their most recent uh, matchup. Uh, very, very intense. The United States came away with it and moving on to the finals, but super close. It was tough. It was physical. Luckily, the Belgians have had a bit of rest uh, on the other side of things. England. Uh, and Claire, take over England. Please. Sure. So England's just come off a heartbreaker against Germany. Very, very close. Several snitch catches rolled off. So I think they'll be really hungry for this. They had a really strong day yesterday, finishing off their pool play game against India this morning, um, advancing through Canada as well. Um, so I think they'll really be hungry here. And we are going to have a nice, uh, hopefully, tradition coming up here for the teams entering onto the pitch. So as you see over to the right of your screen, there are the flags of the nations that are represented here at this World Cup, and the teams will be coming out onto the field momentarily. Um, it's a super exciting moment. Uh, a third place match is not where these teams wanted to be, but it is going to be a great matchup. Absolutely. Uh, we're, we're speaking of third place matches. I'm looking at our sheet here, uh, England, only been to the podium one time back in 2016, the third place finisher. Belgium, of course, in 2018 being the second place finisher. And it looks like our teams will be processing in here shortly. All right. Both so, teams have played each other recently, especially uh, a lot of the European teams were having international friendlies to get ready for this tournament um, in which uh, England and Belgium will have squared off several times. So they're used to playing close games together. Uh, as well as the most recent um, EQC final featuring Werewolves of London first versus, uh, of course, Antwerp featuring players from many of these teams. So they will have played each other very recently. And here comes the teams coming through with their flags in the front, coming out onto the field now, Team England and Team Belgium. We're just going to let you watch them. All right, so the teams are now out here on the field and we've set the stage. Uh, Dwyer, what is it that you think you're going to see out of this Belgian squad in this game? I think they're going to use their physicality to their advantage. They've got very large size. They're really going to look to stop any sort of English drive on defense. On offense, in the United States game, I was in awe at the passing 
and uh, spatial awareness to pass around the United States defense. If they're able to do the same against England, they're going to have a really hard time defending it. Yes. Two times in three matchups now, Belgium within flag catch range against the United States. That is a fantastic showing from this Belgian team. Claire, same question, but about England. Uh, what do you expect to see out of them in this game? Well, I think both teams have learned a lot. I think you can see that, especially in Belgium, having learned from playing the USA multiple times. They'll be trying to apply all of the knowledge they've been gaining over the course of this tournament. Um, I also really think this is the final game. They're going to have a little bit of fun. They're going to put on the wheels. They're going to try things they haven't tried before. If you have anything left in the tank, this is the place to leave it. So I think we're going to see both teams uh, really just coming out of the gate, trying to have a good time. Amazing. And we have the runners coming up against uh, the volleyball in the center of the field are set. It will be Matthew Houghton for England coming toward the volleyball and Victor Marks for Belgium coming toward the volleyball. And behind them, as was their strategy last time with both of these players, their fast, fast, usually chaser seeker, uh, Jordan Amer Jeffrey, is going to go for that dodgeball to try to gain both dodgeball and volleyball control for England. And on the Belgian side, um, I can't quite see who their beater is yet, but as soon as we do, we'll let you know. It is Eran Nice uh, coming up for that dodgeball for the Belgian side. So in the last game against Germany, England was able to get possession of both the quad ball, the volleyball and the dodgeball, and immediately had an attempted shot on goal that went just wide. Uh, so this is probably what they would like to do again this time, use that speed to their advantage. We'll see if Belgium can counter it. I do believe Matthew Houghton has a perfect record in gaining uh, the volleyball control off rooms up for this weekend. And indeed, in the most European friendlies, I think he was 10 for 10. So uh, if anyone wants to make a bet, I'll, uh, there's some easy money in it for me, I think. I bet you 13. Uh, we don't bet on those things. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we use the same currency, Claire. <laughs> Let's hope you haven't jinxed him here as the players line up, getting ready to go. I kind of hope she has jinxed him. I'm, I'm, my money, theoretically, is on marks. We live for the drama. And our, oh, we have put everyone into position. We have brooms down. Are you ready? Come on, come on. Both teams are ready, and we are ready. Let's get this third place match underway. A little bit of a false start there from, oh, I, I, Marks with the volleyball and immediately passes it off to Sepe. Bit of a wobble there, but uh, Belgium deciding to take it slow off the start here. That's um, Hegemans on the far side, passes the volleyball to the back. Wilfoot had it. It almost gets back in the hands of Marks, but instead is picked off by England. That's Ben Malpass coming up the center here, looking for his options, taking some time to assess. Malpass, crucial player all weekend and for England in general, gets the uh, volleyball to Seb Walters on this near side. What do you see out of the Belgium defense on this first drive? Oh, that Walters goes in. Walters passes back. It's going to be a reset used. But Malpass is close enough to stop it from being a more dangerous. Mikey Orridge having some uh, fun with the dodgeballs while we wait. England, very patient, wants to get everything set up. Barrington and Orridge are with dodgeballs. Malpass goes in and is immediately met and backs out. I think we're waiting some, from beater, for some beater movement here. We've got... Uh... Pass across. Seb Waters picks it up off the ground. Looks to maybe make a shot, but there's a big hand of Sepe in the way. Oh, long beat attempt does knock out Orridge, and the pass goes in towards the hoop. That's Bexlow. Bexlow is knocked down by two of the Belgian defenders, and that is a stop for Belgium. What did you see out of Belgium there? It was a patient defensive look. They kept their composure. Uh, Le Maire was definitely badgered by the English beaters, however, kept his composure, and they came away with the stop. And now we're going back the other way. Sepe with the volleyball. Egemans calling for it in the center here. Both uh, dodgeballs on offense for Belgium. Pass goes into the far back corner behind a couple uh, ladders. And Marks comes around, gets it off to Wilput. 
Will put over the top. It is no good. It goes over the top of the short hoop. And it's uh, the other way. Sev Waters with a fast break happening. Has Malput in front of the hoops. And Malput puts it home. That's a great goal for Malpass there. Waters surveyed the field as soon as he picked it up. Looked for the opening. Malpass streaking down the near side. Great goal for England. Yes. Helped out, especially by England regaining control on that defense. The great, uh, great um, dodgeball work there. Sepe now wants to make up for that um, lost possession last time. Gets the volleyball to Wilpit on the far side. It's rolling around on the edge. Um, Seb Waters goes a little high. There is a reset as Sepe takes it all the way back into Belgian and territory. And we have a stoppage here. Card is probably going to come out. Uh, referees are going to discuss. Uh, what do you think that the call might possibly be here? Uh, some sort of illegal contact. Looks like it is that high contact on Seb Waters, and Seb Waters will be coming to the box, has exchanged headbands, and let's just see what the actual card coming out will be. It is a yellow, it is a yellow on Seb Waters. That'll be one minute in the box or until Belgium scores. What do you see for Belgium as an opportunity on this power play, Matt? Uh, we're getting a call from our referee. Yeah. Uh, I mean... DeWitt has a lot of space in front of him. Uh, it looks like Belgium has beater control right now. Let's and see we're if he can on. move the offense. Sepe. Passes over the top. It's one of those shot passes that could have gone in. Marks from behind with a pass. That shot is through and good. Same situation um, for Marks from behind the hoops. Is able to put it home. It is now 10-10 as Belgium is able to tie it up. And that does get Waters back into the game. Malpass waits on all of his teammates to get set up, and Belgium is in their defensive set. We're going to see it, probably an attempt to regain control from uh, England here. Lucy Barrington going to work. Mikey Orridge looking for his opportunity. Seems like he's found it. There we are. Oh. Oh, that's Seb pressure. having a little dance on the far side. Yeah, high pressure from Marks on Seb, not letting him just stay alone at the top. But Orridge is able to push Marks out of the way. And now Seb takes the opportunity, passes behind, knocks it through. That's and Alexander McCartney with the goal. We're and probably going to hear some... Uh, Chance for Alex McCartney on the side here. England having come up with personalized goal chance for each of their players. The hymnal, as they called it. <laughs> and that is now two for England, one for Belgium, and Belgium is back on the attack going the other direction. I think all the dodgeballs are away from the field of play here. So Sepe this is gets it to Hageman's. Hageman's lifts it loose. It goes close to the hoop, but it's not in. And then Sepe gets it back from behind and throws it through the short hoop. Goal there from Sepe. Nice coordination from the three Belgian quad ball players. And that's what we were talking about, that really good passing, looking for their outlets in the offensive third of the field. England was completely turned around, completely lost track of DeWitt. All right, Claire, what do you, what do you think England is going to bring here? Uh, well, we've had a brother-for-brother brother sub here with um, the elder Bill Orridge stepping onto the field, captain for England here. So I think we're going to see a little bit of a beater shake-up as Kerry Z steps onto the field, see if they can regain control for a longer period of time. So and I think we'll see some ball cycling here while they attempt to get to work. And this is a new line basically entirely for England. Uh, we got Veal, number 22, at keeper. Um, at 18, Brett with the volleyball now tries to make a move around the Belgian defense. Passes over into the ground. It rolls around on the ground, and Sepe is the only one near it. Picks it up, going back the other direction. Hits Arts, and that is a goal for Belgium. Quite the beater battle going on in Belgium's end here with a few on the floor, although I think they've settled it now. What was key for Belgium on that goal? They were looking for the transition. As soon as Pien made that beat, DeWitt put his head upfield. Arts was with him. They both ran for it. The beautiful give and go to volleyball finish. Love to see it. Especially with the beaters tying up so much of the attention, sometimes uh, that's worth just as much as control if you can deflect that kind of attention away from the volleyball players. Oh, Ed Brett looking for a moment here. 
out to out wide to Ben Ann. Peter's waiting patiently for their moment, but someone's going to have to pounce soon. Receiving some instruction from the bench to go now, but they're going to wait for their moment indeed. Looks like they found something. And the pass goes all the way into the back, and now all the way back up top, but that is red and picked out of the air by Sepe. Sepe gets out of the tackle, and the broom is off from Brett. Great all hit right. from Ed Brett there. Uh, but well, relatively off broom, so I think he will be uh, being sent to the box. And it is 30-20 here. I think with that'll Bel be for, oh, you go ahead. I think that'll be for contact below the knee as he did slip down. Came off broom as well, but that's the more minor detail here. Looks like Belgium uh, wants to raise a separate point. A lot of conversation here, um, as it is. Uh, Sefe will have the volleyball right in front of the score table. Um, what does the English defense look like out there without Brett in the game? Uh, well, they haven't got control, but uh, Bill appears to be well positioned. Jordan Garvey and Jeffrey has got quite some reach on him, so there's always a potential for an interception when he's on defense. Um, I think the key here will be communication. Never stop talking. We're about to start here. And it's our game face. Sepe goes all the way across the field with Wilput in front and Hegemans behind. Hegemans is the one with the volleyball, looks for an opening, gets some defense from a beater, gets it back to Sepe's hands. I think Belgium know they've got time here and they're going to use it. Pass goes all the way into the back and is passed around back there. Um, that is... Uh, arts, but that is wrapped up by England. England is able to stop that uh, stop that drive by Belgium, even though they are down a player. And Great. now they are on offense down a player. I think you've got to go for the penalty kill here. They're looking at posture, trying to get that uh, turnover in the beater game, but you've got to kill the penalty. I think they'll look for an opportunity, but uh, might keep conservative here. You'll see Kerry taking of the moment to get some control here. Belgium really pushing for that control uh, to be back with them. Veal waiting for England here, gets it to Emery in the middle. Emery makes a fake out and gets it back to Veal. Uh, just slow, smart, methodical play out of England's team, and they do have that dodgeball control now and look to make a move. Ed Brett has subbed for Andrew Hull here, who's gone deep. Emery. Tries to make a move around the defense from Hagemans. Instead, passes behind. And uh, from behind, oh, that's a over by the hoops. It was a co collapsing defense there out of Wilfoot on um, McCartney. No, that was Andrew uh, Hull. Hull. Under Hull. Hull, sorry. And Hull is not a small body. That was a big hit. The sound of two planets colliding. There's a exchange in the beater game that opens up some space for Sepe. Sepe moves through it, takes the space, and hits the medium-sized hoop for another goal for Belgium. Did it not go well? The definition of the shot is on. No, it did go in. At this level, you do have to pay attention to shooters. Even if you've got players on the hoops, there is always that option. People have got great arms at this level. And we are 40-20 now. Yes, it's... <laughs> Belgium is giving the English beaters very <laughs> a very hard time. Barrington seemingly a little frustrated and not being able to regain control here. All right. And there's a yes. A move here. Gets it to Hull at the top. Hull now has a little bit of an opening, but doesn't have enough to make a drive all the way in. Gets it back to Veal up top. And it is England continuing to wait for an opportunity. Malpass now with the pass over the top. It is not able to be corralled as all the players are knocked out and everyone is headed back the other direction. That is... We've got a great jump from Geneva Chambers, uh, Chambers there in Belgium's end. Already back on defense, well set up. England did manage to regain control out of that interaction. Belgium has had success the last couple of times, but that was while they did. They had control. England with control is very stout. 
This is Arts. Arts looking for an opening, passes over to the near side. The third ball has gone way out the back of the pitch here, so England have an opportunity to press. Eggman's behind, gets the ball out, but is picked out of the air by Malpas. Malpas is immediately hit and taken down by von Steinekisti, who is in the game now for Belgium. This will give uh, Lamette the time to bring the uh, dodgeball right back to the barrier here. It's hard to see exactly what's happening over on that side uh, behind the English hoops. The great offensive hit here. You do love to see some forechecking. It's not over till it's over. Um, so it looks as though behind the hoops here, Malpass will have the uh, volleyball and has a beater right in front and is going to possibly try to run with it and does run with it, tries to get through the Belgian defense, which is not set up and is successful going all the way through coast to coast Malpass. Mikey Orridge with the heads up play there. It was a great transition defense. Chasers got out in front. Key block from Chambers in order to uh, clear the path for Malpass for the goal. Marks posturing. Back to DeWitt. DeWitt passes back up. A lot of changes. Then Stina Kisti gets by. And that, oh, the dodgeball is not hit, but loses the volleyball. And it is picked up by Malpass. That was just dropped out of Van Steinekist's hands. Passes over to the far side. Several of these England players play together on London Quidditch Club, so they will, or London Quad Ball Club, my apologies, so they will have that chemistry. And there is yet another stoppage in play here. Um, that is Hull, who was trying to get by, but it will be a penalty on the uh, Belgian chaser. Contact from behind, we believe, is the call here. That is Margot Albrecht with contact from behind, yellow card for Belgium. And so this is another uh, really great opportunity for England to put a third score on the board and get it back to a one-goal game. And it looks like Hull will start with the ball here for England. Got a couple defenders in the way, including one beater with a ball. So Hull's going to, he can't just charge ahead here. He's got low in the back, but decides to reset it. Hull is back out the hull, no, back out the hull on the outside. Hull is beat out, but Malpass has the volleyball inside. Tries to hit a little teardrop shot, but instead it's Vexlow from behind is able to pick that pass out of the air and put it home. Belgium just simply forgot about Vexlow, and you, you can't do that. She's got great hands, and she made them pay. Some great beating work as well here. We've got control on defense. They might try and uh, step out a little bit here. They're sensing a, an opportunity. And the uh, pre high pressure uh, out of England, Seb Waters is able to knock down Sepe, but the Belgians are able to maintain control uh, of the volleyball. And now England is in their set defense, and the uh, shot from Sepe goes toward that middle-sized hoop again and through it. That is Sepe's bread and butter. Yeah, we've seen that look from Belgium a couple times here. You get that beater to disrupt, and then Sepe pulls up, and that is another goal for them. And the uh, ball is back in the hand of Seb Waters from England, who's making a move now. Does a little stutter step and then passes to Malpass here on the near side. Malpass around, up, and just off on the middle hoop. Oh, that is over to... That is over to the far side again. A lot of collisions on the field. Bexlow is taken down after the attempt to get that pass in. And there is yet another stoppage here. Uh, what did you see happen on that play? Uh, well, they nearly forgot about Bexlow again, which you can't do. She was uh, wide open, we, but um, we did have a great hit there. Ball went to Alex McCartney, who I believe was beat. Just a laser of a beat coming in on McCartney. Do not forget about Dre or Bex. That is what we've learned here today. I think the beaters were quite, uh, the England beaters there were quite eager to make sure their chasers took advantage of that, uh, of the opportunity they created, so. And uh, the English beaters do have both of the dodgeballs still back here, deep set on defense. Um, Belgium kind of completely out of position if this does go back to say Bex Lowe in the back corner. Um, 
do you have an idea of what it is they're discussing? It, it could be the face beat. Somehow I suspect that it's not, but uh, fortunately I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it, you know, there was a lot of contact behind the hoops there. There was both the hit on low and then again on McCartney. It could have been either of those or perhaps another play on the other side of the field. All could right. Third, third uh, dodgeball manipulation for all we know. We are using this opportunity, as is always a good idea, to get some strategizing and water in on both sides. Thankfully for both these teams, the sun has gone down and it is much cooler than it was today. Yes, the humidity down from our swimming pool of earlier to a mere misting rain. And there's no penalty call. It is just restarting of play with Sepe in the control of the volleyball and everyone running back the other direction. I think these evening games, even when it's cooled down, it will be a test of who's taken care of themselves throughout the day, who's picked up anything that they uh, weren't able to take care of, who's stayed hydrated, who's still got anything left in the tank. This cool. is where you see all of that work they've done for months, in this case years, on their fitness, on their conditioning, on their strategy. I like how Belgium is taking their time here, looking for an opening. And now there's an exchange. Now Sepe tries to make the move. Sepe goes over the top, hits behind and a lot of really nice work there from uh, Margot Albrecht as the uh, Belgian chaser, but is unable to make it happen as Seb Waters comes away with the dodgeball. If there's one lesson you can learn on defense, you really can't give someone that kind of time. I think it worked out for England there, but uh, they're going to want to pounce on that earlier next time. It was the same similar strategy that we've been seeing, right? DeWitt coming in behind Lermet, and uh, it, it unfortunately didn't work as he decided to flip it behind the hoops. Malpas here now on the near side, guarded by Wilfoot, has Zach Slow in front, uh, trying to open up some space and set passes all the way across. And then the pass is all the way up top. It is going to be retained by Seb Waters, but it is the reset used by England there. Uh, probably a good idea to get that back out and just take another opportunity. England running a 1.5 here with Jacopo Sartori stepping up to occupy Louis Lamette. That shot went up and did not go through, but is Corral possibly back in the back corner? It Mark is. McCartney jockeying for position. And it looks like we have a stoppage. I couldn't quite see what it was. The Belgian bench, so excited, has moved up to the pitch line and blocking our view a little bit. And it looks like perhaps it was a step out of bounds for McCartney. It's a turnover to Wilput. All right, so this will be Belgium coming back the other way. Who's got the uh, dodgeballs out there right now? Uh, we've got uh, Paolo for England, as well as Jacopo Sartori, although I believe he's just about to sub for Bill Orridge. So uh, we'll see that pairing on defense here. That's great. We restart, and Belgium has their opportunity to go back into the teeth of this England defense one more time. Some substitutions at Vieter as well for Belgium. Uh, that's PN is back in as well as number 99. Help me out, Clay. Uh, Hanabaki. Thank you. Pronunciation makes a great approximate. beat there. Uh, Hagemans is taken down in the center, and uh, the player is still on top of Hagemans here. Great hit from Beck's low there at the midline. We'll see if this translates to a transition offense. Uh, it's looking like there's not a lot of defenders back for Belgium right now. That's Although right. Belgium still has control of the ball. Uh, I think this uh, is a call on Bex here. Yeah, uh, Bex coming from to behind. the box. It's going to be uh, Hageman's keeping okay. that. Uh, not from behind. Un I apologize for my slander against Bex Lowe. Uh, Bexlow, blue card, just a blue card on Bex for uh, playing unknowingly after having been beat, which will give the opportunity to move away from the very large number of defenders that were right around that spot and give Belgium a much better opportunity here. Definitely some breathing room for the Belgian offense. And I see players dropping their brooms. Has someone called the timeout? It, uh, I believe it is It is our standard heat delay, although the, the sun has gone down. So players will use this opportunity to get water. Yes, it's our four-minute break. So let's recap what we've seen in this game so far and what you think each team should do moving forward. Uh, let's start with you, Claire. Um, for England to uh, 
get back, back tied up? Um, I think they struggled to regain control in the earlier moments of the game, but I do think that their beaters have found a bit of a groove now. Um, but I think the difference will be in how they use those, taking opportunities to to press, to press in on offense. Um, always, of course, making sure you're ready for those quick transitions because Belgium will absolutely punish you if you don't. Um, I think we might, uh, their LQC line is certainly doing quite well for them, so they might stay in and uh, go for a bit of a run. And Belgium has come back. Uh, Belgium was is still ahead, but it is only five to four. What do you think they should do to extend their lead? I think they've found some success. Some success getting De Witt behind one of the beaters, right? Particularly Lemit, getting them to disrupt the center of the English defense when they all compress into that tight space right in front of the hoops. Create the distraction where you can get the English beater on their back foot or the ball on the ground, and then uh, De Witt pulls up for the mid ranger that he has been fairly accurate at all day, that has found a lot of success for them so far. I think they can continue to do that. They just have not seemed to found that look very often. If they can get that to fall more, that's going to be difficult for England, and they'll really need to adjust. And you can see John Smutney going out there, getting a little bit of uh, calisthenics in. Um, that will be key very quickly here, and we will uh, talk to you. Just take a moment. Uh, Claire, to tell us a little bit about uh, the the seekers for England. Uh, so England do have a rotation of three seekers. We'll most likely, almost certainly, see Jordan Garvey, Amy Jeffrey uh, taking his first starting run. He's known for some quick catches, but uh, if that doesn't work, we do have Elliot Fisher and Ruben Thompson waiting in reserve. They've both had strong days. They've both had great looks. On the Belgian side, it was Victor Marks who picked up uh, their... Uh, flag catch in the game that I saw uh, earlier, but I've also seen a rotation out of their players, a lot of different options possible on the board, but they are going to need to both get that flag and also keep Hamer Jeffrey and that rotation away from it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it could become seeker by committee. Uh, Belgium has been conservative with their substitution so far. They haven't really stretched the entire roster yet that we've seen. It might be if you really, really need to lock down the beater game or lock down the chaser game, that you may want to, you know, just throw any athletic body in there to get yourself into a position. But with this close of a game, you want your best beaters out on the field right now, making sure that your seeker has as much time as possible, alone with the flag runner, to try and get that catch and end it. All right, and we are almost ready to be back from our four-minute heat break. Smutney finished entertaining the crowd and getting warmed up as both teams bring their players back out there. Um, we can see um, that there are uh, English beaters in the center of the field, uh, number 31. Uh, Paula uh, Marava and Bill Orridge, are, both of whom have a ball, I believe. Yes, they both. the English team with control. The English defense has, is that Hull or McCartney? That is McCartney. McCartney near the hoops, Malpas and Veal here in the center, and Hageman's with the ball on the far side of the field in the middle. And England, of course, down a chaser with Bexlow in the box. Yes, you'll remember after that, Hageman took the opportunity to move backwards from our position further away towards the stands in order to get a little more space between her and the English defenders. Um, so, uh, Hageman's, we're about to restart. We'll see where she decides to go with that volleyball. The uh, third dodgeball not in the hands of Belgium, but waiting on that far side of the pitch behind her. All right. As we get ready to restart here, the Belgian team communicating what they want to do, deciding their options. I believe that is Arts and Wilput. And Hagemans passes into the back to Arts, gets it back up top to Hagemans. Both beaters doing great work to remove any passing options here. There looks like the reset will be used to get the ball into the hands of Sepe. It was a light press, and it, it caused Belgium to regroup. Yes, well, Belgium lost all of their, uh, half of their quaffle, uh, quad ball options and then had a lot of things they needed to do. Sepe passes out, gets it back into the hands of Hagemans. Great hit there from Aaron Beal. Hegemans and Sepe played a little back and forth game, and there's pressure from Malpas. And uh, Sepe gets around the dodgeball attempt, 
drops it through the middle size hoop, this time from closer, but that is where Sepe has wanted to go uh, over and over and over again in this game. McCartney was expecting DeWitt to drive, dropped low for the tackle. DeWitt with the short, the short ranger shot, not uh, allowing any contact from McCartney to make the goal a sure thing. And it's now 60 to 40 with Belgium extending their lead by one as we get ever closer to flag runner heading out onto the field. England, of course, back on at full strength after uh, Dex Lowe is released. We've seen a substitution here for Tash Ferenci and Ed Brett. That pass or shot was far too low and hard and went pretty far out of bounds. I think that's what our stoppage may be for, getting that uh, volleyball back into play. Kind of a wasted possession there by Veal. That, that, that shot by Veal was, was not what I think they wanted out of, that, out of that possession. Less than I Veal? Sorry, that was terrible. I'd say it's a six out of 409. Uh, Sepe looks for an opening. That's okay. It's the highest score I've ever gotten. <laughs> Taking some determined strides up here. Eggman's on the far side. Passes back behind. I think that's Willput back behind. Back to Eggman's. Uh, uh, now, now they're doing long passes all the way around this England defense. Going, of course, behind and then in front of the hoops, trying to drag England out of possession or out of position rather, and hope that they can get there. That is a loss of uh, possession there. The pass was bad, and Sefe was not able to handle it. Kicked it a little bit, trying to get possession back over on the far side will lead to a stoppage. Blue card. I believe it field. may be for the kick. Uh, and it was a kick after beat, so Veal will take a trip to the box, and Belgium will now be able to regain this ball. Ed Brett uh, taking the keeper duties uh, from Veal in the interim. All right, on the other side there, Eggemans with a behind the bat bounce pass to Sepe, who ha looks for an opening again, gets it around and up, not through, but Arts on the far side is able to pick it up. Great first beat from Bill Orridge, but unfortunately when you're uh, killing the penalty, you may need to make more than one. And that is 70 to 40 with another score from Belgium. Rainier and Mortgat holding down the fort in terms of beaters for Belgium. Veal back in, makes a run around, takes a couple steps over using the red set, passing it back to Seb Waters. Big exchanges in the, in the dodgeball game. Great catch there, and a great hit from Bill Orridge. There is, everything is happening right now in the dodgeball game, folks. It is exciting stuff. While Seb Waters just waits on that to work itself out. Another big, big beat by Orridge, but it goes too far, and Belgium is able to retain possession of both. Seb, Chasers doing their best to uh, give the beaters time to get at least back into position. Here on the near side, um, Seb Waters loses possession. Sepe tries to get it, but is beat out immediately. And the pass goes in over by the English hoops. And there is a there is a wild run for the ball from the English chaser. Tash Ferenczi. Tash Ferenczi. Uh, but it looks like Ferenczi is beat and then ran a little bit afterwards. I think it might also be a discussion about the beaters over here. Bill Orridge having claimed immunity and then been beat. And then, of course, proceeding to uh, play, but not eligible for being beat while he had his fist up. But they may just be discussing the various uh, eligibility of any of that. So Orridge and Mortgott are playing out of their minds right now. They are going blow for blow. It is fast. It is furious. Mortgott with a key catch in the middle there, allowing the Belgian defense to stall that drive from England. We'll see what the adjudication here is in a moment. Well, we're getting a volleyball turnover. That much is uh, clear. Yes. It's, it's in the hands of Arts. And here are the Seekers getting ready to go in. John Smutney, as always, shaking hands with those Seekers and heading out. Stoppage is going to last a little bit longer, I presume. I may have been a timeout call. I didn't, I didn't see anyone specifically come out and say timeout, but it, it may have been that that's the case. Referee still having a discussion with the Belgian team, apparently. Um, Both uh, England and Belgian supporters coming out to uh, offer water and words of advice. 
We're at about roughly 19 minutes in the game, so we will be seeing our Seekers here very shortly. Uh, Amer Jeffrey donning the yellow for England, and Marks donning it for Belgium. That is excellent. So about one minute until that happens, you can see Smutney ready to work magic out there, walking up and down. Uh, can't stand still, John Smutney. Both teams will want control going into snitch on pitch because both of these seekers are very talented. It could happen very, very quickly. You may not have time to establish a bubble or give your seeker many, many runs at all. And so I think even though they won't have many seconds, of course, until that 20-minute mark to do so, uh, both teams will try to either get or maintain control. That will be very, very key when you have strong seekers. Expect a substitution on both sides for Bieter. I would imagine that England probably wants Barrington out there, and I think Belgium will probably want Lermit out there as well. Everyone headed back to their brooms. We never really got a word exactly on what was happening, but timeout does seem to be the most logical explanation. Yeah, and you are, I think, right about that substitution. We've got Lucy uh, Barrington and Mikey Orridge waiting on the sidelines. And it looks like Lemaire, oh, it looks like he has just subbed in right at that stoppage or is otherwise near the, yeah, so he's, oh. so he is he's in the sub to. position. Yes. Keen, ready to go in. And the uh, Sepe with a little bounce off the hands, but is able to corral it and then take off running. And now waiting on all of the rest of the team to get set. England gets back into their defense and uh, Sepe continues to just look around looking for an opening. Terry Z is manning the fort on defense here with their lone dodgeball. Ball goes all the way behind. Everyone's shuffling around. Agamets with that long uh, pass shot opportunity that is corralled by Belgium. Once again, the long pass all the way to the back is in the hands of Wilput now. Back over the top into Sepe. And then Sepe with the catch and score almost immediately off of that nice long pass. What a jam from DeWitt. That is his fourth goal of the game. It is 80 to 40 now, which is crucial in that it does put um, it does put uh, Belgium four goals up. So that will mean that uh, they are no longer in that zone where they could immediately go down and lose on a goal and catch situation, as almost happened earlier in the German game. England will want to make up that difference. And that is picked out of the air by Wilput. Wilput going the other way. Wilput with a caravan in front. And one person to beat knocks him down pretty hard, passes over the top and does not go in. And it looks like it is going to go out of bounds and be back to England going the other direction, as now the Seekers are also on the field. Absolutely crucial catch by Barrington there, able to get uh, the, the dodgeball here just as the Seekers come out onto the field and prevent that goal. Malpas tries to make a move, is hit pretty hard by Sepe, is taken down hard, gets the pass out while on the ground. It's in the hands of Houghton. Houghton gets it over the top, and it's bounced around, but winds up back in Houghton's hand. And once again, into the hands of Bex Lowe on the far side. They may have done it. They I may believe... have forgotten about Bex. Oh, a near, near catch there from Abram Jeffrey. England now in the position, of course. To, well, uh... oh. well, Belgium oh, is right on top of the hoops. I think that this stoppage will happen before that last shot. But we'll have to see the adjudication all over the field. We have an unfortunate injury here on the England side. Um, and we'll just take a pause to let them sort that out. She's already sat up, so I don't think we'll be too long here. Uh, luckily, everyone back off the field. Looks like people have walked off under their own power, and it's a substitution for England, and we are ready to restart. Uh, Matt, set the stage where we are right as we restart play here. Well, that's Emre coming in for Chambers, who uh, walked off, and we hope that she's all right. Uh, Belgium looking pretty good behind the hoops right here. The ball, I think, will be in the hands of DeWitt. We'll see. Our, our referees are currently conferencing about it, so we'll see where the ball ends up. Uh, I'm mean... sure Malpass would prefer it's his, but <laughs> get his wish. Yeah, they might I, have an argument. I do think what is happening is that that, well, that shot was after the official stoppage. Um, so it's coming back around to the other side and getting into Sepe's hands. 
All right, there it is. Malpass right in front of Sepe. Uh, what options does Sepe seem to have? Uh, well, I, Hegeman's on the, the far side of the hoops there, facing the opposite direction, so she'll just have to turn real quick. Same with Devapois who is in front as well. So two pass options and no English defenders on this side of the hoops towards center field. So Sepe could just put it a little bit over the top and go for the jam. And uh, everyone's still on broom as well and no beaters around to help. So uh, it's all down to the chasers here. Oh, Sepe. great hit from Malpass there. Sepe tries to get out of it, but is unable to. But while the ball is on the ground, Wilford is able to pick it, but Houghton picks it out of the air with the attempted pass and is able to come down with it. And England is looking to run the other direction, running through all of the action right by John Smutney. Here comes England, headed right for the goals. Mile pass over the top, into the hands of Houghton and in. All dodgeballs on the floor for a minute there while uh, Amor Jeffrey takes a run. 80 to 50 to 60 now. That was a great look by England. Way to recognize the transition that they could have. Beaters distracted, could run it. And that is a catch would win it for either team at this point. Sepe looking for an opening, takes the shot, hits the shot, puts Belgium back up by three. And nearly immediately after that, on the far side, there is a potential catch. Did either. It looked like marks for Belgium. We'll see if this was called good. It was a good diving catch. He's gotten to his feet now. Referees conferencing. Mikey Orridge gesturing for uh, VAR. The uh, England appeared to be uh, waiting on the outskirts there to work together. Always the danger, of course, in uh, flag runner on pitch is uh, needing to make the most of every second. But of course, if all you're doing is individually running shuttles, you'll never make much progress. So sometimes it is better to wait and work together. But of course, always the danger in there while you're waiting and working together, the other team is right in the thick of it. Referees continue to discuss uh, what potentially might be the discussion about, if, if anything. They're making sure that everything came off clean. There were no fouls anywhere else on the field. The runner was not impeded. They make sure that the seeker was not beat before they caught. All these things to make sure that it was clean, fair, and good, and that if Belgium did actually catch it, that that would be a fair win. Everyone's still stalking around here on the near side. Lots of stomping and clapping from the stands. They're excited at the it, potential win for the Belgian Griffins. It is 90 to 60 now. This catch would make the win 120 to 60. Um, Again, calling it off, the game continues, which is obviously what this England team wants. I'm still thinking about that beautiful interception by Matt Houghton there in uh, the far side just before this. So much going on at this stage of the game, very intense. Yes, I love the interaction from the crowd, all of the excitement as we close in on the end of a uh, technically difficult but very fun gameplay-wise World Cup. Absolutely. Going to get our call here from Matt Melton, still conferencing. <laughs> the English staff needs to say their piece. And. Okay, so there is going to be the VAR. England has appealed the catch. And so now we will see... Uh, the exact wording of their appeal, we'll try to get that here in a moment. Uh, I believe they're just appealing whether the catch was good or not. Uh, we haven't heard yet why they're appealing, what their reasoning is. I believe the appeal is done not just by referees, but also gameplay style. It's true. Yes. Yes, there will be a conference. There will be a few moments to review uh, exactly what happened, exactly what the appeal is. If it is an actual challengeable appeal, and if so... Uh, we will need to uh, have that review happen, and then we will bring you the information as quickly as possible as that is confirmed. This is, of course, a high-stakes game. There are medals on the line. It seems as though, um, again, as that is the case, uh, there would be um, there would be an immediate end to the game if things stand as they are now. That is correct. We'll see what happens here. If so, it would be a sixty-point swing for Belgium in the lead. It's not 60-point swing, excuse me. A 30-point addition for a 60-point differential. As uh, the players are not going to be involved in this situation, 
um, it would be important for us to remember that this uh, entire sport is a fun and exciting time for us to come together to really uh, celebrate all of the forms of diversity that we have. And it's an essential part of life and of quad ball to celebrate each other in all of our forms. And we love how the World Cup brings around people from around the world, uh, many different nations, many different backgrounds. And it's just a wonderful time here. I believe it was Plato who said, he who is tired of quad ball is tired of life. There's certainly plenty to debate here. And we see uh, both of the beater pairs, of course, congratulating each other, um, consoling each other, having discussions about what to do if the game continues. I think they've all got their heads still dialed in here. Absolutely. Conferencing in little groups as well as large groups. Referees now still talking. I believe they've spoken to both teams as well as gameplay. So we'll see what the outcome is here. Yes. As soon as we know the answer, we will let you know the answer. Yeah. I want to, you know what I want to talk about while we're waiting? How of a completely different look we've seen these two teams versus their previous games. England has played so much of yesterday and today as a run and gun team, long passes, fast drives, really making their opponents go back on their heels. Belgium, much more intricate passing uh, that's close range. This game, we saw a lot more long range passing, probing the English defense. What an adjustment both these teams had to try and adjust to the new play style that they would be up against. I think it shows they've both got a lot in their arsenal. And of course, as we discussed earlier, the learning that happens throughout a tournament like this, the things that you see, the things that you adapt to on the fly. We saw a lot of Belgium discovering that back and forth, really trying to drop people out of position. They'll have had time to review the footage. I know certainly English was reviewing footage last night just to try and gain any information, any edge and, you know, try things out. I will say I was really disappointed that there wasn't more fast break and transition goals because shouting into the mic as they run over each other, trying to move as fast as they can to score is just, it's fantastic. It's some of my favorite type of chaotic quad ball. Uh, whereas I am over here as the person who prefers a one to nothing pitcher's duel. And I've loved the defensive hits in this game and the fact that uh, Belgium got a few too many goals for me. England at six because Belgium will be over uh, ten, you know, 100 points if they do get this catch. And no one wants that if you want a slow, boring game like I want. You like the defensive chess matches. Yes, exactly. You, you're in the minority. Whereas I, I, of I course, am in most things. <laughs> whereas I, of course, I'm here for the style points. I, you know, scrappy goals are all well and good. I think that, do speak, that does speak to the skill of a team. But I love the style of the flash. I love the dunks. I love the great passes. You know, you know we're here to look, try hard, and to look pretty. All okay. of the players are back out on the field. And, well, I thought maybe we were going to have a decision, but now it looks as though they're still reviewing things. So, uh, Matt Dwyer, make another point. <laughs> I, I want to know how many style points Claire marked down for this match. I'm going to give at least three style points to Sepe DeWitt for the incredible volleyball spikes and jams that he's had this game. He's looked pretty darn good. He uh, sure earned those. <laughs> I'm going to give um, 11 um cement block points to um, to uh, each of the beaters on both teams uh, as they have dominated in this game. I'm going to have to give it to both pairs. Uh, four giant cement blocks instead of style points. Are those worth some cement blocks? Are they... they are worth building a shelter out of. That is entire life, Matt Dwyer, life of cement blocks. It's certainly a strong foundation. I do agree. There's been some great beater play here. You certainly can't accuse any of these beaters of sitting on their hoops and playing conservatively. I think they're always willing to make that trade, to make that fake. Sometimes you do got to throw to make sure to people believe you, and they've certainly not been afraid to go for it when it needs to happen. Oh, I think we've seen all sorts in the beater game today. Like, they really have hit every major point. You saw aggressive style. You saw fast movement. You saw passing of, of dodgeballs between the two. You've seen short range defensive movement just even the, you, you watch either england or belgium as the quad ball, the quad ball is moving one side to the other just the minute movements to cut off angles and make sure that they are able to hit anyone forward from them these truly are players at the top of their game these are the highest level of play these, these are the third and fourth best teams in the world Yes, and easily could have been our finals matchup with these two teams with the way that they played this weekend and the way they played in their previous game. 
both of them within a flag catch of winning their previous match. Uh, this is third and fourth place, but again, easily could have been first and second. Oh, absolutely. I think that really speaks to the skill and the parity that the sport has achieved. Um, you know, there's certainly, uh, there's always going to be some blowouts, but I do think every team has made strides. We've all had uh, certainly plenty of years in the interim here at World Cup to work on uh, their, you know, national governing bodies, their performances, their top lines, their coaching. Um, and I've really loved all the games I've seen this weekend. I think there's a lot to be said for the growth of the sport. I'm really excited for next World Cup already, and this one's not even over. Yes, well, this one may be continuing until then. Uh, when we find out the answer, it may be 20... I'm not sure which year it's going to be. Are we going to stick on this uh, odd year schedule for next World Cup, or has that been decided out there? I haven't heard yet, but, you know, I hope we get to go back to Europe because I'd love to come visit again. Or maybe it's time to go down under. Oh, the Australians would love it. I bet you they'd show us a great time. Oh, that, that, I'm there for the parties. That's actually why I'm here. I believe they've made that promise. I think um, it is always fun to host, especially you see here, there's plenty of home fans um, who've come out to see. Um, I've also been impressed with how many fans have come along with the international team. They haven't just sent their squads. People have come in just to watch. I think, you know, the sport, it's fun to play, but it really speaks to the community that so many of these teams have built. Absolutely. They were managing to take time out of their busy lives, pay hundreds of dollars, maybe more for flights, dollars, euros, pounds. X number of currency, and I, I, every single uh, international player here or or fan that I've talked to, this is one part of a you know a multi week long trip uh, where they were willing to take a vacation and take time out of their busy lives to come see this amazing sport. And you do see here players discussing uh, with their counterparts on on other teams. So uh, I think it's fair to say there won't be any bad blood, however this goes at the end of this game. And it looks like we're going to decision here. Everyone headed back onto the field. Person to watch in the stripes and the hat, Matt Melton and the video review. And the catch is good. Good for Belgium. The beat was after the catch confirmed on video review. And Belgium is your third place finisher here at 2023 IQA World Cup and will take home the bronze medals. Both teams played incredibly. It was great for Belgium to eke it out with the catch there. They were a step ahead of England for the majority of the game. Uh, it truly, congratulations to the Belgian Griffins. And also to this English squad. Just an amazing performance, being able to do so much in so many different and amazing ways, not finishing on the medal stand, but can be proud of their performance. Absolutely. It's been uh, a long weekend, but I think there's a lot to be said for strong individual performances, team performances, the way both of these teams have held each other up, um, you know, through plenty of uh, very close games, heartbreaking finishes. Um, it's, it's really great to see. And so we are going to leave you from this uh, feed in order to get everything set up for our final matchup. Again, that is the United States national team versus the German national team. You've got to be here. You've got to see it. It should be fantastic. Until then, I've been Clay Dockery with Claire Hutchinson. And on behalf of Matt Dwyer, thank you. Thanks for an amazing World Cup. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night.
Hello and welcome everyone to the 2023 IQA World Cup Final. The matchup today is going to be Team Germany versus the defending champion and hosts, the United States of America. We will have both teams running out here through our tunnel of flags momentarily. My name is Keegan Remy Miller. Alongside me, Julia Rankin and Ben Mertens. All right, as Team Germany has not yet lined up behind the flags, uh, Julia, how has Germany gotten to this final? So yesterday, of course, Germany had their pool play games against Australia, Canada, Brazil, and Japan, where they came out 4-0, all four victories. Today, in order to get to the finals, they faced off England or uh, France in the quarterfinals. The final score was 130 to 50 with Germany catching the flag. And in the semifinals, Germany played England, where the final score was 110 to 60. Again, Germany catching that flag. And Ben, the story for Team USA. Team USA was dominant in pool play, defeating all their pool play opponents, Belgium, Norway, Hong Kong, and African nations by a pretty significant margin in all four games. A bit of a different story in brackets. They rematched African nations in the quarterfinals and defeated them 160 to 80. Still a large win, but closer than the day one matchup. They had a second rematch in the semifinals against Belgium, and that game came down to the wire. Final score is 120 to 70. America winning on the grab by Mohagog, but a game that either team would have won had they pulled the flag. Yeah, that game was here on this pitch, and it definitely was an instant classic, an extremely exciting game with swings both ways. Germany now circling up with their flag. And it looks like they are ready to be lined up. We are going to do our best to get everyone at home the audio from the PA system that we will all be listening to here. Go behind the camera, go behind the camera.
Both teams now having been introduced. Flag carrying for Germany was Till Wagner. Flag carrying for the United States was Ian Skura. All right, so as both teams are lined up here along the sidelines, and we are getting both flags in place. Continuing the pageantry here, the cone is getting, the lines are. All right, folks, those are the starting lineups for both teams. I know it would have been very hard to hear on the stream. Starting for Team USA is going to be Jackson Johnson and Bailey Fields in the beating game. Uh, Luis Sanchez in the green headband, along with Rachel Heald, Josh Johnson, and Augustine Monroe in the white headbands. Same starting lineup we've seen for the U.S. team all weekend. Yeah, the same one they ran out in the last semifinal against Belgium. They were slow to start. Really, that second line coming in was able to give them some energy. Meanwhile, both teams are now pulling in. We'll get you that German starting lineup as soon as we can. Um, the German team was kind of impeding our view of those folks. So as they get out to the line, we'll be sure to give you their names. Um, meanwhile, at the top, we mentioned the United States, their defending champions. This is their fifth consecutive finals appearance. Uh, again, three golds and one silver in 2016. They're really making a habit of this, a perfect run so far. Germany, on the other hand, not only is this their first appearance in the finals, they have never finished higher than seventh at a World Cup before. Uh, obviously, much better appearances at European Games from 5th in 2017 to 4th in 2019 and silver last year, losing the final to England with some payback in the semifinals. So as we get this one started, what can the United States do to ensure that they get out to a good start and aren't back-footed like they were against Team Belgium? 
The story all weekend for Team USA has been dodgeball control. They're a good team still with only one dodgeball, but they've been looking unbeatable with two. Um, and Jackson Johnson and Bailey Fields, who are starting this game, have been the most effective feeder pair all weekend. When they've had control, they've created easy offensive opportunities for their chasers and created a ton of defensive stops. If they're able to be that dominant against the German beaters, Team USA can get out to an early lead. If the German beaters get control and make it hard on Fields and Johnson, it's, we're going to have to see if the Team USA chasers can still find a way to get stops and get goals, even without dodgeball control. So starters for Team Germany, it's going to be Leon Burgos, Leander Troll, Johannes Spongersberg, Lena Stoya, Hanna Grossa, And I believe I'm short one player. I will get that name as quickly as I can. But we are about ready to go. It's going to be Leander Troll versus Augustine Monroe in the run-up for the quad ball. The American has his right hand closer to the line. Leander, uh, Leon Bur Burgos uh, will have his right hand closer to the line for that dodgeball run-up against Jackson Johnson. The head referee in this final match will be Chris LeCompte. I mean, Rose won almost every rush he's had this weekend. Both teams are ready. The broom's down call. And we're off. Monroe quickly with it. He wants to drive immediately. Going to be marked heavily by Troll. Germany also has control here. America slows it down. Troll beat out. Ball handling now Sanchez. Far side. Big beat attempt from Johnson. Going to lead to a, a, a good press there from Germany. Borgas with the beat. However, Johnson got it over to Sanchez. Sanchez now calling it to go slow. Jackson Johnson winning control now for Team USA. Sanchez going in, gets hit by Spangersburg, but goes right, goes through Troll as well, and scores on that far right hoop. Exactly what we talked about in the beater game. Germany wins control off the rush. Jackson Johnson misses his first time to get it back, wins the second one, gets control back to Team USA, and creates a no-blooder situation that Sanchez is able to finish. And in the chasing game, something that I really like is that some pep in their step right now that... First line has been a little slow to start, not slow there. They took it with authority. Yeah, Germany is going to need to make tackles if they want to win this one. Grossa now with it. Grossa, Borgas in front. Grossa, far side. Back to the top, Hob. Hob, fakes to Spendersberg. Going to be a press. Goes to the corner. Troll gets it. Troll immediately beat by Fields. That's one reset. And I believe it's going to be called a, a double reset there. It's going to be a turnover to the United States. Could be Fields with the beat before, too. That looked a little late getting out of his I hands. thought it was going to be the beat before. I didn't remember the first reset being used, but that's definitely the initial call on the field. Although I liked the attempt to save the quad ball and keep control on a uh, offense there by Team Germany. Sometimes when you're getting pressed like that, you got to send it deep so that the opposing team isn't able to just get a fast break off of it. Luckily now, uh, although the quad ball is going in the hands of the field on Team USA, no fast break will occur. They're going to set up a traditional offense. Borgas beat out by Johnson. Fields beats out Stoya. Sanchez gets through a Leander Troll hit. The pass to Augustine Monroe. He finishes through the back with authority. 2-0. And then immediately Johnson creates another turnover. Monroe picks it up. Being marked by Grossa. She is beat out. The pass goes far side to Johnson. Johnson to Sanchez. Sanchez. One pump fake. Two pump fake. The shot misses high. That's one reset used. Jackson Johnson is able to save it. There was a whistle behind the play. No finish that time for Team USA, but once again, Johnson and Fields creating a ton of chaos in the dodgeball game, getting the dodgeballs on the ground and giving their chasers a lot of time to get a good look at the hoop. Something we've seen from Team USA this entire weekend is capitalizing off of their opponent's mistakes. Um, they were able to create a second offense there. So Leander Troll 
does have a yellow card for an illegal interaction. I believe it's an illegal interpositional interaction. So it looks like there may be a dodgeball turnover. The head ref is going to discuss it with an AR. Certainly a dream start for Team USA, especially compared to their semifinal against Belgium. What can Germany do to turn the tide in their favor? They need dodgeball control, and so far, it's all been Johnson and Fields and that factor of it. Not only getting dodgeball control, but then using it to put Germany on the back foot. We saw in that last play, Julia mentioned initially, it didn't look like it would be a fast break for the United States because one dodgeball is back. Jackson and Fields got down the field and made it a fast break by immediately taking out the German beater. So the penalty here was actually for a hoop dislodgement on Troll. Sanchez is now being awarded the ball at the spot of the foul right on the hoop. And it's going to go 3-0 United States as soon as we whistle in. And there it is. Team USA really thriving in this fast-paced game. If I were Team Germany, I would think about slowing it up a bit. Without a doubt. Marcel Hobb now. Slowly up the pitch. Stoya walks Sanchez back. Grossa receives the pass near side. Throws it deep corner. Spander or Troll goes to Spandersburg. Spandersburg wrapped up hard, taken down by Josh Johnson. And then Spandersburg is beat out. We are going to have an injury stoppage here um, after that hit to Spandersburg. Looks like Team Germany was trying to slow down that possession. Certainly coming across half slowly. A very contained pass over to near side before sending it behind. But Team USA is really closing out quickly around those hoops. Uh, do we think Germany needs to make an adjustment in the passing game or to start driving? Or is there no shot of that with the American physicality? I think the idea there was a slower possession. Bergers uh, in the beater game ran in to try to tackle an American beater while his partner just cleared out chase on top. Augie Monroe was being top of the play. And I think the idea there is get the ball behind and then work it into the space created by tapping out chaser. But Josh Johnson got there and made sure that that happened by just bringing the player to the ground. I think they're going to need to get these passes off before they're even met by the American chasers um, because they're not able to get around the wraps of the American defenders right now. Spandersburg up to his feet. He's going to be replaced by Tom Roloff. Team Belgium with a similar attacking um, style to Germany in the passing game against the United States. Uh, it really felt like every time they made the pass, they not only know who it was going to, but they knew who the next pass would be going to. And they played with the sort of speed that even with the quick closeouts in the United States, just passed circles around this uh, United States defense. There's now discussion about whether or not this contact was legal. We don't have the best angle at it with some players of the Team USA bench kind of blocking our view from that back corner. And Johnson definitely spun him around the world a few times. And that was a great recognition from the Team USA beaters on that defense there to get behind. Although that was a great pass on Team Germany, uh, just swallowed up not only by the chasing defense on Team USA, but Fields was right there to swallow up that pass. All right, so no call on the play. Rachel Fields uh, is going to be asked to inbound the ball here. So I think Josh Johnson is going to be given a back to hoops, uh, which made Fields the closest American player. Fields, opting to take it herself, then passes up to Sanchez. Sanchez now with some speed. A 1.5 from Jackson Johnson. Sanchez moves up the right side, floats it over to Monroe. Monroe through the contact. No good. It was beat before. Sanchez picks it up, moves left, passes to Johnson. Johnson goes right, gets around a tackle, goes left, will get around another. And it's 4 nothing U.S. early. Berger's held up well against Jackson Johnson's 1.5. Turns around and beats Monroe on the back. But... Team USA is first to loose ball, which is something we've seen all weekend from them. We have another stoppage. With that, um, Team Germany is going to get nowhere in this game if they can't make some hits to stop the Americans. If they rely on their dodgeballs to get every stop, it's going to be a very, very long game. Belgium proved that to a player, they could tackle the Americans when they needed to down low. And so far, Germany has not been able 
to have match that same kind of physicality. And the second chances are going to kill them if they're relying that way, right? They get the initial stop on Monroe because he's called beat before. So Sanchez is being called for a blue card, illegal interpositional interaction. That means Augustine Monroe's going to have the green headband as Sanchez serves his time in the penalty box. Here you go. All right, so we are remounted here. All right, the goal was good despite the penalty, so it is 4 0 U.S. Verklaas now in for Germany as well. Roloff carrying it across half. Running a crossing route with Verklaas as Jackson uh, Johnson presses. Verklaas now with it again. Gets the pass out before he's beat. The pass goes behind. Cannot be handled by Horst. And that's going to be a stop for Team USA. And no dodgeballs. Borgas way behind the play. Rachel Heald's moving with speed. Even down a player. Getting up. Rachel Heald slows up for Roloff. Gets the pass over to Johnson. Johnson marked high. Gets around the tackle. Goes right. Shot's no good. Monroe cannot keep it in play. No, he did. It's still alive. Oh, he did. It's still alive. Heroics from Monroe. Monroe back to the top and healed. Sanchez coming in in just a few seconds. Yep. Johnson floats one to Monroe. Monroe behind. Marked by Forner. Forner again against Monroe. A hoop has been knocked down. Pass goes right side healed. Back up to the top. Johnson Sanchez now back into the play. And we have a delayed call. Team USA able to kill the entire penalty on Sanchez there. Um, with their great passing, Augie Monroe barely able to tiptoe and keep in lines on the on the backside, and then able to relay it back to his teammates. The second line for Germany is now in. We'll see if they have more success than the first line did. Um, the United States still with their first line and first Peter pick pair. Borgas, the starting Burgos, the starting beater for Germany, also still in. Uh, I believe along with. His partner, Lena Stoya, also started this game. I think Team USA will be content to keep Jackson and Fields as long as they can. Jackson once again got the better of Bergers there to create that uh, turnover for Team USA. Just nowhere for Team Germany to go with the ball. They send it deep, which is not a bad idea with the Team USA beers pressing so high, but not able to handle the pass. There is no foul on the play. Uh, the discussion does behoove the American team as the fallen hoop has been reset. Johnson to Sanchez. Sanchez, marked high by Verklaas. Goes right back to Johnson, who's going to be marked by Roloff. Johnson, far side, working around the corner. Rachel Heald spinning the circle as well as Roloff tries to close out. Johnson goes back the other way to Sanchez. Sanchez protected by Johnson. Monroe now has it near side. Goes behind to Heald. Healed right back over to Josh Johnson. Josh Johnson marked by Roloff. Goes, oh, goes shoulder fake right, rolls left, and then is able to score on the backhand. Now we're going to see dodgeball control go over to Team Germany. Fields trying to keep it with a kick. Not, su not successful in that attempt, so we're going to see a little switch up here. German beer has completely ignored quad ball, but did manage to win control back off it, and then a new pair of subs in. We'll see if that benefits them here on this offense. Elisa Schenk now in to beat Forner. Gets the pass over to the right for Klaas. For Klaas now working left, trying to work against Monroe. Gets it to Roloff. 1.5 here from Germany. Roloff being marked by Monroe. Goes left. Gets through Monroe. Oh, the good pass up high to Forner. And Forner cannot finish through contact. The shot is low. And that's going to be a stop for Team USA. A great stop at the hoops. Finally, we're going to see some stops from Team Big USA. trades here in the dodgeball game. Germany needs a big effort here. Can't get the wrap on fields. Meanwhile, Johnson streaking up the pitch. Gets straight through for Klotz. The pass comes out, though. Josh Johnson is able to pick it up. Back to the top of the key. Lindsey Morella newly into this game. Taylor Crawford behind in green. Josh Johnson now has it. Left side, marked by Horst. Back to the top in Sanchez. And Team USA looks to slow it down. Behind to Crawford. Forner marking. 
right back to the top in Sanchez, immediately met by Roloff. Tries to get through and can't. Roloff just pulls it out of Sanchez's hands, and that's going to be a stop for Germany. That is the physicality they needed. Germany slowly across half here. Verklaas holding it behind his back, now pulls it to the front. Schenk in front of Verklaas, still control with Germany. Far side to Forner. Oh, huge hit here, though, from Crawford. The ball gets out to Verklaas, tried to be met by Sanchez, and now there is a whistle. Taylor Crawford is going to get a yellow card here. Nope, Taylor Crawford is subbing out, uh, I believe, for injury. Uh, so Leo Freed will be in in the green. As you said, Keegan, finally we're seeing some physicality from Team Germany. Although they weren't able to take the player down on defense, sometimes you don't have to take the player down, you just have to get the ball back. And then right on the offensive end, Verklaas is able to stand up to a Taylor Crawford hit, which not many people in the sport can do. Roloff is beat out by Johnson. Sanchez now picks it up. Moves down the right side. John Jackson now into this game as well. Sanchez, the only original starter in. Leo Freed gets it out. It also blocks the dodgeball. Way up top, Sanchez. Sanchez to Freed. Freed is at the hoop. That goes right past the outstretched hands of Christian Forner. Forner might have even gotten a finger, finger on it, but not enough to stop the ball from going through the hoop. Forner going to ball handle here. Menzel right side. Shank left side. Shank throws it back to run a 1.5 here. Germany. Forner looking for the stream for Verklaas. Takes it. Goes right. Throws it up in the air. Horst picks it up. Horst knocked down by Freed. Morella picks it up right to Freed. Freed wants to run. Has to beat Roloff. Gets the pass off to Gavin Zdenovich. Gavin Zdenovich is beat out and Germany gets the stop. The U.S. a little bit too run happy there, I think. Sake from Freed there. Didn't see that the beers had gone back in the play. And this is a mixed line from the United States. They normally like the four team, uh, Warriors teammates together. But because of the injury of Taylor Crawford, Leo Freed is playing with Jackson, Gavel, Zanovich, and Morella. Um, so a bit of a different look due to the injury for the United States. Tom Roloff is assessed a yellow card. I could not hear what the call was due to the crowd noise. But Germany is forced to call to call a timeout here as they are down 6-0. What can Germany possibly say in this timeout that could change the pace of this game? When they've been able to have blood drink control, which has been few and far between, they've looked better on both defense and offense. But the chasers need to make it easier on the beaters. Blood drink control is never just about the beaters. It's also about the chasers being able to step up and make hits and slow down the other team's chasers without the help of the beaters. If they're not able to stop Team USA with their physicality, the beaters are going to be on their back heel the whole night. Step up and make a couple of hits. The Team Germany beaters can focus more on keeping the American beaters out of their face, hold on to dodgeball control, and maybe use it to get something going on offense. Another thing that Team Germany can do is while they're – creating those passes, uh, which have been very clean so far, by the way, being able to be handled. Uh, they need to draw the Team USA defense out just a little bit more because they have been, Team USA has been able to respond very quickly to those passes. You want to create a little bit more space so that your receiver has more time to decide on what they want to do with that ball. And at the risk of being too simple, I think the one thing Germany needs most is a goal. This crowd is waiting to explode for them, and they have not yet been given the chance. But it's a lot easier said than done. With Roloff in the box, it is going to be Team USA quad ball in the hands of John Jackson at the moment at the top of the key. Looks like all the U.S. chasers are on broom. Leo Freed far side, Gavin Stenovich right by John Jackson, and Lindsay Morella behind. Horst looks like she's either going to go cover Morella. Nope, she wants to get in front of Jackson. Good press there from Shank. Shank now being pressed by Tate K. Tate K gets beat out. John Jackson, far side, wants to drive against Verklaas. The pump fake gets it to Gavin Zdenovich. Gavin Zdenovich right back to the top of the key. Lindsay Morella. Morella slowing it up, trying to let her beaters get control. Freed back to Morella. A beautiful give and go for Team USA, 7-0. 
The freeze is going to sub quickly for Crawford, so we'll get back to that all Warriors line for the U.S. side. Good to see Taylor Crawford. No worse for the wear. Christian Forner slowly across mid pitch. Leander Troll back into this game. Forner slowly up. Casey Irwin with a beat. Rips a shot from Forner. No good. It's saved behind, but the pass up is to no one. Tate K is, gets a beat off on Forner. It rolls out of bounds. It's going to be Taylor Crawford to inbound here. Tate K beat out. Morella, oh, the pass is intercepted by Roloff. Germany gets a stop. Huge effort play here from Paul Fander for Germany. As Roloff runs up, gets stripped by Crawford. Horse falls on it. Crawford cannot be beat in the zone. Horse is still fighting. Roloff still there. There's no dodgeballs here. Finally, Tate K comes in to beat out Ava Christian Horst. That's the most we've seen Germany's beaters be able to help their chase on offense. They create a long, no dodgeball situation, but the wrap from Taylor Crawford shuts down the German drive. And that is why Team USA puts their point defenders in the green headbands. Jackson moving up slowly. Crawford going behind. Morella right side option. Gavin Stenovich near side option. Take K. Leading in Jackson. The pass goes to Morella. The no look pass to Crawford. Crawford rips it top hoop. That's money. 8 nothing. Looks like there might be a call in the beater play here between Stoya and Kay. The referee is talking about it. And for all that German timeout was worth, they looked like they came out, did not get a goal on offense, but had a good look. Just like that, the momentum can go right back to the United States. And Germany needs to do everything right on the play. It's not just enough that the beaters create the no dodgeball situation. The chasers have to be able to pass and at some point probably get through a Team USA wrap if they're going to get on the board. So just past the 11 minute mark here, I believe it is IQA policy that this game will also have a heat stoppage, even though it's cooled down with the sun set. So in about four minutes, both teams are essentially going to get a four minute strategy timeout. Tate K being warned by his bench not going to, to complain no matter what happens, um, which is sage advice uh, almost any time in life, really. K's gotten at least one card this weekend for interactions with the referee. I think the United States is keen to avoid any fouls like that in a finals match. Without a doubt. So as the players get a breather, there's no foul on the play. The goal stands. It will be 8-0 towards the United States. Leander Troll in green for Germany. We'll start with it when we whistle play back in. So control is with the United States. Stoya from Germany is able to claim immunity here as Irwin and Kay are both holding dodgeballs. The United States has done their very best to manipulate that third dodgeball whenever they can. We'll see if Tate K tries to perform anything impressive. And Stoya just kicks back to Fander. Hob, back into the game. Spangersberg, back into the game. Along with Troll and Grossa, the starting lineup for Germany. Fander trying to lead in. Hob here. Crawford playing aggressively out of the zone. Grossa goes high. Spangersberg, the fake out, but then gets ripped down by John Jackson. The ball comes out. And that's going to be a stop for Team USA as Gavin Zdenovich starts to move down the pitch. We do have a call here. And that's the physicality we've seen from the Team USA chasers all weekend. Whether or not this is going to result in a card, sometimes you have to eat the card to stop the other team from scoring. It's not ideal, but sometimes it has to happen. And that's the better idea from Germany on that offensive set. Grossa 
gets some penetration, forces the defense to look at her, and then zips an absolutely perfect pass behind the hoops. Unfortunately, John Jackson makes a huge rip. As mentioned, Germany is at some point going to have to get through an American tackle. So gonna... John Jackson has received a yellow card for contact after being dismounted. Chris LeCompte has called that uh, closely but consistently all weekend. Uh, he was the ref in the semifinal, so Team USA knows what's coming at them. It is going to mean that Spandersburg here does get a second chance for Team Germany at this goal. The rest of Team USA is back. All three chasers in the play. Armed beaters back there. Spandersburg could rip a shot, but it'd be a pretty impressive one if he hit it. I think we'll see Germany slow it down and try to use this one player advantage that they have for the next 60 seconds. Yep. Give Stoya and Vander a little bit of time, see if they can't work control back or at least create some space for a shot with the U.S. down a chaser. Spandersburg immediately to Hobb, and Hobb does slow it down, letting Fander get down with the dodgeball. Stoya was tapping in behind the play. Hobb goes right, shoots left, and puts it home. Team Germany, Germany finally on the board. Yeah, the crowd was ready for that one. And they held one and held on to dodgeball control. That's going to be the key to turn this into a run. Casey Irwin beat out. Tate K beats out Fanders. John Jackson is moving up the right side. Gets it to Morella. Morella met very high by Leander Troll. Morella spins out of it, moves right, wants to find K to get some protection, and that is exactly what she'll do. Passes it over to Crawford. Right side. Irwin back into the play. Jackson back into the play. Crawford working around the back corner. Passes it right back to Morella. Tate K with the throw. Fander beat out, but no worse the wear. Jackson now has it at the top. Met high by Fander. Gavin Stenovich now has it near side. Going to be bet by Leander Troll. Gavin Stenovich moves right. Troll does not want to leave out of the zone. Morella elects not to go for the pick. And John Jackson now with it after he taps in again. Spandersburg beat out right side. Gavin Stenovich no look pass to Crawford behind Crawford. The pump fake and then the shot. 9-1. Immediate rush from Germany to try to keep Tate K out of the play and give their chasers a chance. But I think it's going to result in Team USA winning control back. Yeah, Tate K and Casey Irwin do have control. As Troll is going to walk this one up slowly. Germany holds one of the defensive possession, but gets a little over eager trying to create a push on offense and loses it. Crawford playing aggressive with no dodgeball threatening in the hands of Stoya for Germany. Grossa back to Troll. Troll working against Gavin Stenovich. Gets it right back up to the top in Hobb. Marcel Hobb now. Far side. Stoya cannot make the catch from Tate. K. Behind Troll. Oh, fakes the oh. alley. Open on the hesitation. Puts it through. And now two in a row from Germany. Team USA did get a goal in between those two, but this is the most momentum the German side has had all night. And immediately Team USA swaps out all six players. Taylor Crawford. Makes the ball live. He's then going to go take a sub for Leo Freed as we see Tyler Trudeau ball handle for Miguel Esparza and Jules Bear on this line. Celine Richard going to be beating with Daniel Williams as Trudeau goes right. Great block from Trudeau. The pass left. Hobb can't intercept it. Freed comes down with it. Gets the pass over to Jules Bear and Bear puts it through. Something out of nothing for the United States there. That pass to Freed should have been intercepted, but he fights harder for the ball and finds Jules Bear right at the hoop. Those little things need to go right if Germany wants to get back into this game, and it's just not falling their way right now. Troll floats one to Spandersburg. Spandersburg rips the shot. It hits the rim. It hits the rim and goes in or out. It was that left side rim. We're going to talk to all the refs about this one. If but, um, that's in, that's an incredible display. And a mistake from the United States there. Spandersburg just kind of stuck behind the zone. No one saw he was there until he had the ball. Tyler Trudeau also making desperation close out, and Spandersburg at least gets a good look at the hoop. We'll see if it went yeah, in. Trudeau there. closed out with his hands up, looking to block a shot, left basically no space. And the space might have been found anyway. A rare mistake by the Team USA beaters as well, as they seem to have been caught up talking to the refs as Team Germany made that play happen. There is no goal on the play. It rimmed out. And Germany could not make it happen three times in a row. 
And this Esparza new, now going to be starting with the dodge or the quad ball. And this new pair of Daniel Williams and Celine Richard at theater for the United States have not played together most of the weekend. Celine Richard's mostly in with Matt Brown, but they're able to win control uh, from Belgium in their first push there. Uh, from Germany, excuse me. Yeah, more talking. And Daniel Williams just gave his dodgeball to an AR. It's going to mean control going to Leon Burgos and Team Belgium. There is no other call on the play. There's no penalty. It is just a dodgeball turnover. And Williams taps right back in. Miguel Esparza slowly. Two missed beats there. And Team USA quickly gets control back. Borgas being very aggressive. Williams behind. Williams easily beating out Borgas behind. As Jules Bear kills some time. Reset use for Team USA. The pass goes deep. That's Freed. Freed working against the German defense. Grossa closes out to Bears. The pass goes to Freed. Freed working on Hob. Finally, we get some stoppages uh, due to beater plays. A ton of physical contact and the fight between Burgess, Solin Richard, and Daniel Williams for the Bludgers behind the play back towards midcourt. A yellow card has been assessed to Tyler Trudeau in the quad ball game. We'll get that penalty for you as soon as we can. Illegal contact is the call there. Team USA racking up the cards in this game, although it has not yet affected them. So it is going to be a quad ball turnover here, and Germany does get the stop. We'll see if they can score on the power play. Marcel Hobb has it. Leo Fried there is beat out by Stoya. Troll. Near side. Rosa, the option up top, Hob far side. Shank subbing back into this one behind the play. Celine Richard drives heavily. Mikhail Esparza, easy interception, wants to run. Williams with one beat. Williams cannot get the second. Esparza floats it up to Freed, but great defense there from Grossa. Gets it to Troll, and that is another stop for Germany. Team USA playing a little bit too fast. What a read from Grossa. Troll slowly up the pitch. Menzel now in for Team Germany. Dodgeball game. Grossa up top receives the feed from Troll. Tyler Trudeau's about to be released from the box. Marcel Hopp up top. Germany wants to hurry if they want to take advantage of the power play. Too late. Trudeau is back in. And a press from Williams. Oh, Williams at the last second beats so uh, Shank instead. The pass goes to Leander Troll. The Second attempt to pass to Spandersburg does not make it. Miguel Esparza saves it before it goes out of bounds off an American tip. That was a good look from Germany that Miguel Esparza just made out. One heck of a play to get there in time to break up that pass. That was a goal if he doesn't get there. Trudeau with Richard and Williams in front. Trudeau working left. Esparza left side option. That's where it goes. Freed behind. Trudeau catches it. Gets, drops down. Leander Troll now with it. Esparza back to hoops for interfering with a keeper in the zone. Now out of the zone and Trudeau is there. Freed is there. But so is Menzel to clean it up. Forner back into this one. Gross is subbing out behind the play. Troll near side. Horst back into this one for Germany. Hob catches it at the top of the key. Going to be marked by Bear. Bear on Hob. Menzel in front beats out Bear. Hob still not taking any space here with Menzel in front. Troll near side option, Spanger, or Forner behind. Good hit there from Freed. Troll now being marked by Bear. Troll very slow. Moving right, left, right. Tries to get around the corner and can't. Throws one up. Christian Forner gets up as high as they can and puts it through 10-3. Chaos in the Bludger game. All the dodgeballs on the ground. Daniel Williams beat. Called clear. Freed, though, taking advantage. Gets it up to Trudeau. Trudeau, horse speed out. Trudeau fakes, spins, catches his own bobble. Gets it to Esparza. Esparza marked by Forner. 
behind Esparza rips it freed freed the spin move over Horst and threw Forner no good the hoop came down through the Freed's physicality and Germany is starting to have some momentum the goal and the huge stop back to back 100 to 30 the score speed from Verklaas Verklaas left side Forner gets around the Trudeau tackle dodges a beat throws it up Roloff puts it home no off the bar and out Horst is beat it will not fall for Germany. A missed opportunity there. Korklas able to stiff arm off Tyler Trudeau, which is a very impressive play, but not able to find the finish at the end there. Team USA, noticing the momentum change, moves back to their starters. Josh Johnson to Rachel Heald. Heald, far side, back to Johnson. Near side, Sanchez. Behind. Monroe gets beat out. Heels cannot put it through. Germany wants to run, but beat out is Roloff. The ball's on the ground being fought for. Verklaas with a huge hit on Johnson. Johnson, though, gets up, goes left, runs into Jackson Johnson, and is able to put it off the tee and in. Who else put Jackson Johnson in Bailey Fields? Dominating dodgeball control, turning that stop by Germany uh, into another chance for Team USA by beating out those German chasers. Yeah, there was almost a stop for Team Germany. Uh, the keeper just raised his arm a little bit higher. It would have been a block. Tom Roloff now for Germany. Going to be marked by Sanchez. Moving right, then goes left. Immediately hit by Monroe. Monroe hits the ground. 1.5 from Germany. Forner throws it up. Spangersberg puts it, it home. Team Germany has been deadly with these alley-oops against Team USA. I also believe I was mistaken. That was Robert Verklaas putting it home, not Johannes Spongersberg. So give that goal to 82 in white. And we quickly are approaching this 20-minute mark. There was no stoppage at 15 for the Heat. Ryan Davis reporting for Team USA. And Johannes Spongersberg reporting for Team Germany. Matt Cooper will be the flag runner for this final. Rachel Heald is being given a yellow card for an illegal push. The goal is good, so no time is served. Again, the score is 11-4 in favor of the U.S. As Verklaas looks to get the crowd riled up in favor of Germany. If Team USA is going to want to stop Team Germany from continuously getting goals on those high up alley oops, they're going to have to anticipate those coming just a little bit sooner. They're starting to recognize it. And as they begin the closeout, they realize that they started that closeout just a little bit too late. And it's giving Team Germany the opportunity to catch the ball and put it through. An adjustment I'm sure Team USA is able to make. Yeah, the line change here for Team USA seem to be the big adjustment. Of course, the staff can tell the players on the sidelines what the adjustments are before they sub in. Sanchez being pushed high by Borgas gets rid of it. Josh Johnson is there to receive it. And Team USA gets out of this one. Borgas very aggressive. Oh, the huge, huge stop by Verklaas. Verklaas now with speed going forward. Floats it over. Verklaas puts it through. That's a goal. 11-5. Some momentum now for Germany. They're finding this Elliott consistently. They get a big stop off of a dodgeball press. Turn the tables on the United States. A catch here could be an absolute backbreaker for the Team USA. We are now going to have a stoppage for an injury. Bailey Fields is down. Uh, it was behind the quad ball play. I do not know what happened. We'll get you some information as soon as we can. Meanwhile, momentum for Germany. As I said just before this stoppage, while a catch would still mean they're down three, you can't help but think the spirit, the momentum, the crowd, that might be enough to really put them in this game. And they've scored three or four goals here just since the 10-minute mark. Since the 10-minute mark or so, been a completely different game for Germany. If they can continue to find looks on offense, they can claw their way back in this game. But they're going to need that catch. 
Germany is actually on a 3-1 run in the goal column. And almost all of them have come the same way, right? A lob over the top to a chase who's able to finish it from behind the hoops. Uh, this most recent one in transition, but the two before that in a half-court set. One was from the back to the front, but the same concept. Drawing the Team USA chairs with them, getting the beaters to lose their dodgeball, and then locking that alley pass that slammed home. Reckless play on Leon Borgas. Yellow card. And that's for the hit that uh, has Bailey Fields subbed out of the game. Casey Irwin has replaced Fields. So Casey Irwin in, and with 13 seconds to go until the Seekers are released, Germany is down a beater. Not a spot you want to be in. Not at all. LeCompte looks about ready to restart play here. Sanchez is going to start with the quad ball. Wearing green for the USA by their hoops. We are live. Johnson and Irwin with budget control, and of course, only one beater in the game for Germany. Yep, Stoya for Germany, I think, is just going to stay very close to her own hoops here. Spangersburg immediately beat out by Johnson. Sanchez, near side. That's Morella back to Heald. Heald to Morella. Morella back to the top. Johnson, Johnson pulls up. Sanchez. Famous came within about a half an inch of getting the flag there. Sanchez moves left, then passes right to Josh Johnson. Johnson back to Sanchez. Sanchez to Morella. Back to Sanchez. Conservative here from both sides. Morella behind. Does not want to rip a shot. I think USA just wants to give their seeker time at the flag runner here. Don't really care if they score. Morella and Heald play pass. Marked by Horst is Morella. Heald in back to Morella. Full strength fortune Ryan in Germany. Davis. Ryan Davis has it. Ryan Davis has the pull. And if that pull is good, then the United States will become four-time world champions. Davis had all day. The German beer stayed in the quad ball game. Uh, Casey Irwin and Jackson Johnson kept Germany's seeker from getting anywhere near our stitch match Cooper and a ton of time for Ryan Davis to come up with this catch. And as you said, Keegan, the passing on Team USA there, crisp, methodical, waiting so that their beaters can give Davis all that time. The strategy working to a T for the United States. If this catch is good, I believe it will be as Chris LeCompte goes to ask the other ARs if there were any other fouls that would call off the catch. The catch is good. The United States of America go back to back and become four-time world champions. The final score here is the United States 140, Germany 50. Jackson Johnson and Bailey Fields dominated that game start to finish in both their shifts. And the dodgeball dominance was the difference for the United States in bringing home this fourth title. An amazing show from Team Germany, although it took them a little bit to find their stride in this game. Once they found it, they were working it against Team USA. It's unfortunate for them that it took them as long as it did to find that. Leading into the catch, Germany was on a 3-1 goal streak. If they had opened up with that, the United States would have been playing scared. Germany certainly proving they deserved to be in this final. It just took them a little while to get going, as you said, Julia. All right, folks, um, just consulting with my producer here, please stick around. We are going to have at least one interview with uh, a member of Team USA. We might do one with Team Germany as well. We'll get you those as soon as we can. Um, so stick around.
with Ryan Davis, newly minted gold medalist, and the the seeker with the game winning catch. Ryan, you caught that one quick. What were you thinking when you got out there? I mean, that was just all adrenaline, right? Like I know that Mo came through big in the semifinals for us. We've had such a dominant seeker room all day. I had to do my part. Beaters gave me the window, and so I just make it count. When you made the catch, did you know it was clean? Were you already celebrating in your head? I mean, I never want to jinx those things, so I just, I just, I just try not to think about it. I try to like stare at the ARs, like try to get a read off their facial expressions and, and go from there. But I mean, that one felt pretty good. That one felt pretty good. Newly minted world champion. Thank you. Anything else you want to say? I don't have anything. Uh, it's been a great playing here. Um, it's good to be back. Um, and and yeah, go USA. Ryan Davis, thank you very much and congratulations. Thank you, I appreciate it. All right, folks, we are now into our medal ceremony. Unfortunately, we're not going to be able to have great camera coverage of that. We are hoping to pull some more players for interviews after the medal ceremony. That is still yet to be determined. So stick around. If we're unable to do that, we will make an announcement signing off this broadcast afterwards. After Jimmy figured out, it was so fun. I was like, damn, stay done. Sorry.
to be right back.
amazing fight put up by Team Germany against Team USA. I want to know, what was your game plan going into this finals? So our game plan was mostly to continue doing what we've done over the tournament, especially in the last two or three games this day. I think we've continuously improved. If you watch it, us almost losing to Brazil on the first day, almost losing to Canada on the first day, um, then beating France out of, out of range, uh, beating uh, England in range. Um, I think we've continually improved, so we built on what we already had and continued, basically. Awesome. Speaking of improvement, I know uh, the game started out on a bit of a rocky foot. Team Germany found themselves in the middle of that game, setting up amazing plays. What adjustments did you make in order to make that happen? So I think it's partly a better matchup in uh, the, the personnel we had on pitch. I think Team Germany has a very, very deep roster. We have hardly any quality drop-off. Um, I don't know about Team USA. They might have, so it might have played a role that we just had weak opponents. But I also think um, the beaters that came on at that point did an impressive job. Um, and I also encourage the beaters at some point to take more risks, to uh, just beat the USA beaters at our hoops because they were annoying us so much. Um, and not be afraid of them maybe catching or dodging it. Thank you so much. And is there any other thing you want to say before we end the interview? Yes, I want to say one thing. Um, when I actually came onto the field, I addressed the crowd re real quick, and I'm going to repeat what I said there. These are my words. I said, I have a small announcement to make. This is the last game ever that Team Germany will play with a four max gender rule. Thank you. Awesome. Great job today. Once again, everybody, we just want to thank you for joining us here on the IQA YouTube page all weekend. Thank you for sticking with us through weather delays and technical difficulties. We will be signing off now for the final time from the 2023 IQA World Cup in Richmond, Virginia. Thank you and good night.